Chapter 12 The Priests and Levites Who Returned Now these are the priests and the Levites who went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Malak, Hadash, Shechaniah, Rehum, Merimoth, Edo, Genethoi, Abijah, Mejamin, Maadiah, Bilgah, Shemaiah, and Joyarib, Judea, Salu, Amok, Hilkiah, Judea. These were the chiefs of the priests and of their brothers in the days of Jeshua. Moreover, the Levites, Jeshua, Benuai, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, who was over the thanksgiving, he and his brothers. Also, Bagbukiah and Uno, their brothers, were over against them according to their offices. The Succession of High Priests Jeshua became the father of Joachim, and Joachim became the father of Eliashib, and Eliashib became the father of Joiada, and Joiada became the father of Jonathan, and Jonathan became the father of Jadua. In the days of Joachim were priests, heads of fathers' houses, of Sariah, Moriah, of Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Meshulam, of Amariah, Jehohanan, of Malachi, Jonathan, of Shebaniah, Joseph, of Haram, Adna, of Meraoth, Helkai, of Edo, Zechariah, of Genethon, Meshulam, of Abijah, Zikri, of Menyamin, of Moadiah, Piltai, of Bilgah, Shemua, of Shemaiah, Jehonathan, and of Joyarib, Matani, of Judea, Uzai, of Salai, Kalai, of Amok, Eber, of Hilkiah, Hashabiah, of Judea, Nethanel. The Chief Levites As for the Levites, in the days of Eliashib, Joiada, and Johanan, and Jadua, there were recorded the heads of fathers' houses, also the priests, in the reign of Darius the Persian, the sons of Levi, heads of fathers' houses, were written in the book of the Chronicles, even until the days of Johanan, the son of Eliashib. The chiefs of the Levites, Hashabiah, Sherebiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmiel, with their brothers over against them, to praise and give thanks, according to the commandment of David, the man of God, watch next to watch. Mataniah, and Bagbukiah, Obadiah, Meshulam, Talman, Akub, were porters, keeping the watch at the storehouses of the gates. These were in the days of Joachim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and in the days of Nehemiah the governor, and of Ezra the priest, the scribe. Dedication of the Wall at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem, to keep the dedication with gladness, both with giving thanks and with singing, with cymbals, stringed instruments, and with harps. The sons of the singers gathered themselves together, both out of the plain around Jerusalem and from the villages of the Netophathites, also from Beth-Gilgal, and out of the fields of Geba and Asmaveth, 
for the singers had built them villages around Jerusalem. The priests and the Levites purified themselves, and they purified the people, and the gates, and the wall. Then I brought up the princes of Judah on the wall, and appointed two great companies, who gave thanks and went in procession. One went on the right hand on the wall, toward the dung gate, and after them went Hoshea, and half of the princes of Judah, and Azariah, Ezra, and Meshulam, Judah, and Benjamin, and Shemaiah, and Jeremiah, and certain of the priests' sons, with trumpets, Zechariah the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachar, the son of Asaph, and his brothers, Shemaiah and Azarel, Milalai, Gilalai, Maai, Nethanel, and Judah Hanani, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God, and Ezra the scribe was before them. By the spring gate, and straight before them, they went up by the stairs of the city of David, at the ascent of the wall, above the house of David, even to the water gate eastward. The other company of those who gave thanks went to meet them, and I after them, with the half of the people, on the wall, above the tower of the furnaces, even to the broad wall, and above the gate of Ephraim, and by the old gate, and by the fish gate, and the tower of Hananel, and the tower of Hamia, even to the sheep gate, and they stood still in the gate of the guard. So stood the two companies of those who gave thanks in the house of God, and I, and the half of the rulers with me, and the priests, Eliakim, Maaseah, Menyamin, Micaiah, Elioenai, Zechariah, and Hananiah, with trumpets, and Maaseah, and Shemaiah, and Eleazar, and Uzai, and Jehohanan, and Malchijah, and Elam, and Ezer, the singers sang loud with Jezrahiah their overseer. They offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. And the women also and the children rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Provisions for Temple Worship on that day were men appointed over the rooms for the treasures, for the wave offerings, for the first fruits, and for the tithes, to gather into them, according to the fields of the cities, the portions appointed by the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priests and for the Levites who waited. They performed the duty of their God and the duty of the purification. And so did the singers and the porters, according to the commandment of David and of Solomon his son. For in the days of David and Asaph of old, there was a chief of the singers, and songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. All Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah gave the portions of the singers and the porters, as every day required. And they set apart that which was for the Levites, and the Levites set apart that which was for the sons of Aaron. Chapter 13 Foreigners Excluded On that day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written, that an Ammonite and a Moabite should not enter into the assembly of God for ever because they didn't meet the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them to curse them. However, our God turned the curse into a blessing. It came to pass, when they had heard the law, that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude.
the temple cleansed. Now before this, Eliashib the priest, who was appointed over the rooms of the house of our God, being allied to Tobiah, had prepared for him a great room, where before they laid the meal offerings, the frankincense, and the vessels, and the tithes of the grain, the new wine, and the oil, which were given by commandment to the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the wave offerings for the priests. But in all this time I was not at Jerusalem, for in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, I went to the king, and after certain days asked I leave of the king, and I came to Jerusalem, and understood the evil that Eliashib had done for Tobiah, in preparing him a room in the courts of the house of God. It grieved me severely, therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the room. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the rooms. And there brought I again the vessels of the house of God, with the meal offerings and the frankincense. Tithes Restored I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them, so that the Levites and the singers who did the work had fled everyone to his field. Then I contended with the rulers, and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? I gathered them together, and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the grain, and the new wine, and the oil to the treasuries. I made treasurers over the treasuries, Shelemiah the priest, and Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites, Padeah, and next to them, was Hanan the son of Zachar, the son of Mataniah, for they were counted faithful, and their business was to distribute to their brothers. Remember me, my God, concerning this, and don't wipe out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for its observances. The Sabbath Restored In those days saw I in Judah some men treading winepresses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves, and loading donkeys therewith, as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all kinds of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day in which they sold food. There lived men of Tyre also therein, who brought in fish, and all kinds of wares, and sold on the Sabbath to the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah, and said to them, What evil thing is this that you do, and profane the Sabbath day? Didn't your fathers do thus, and didn't our God bring all this evil on us and on this city? Yet you bring more wrath on Israel by profaning the Sabbath. It came to pass that, when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the doors should be shut, and commanded that they should not be opened until after the Sabbath. I set some of my servants over the gates, that no burden should be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sellers of all kinds of wares lodged outside of Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them, and said to them, why do you stay around the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time on, they didn't come on the Sabbath. I commanded the Levites that they should purify themselves, and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember to me, my God, this also, and spare me according to the greatness of your loving kindness. Intermarriage Forbidden In those days also saw I the Jews who had married women of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children spoke half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. I contended with them, and cursed them, and struck certain of them, and plucked off their hair, 
and made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor take their daughters for your sons, or for yourselves. Didn't Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, and he was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, foreign women caused even him to sin. Shall we then listen to you to do all this great evil, to trespass against our God in marrying foreign women? One of the sons of Joyada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sanballat, the Horonite. Therefore I chased him from me. Remember them, my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Thus I cleansed them from all foreigners and appointed duties for the priests and for the Levites, everyone in his work, and for the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits. Remember me, my God, for good. Esther Chapter 1 Xerxes Royal Feasts Now it happened in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus who reigned from India even to Ethiopia, over 127 provinces. That in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast for all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. He displayed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even 180 days. When these days were fulfilled, the king made a seven-day feast for all the people who were present in Shushan, the palace, both great and small, in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were hangings of white, green, and blue material, fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and marble pillars. The couches were of gold and silver on a pavement of red, white, yellow and black marble. They gave them drinks in golden vessels of various kinds, including royal wine in abundance, according to the bounty of the king. In accordance with the law, the drinking was not compulsory, for so the king had instructed all the officials of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. Queen Vashti's Refusal On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagtha, Zetha, and Carcas, the seven eunuchs who served in the presence of Ahasuerus, the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the royal crown, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was beautiful. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by the eunuchs. Therefore the king was very angry, and his anger burned in him. Queen Vashti deposed. Then the king said to the wise men, who knew the times, for it was the king's custom to consult those who knew law and judgment, and the next to him were Karshina, Shetha, Admetha, Tarshish, Mires, Marcina, and Mimukin, the seven princes of Persia, and Media, who saw the king's face, and set first in the kingdom. What shall we do to the queen Vashti according to law, because she has not done the bidding of the king Ahasuerus by the eunuchs? Mimukin answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen has not done wrong to just the king, but also to all the princes, 
and to all the people who are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen will become known to all women, causing them to show contempt for their husbands. When it is reported, King Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she didn't come. Today the princesses of Persia and Media, who have heard of the queen's deed, will tell all the king's princes. This will cause much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let a royal commandment go from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, so that it cannot be altered, that Vashti may never again come before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate to another who is better than she. When the king's decree which he shall make is published throughout all his kingdom, for it is great. All the wives will give their husbands honor, both great and small. This advice pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memucan, for he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to its writing, and to every people in their language, that every man should rule his own house, speaking in the language of his own people. Chapter 2 Seeking Vashti's Successor After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was pacified, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then the king's servants who served him said, let beautiful young virgins be sought for the king. Let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the beautiful young virgins to the citadel of Susa, to the women's house, to the custody of Hegai, the king's eunuch, keeper of the women. Let cosmetics be given them, and let the maiden who pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. The thing pleased the king, and he did so. There was a certain Jew in the citadel of Susa, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives, who had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. He brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The maiden was fair and beautiful, and when her father and mother were dead, Mordecai took her for his own daughter. Esther finds favor. So it happened, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together to the citadel of Susa, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was taken into the king's house, to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. The maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness from him. He quickly gave her cosmetics and her portions of food, and the seven choice maidens who were to be given her out of the king's house. He moved her and her maidens to the best place in the women's house. Esther had not made known her people nor her relatives, because Mordecai had instructed her that she should not make it known. Mordecai walked every day in front of the court of the women's house to find out how Esther did and what would become of her. Each young woman's turn came to go in to King Ahasuerus after her purification for twelve months, for so were the days of their purification accomplished, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet fragrances, and with preparations for beautifying women. The young woman then came to the king like this. Whatever she desired was given her to go with her out of the women's house to the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the next day she returned into the second women's house, to the custody of Sheashgaz, the king's eunuch, who kept the concubines. She came in to the king no more, unless the king delighted in her, and she was called by name. 
Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, came to go in to the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's eunuch, the keeper of the women, advised. Esther obtained favor in the sight of all those who looked at her. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal house in the tenth month, which is the month Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. Esther becomes queen. The king loved Esther more than all the women, and she obtained favor and kindness in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast for all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast, and he proclaimed a holiday in the provinces and gave gifts according to the king's bounty. When the virgins were gathered together the second time, Mordecai was sitting in the king's gate. Esther had not yet made known her relatives nor her people, as Mordecai had commanded her. For Esther obeyed Mordecai, like she did when she was brought up by him. Mordecai Uncovers a Conspiracy In those days, while Mordecai was sitting in the king's gate, Two of the king's eunuchs, Bigthan and Tiresh, who were doorkeepers, were angry and sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. This thing became known to Mordecai, who informed Esther the queen, and Esther informed the king in Mordecai's name. When this matter was investigated, it was found to be so. They were both hanged on a tree and it was written in the book of the Chronicles in the king's presence. Chapter 3 Haman Plots Against the Jews After these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. All the king's servants who were in the king's gate bowed down and paid homage to Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai didn't bow down or pay homage. Then the king's servants who were in the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why do you disobey the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spoke daily to him, and he didn't listen to them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's reason would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai didn't bow down nor pay him homage, Haman was full of wrath, but he scorned the thought of laying hands on Mordecai alone, for they had made known to him Mordecai's people. Therefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews, who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even Mordecai's people. In the first month, which is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast pure, that is, the lot, before Haman, from day to day, and from month to month, and chose the twelfth month, which is the month Adar. Haman said to King Ahasuerus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom, and their laws are different than other peoples. They don't keep the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to allow them to remain. If it pleases the king, let it be written that they be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver into the hands of those who are in charge of the king's business, to bring it into the king's treasuries. The king took his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. The king said to Haman, The silver is given to you, the people also, to do with them as it seems good to you. Then the king's scribes were called in on the first month, on the thirteenth day of the month, 
and all that Haman commanded was written to the king's satraps, and to the governors who were over every province, and to the princes of every people, to every province according to its writing, and to every people in their language. It was written in the name of King Ahasuerus, and it was sealed with the king's ring. Letters were sent by carriers into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to plunder their possessions. A copy of the letter, that the decree should be given out in every province, was published to all the peoples, that they should be ready against that day. The couriers went forth in haste by the king's commandment, and the decree was given out in the citadel of Susa. The king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. Chapter 4 Mordecai requests Esther's help. Now when Mordecai found out all that was done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and wailed loudly and bitterly. He came even before the king's gate, for no one is allowed inside the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. In every province, wherever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Esther's maidens and her eunuchs came and told her this, and the queen was exceedingly grieved. She sent clothing to Mordecai to replace his sackcloth, but he didn't receive it. Then Esther called for Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, whom he had appointed to attend her, and commanded him to go to Mordecai to find out what this was and why it was. So Hathak went out to Mordecai, to the city square which was before the king's gate. Mordecai told him of all that had happened to him, and the exact sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given out in Shushan to destroy them, to show it to Esther and to declare it to her, and to urge her to go in to the king to make supplication to him and to make request before him for her people. Hathak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai, then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message to Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that whoever, whether man or woman, comes to the king into the inner court without being called, there is one law for him, that he be put to death, except those to whom the king might hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. I have not been called to come in to the king these thirty days. They told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai asked them to return answer to Esther. Don't think to yourself that you will escape in the king's house any more than all the Jews. For if you remain silent now, then relief and deliverance will come to the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Who knows if you haven't come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esther agrees to help the Jews. Then Esther asked them to answer Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I and my maidens will also fast the same way. Then I will go in to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Chapter 5 Esther Plans a Banquet 
Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal clothing and stood in the inner court of the king's house, next to the king's house. The king sat on his royal throne in the royal house, next to the entrance of the house. When the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, she obtained favor in his sight, and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther came near and touched the top of the scepter. Then the king asked her, What would you like, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given you even to the half of the kingdom. Esther said, If it seems good to the king, let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Bring Haman quickly, so that it may be done as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. The king said to Esther at the banquet of wine, What is your petition? It shall be granted you. What is your request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then Esther answered and said, My petition and my request is this, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I will prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. Haman's Plot Against Mordecai then Haman went out that day, joyful and glad of heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he didn't stand up or move for him, he was filled with wrath against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. There he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife. Haman recounted to them the glory of his riches, the multitude of his children, all the things in which the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman also said, Yes, Esther the queen let no man come in with the king to the banquet that she had prepared but myself, and tomorrow I am also invited by her together with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai, the Jew, sitting at the king's gate. Then Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends said to him, Let a gallows be made, fifty cubits high, and in the morning speak to the king about hanging Mordecai on it. Then go in merrily with the king to the banquet. This pleased Haman, so he had the gallows made. Chapter 6 Mordecai is Honored On that night, the king couldn't sleep. He commanded the book of records of the chronicles to be brought, and they were read to the king. It was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthan and Tirish, two of the king's eunuchs, who were doorkeepers who had tried to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. The king said, What honor and dignity have been bestowed on Mordecai for this? Then the king's servants who attended him said, Nothing has been done for him. The king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman had come into the outer court of the king's house to speak to the king about hanging Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The king's servants said to him, Behold, Haman stands in the court. The king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in. The king said to him, What shall be done to the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman said in his heart, Who would the king delight to honor more than myself? Haman said to the king, for the man whom the king delights to honor, let royal clothing be brought, which the king uses to wear, and the horse that the king rides on, and on the head of which a crown royal is set. 
let the clothing and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes that they may array the man whom the king delights to honor with them and have him ride on horseback through the city square and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor haman forced to honor mordecai then the king said to haman hurry and take the clothing and the horse as you have said and do this for mordecai the jew who sits at the king's gate let nothing fail of all that you have spoken then haman took the clothing and the horse and arrayed mordecai and had him ride through the city square and proclaimed before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor mordecai came back to the king's gate but haman hurried to his house mourning and having his head covered haman recounted to zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had happened to him then his wise men and zeresh his wife said to him if mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is of jewish descent you will not prevail against him but you will surely fall before him while they were yet talking with him the king's eunuchs came and hurried to bring haman to the banquet that esther had prepared chapter seven esther pleads for her people so the king and haman came to banquet with esther the queen the king said again to esther on the second day at the banquet of wine what is your petition queen esther it shall be granted you what is your request even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed then esther the queen answered if i have found favor in your sight o king and if it please the king let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request for we are sold i and my people to be destroyed to be slain and to perish but if we had been sold for bond servants and bondmaids i would have held my peace although the adversary could not have compensated for the king's loss then king ahasuerus said to esther the queen who is he and where is he who dared presume in his heart to do so esther said an adversary and an enemy even this wicked haman then haman was afraid before the king and the queen haman is hanged the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden haman stood up to make request for his life to esther the queen for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine and haman had fallen on the couch where esther was then the king said will he even assault the queen in front of me in the house as the word went out of the king's mouth they covered haman's face then harbona one of the eunuchs who were with the king said behold the gallows fifty cubits high which haman has made for mordecai who spoke good for the king is standing at haman's house the king said hang him on it so they hanged haman on the gallows that he had prepared for mordecai then was the king's wrath pacified chapter eight mordecai is advanced on that day king ahasuerus gave the house of haman the jew's enemy to esther the queen mordecai came before the king for esther had told what he was to her the king took off his ring which he had taken from haman and gave it to mordecai esther set mordecai over the house of haman esther spoke yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and begged him with tears to put away the mischief of haman the agagite and his device that he had devised against the jews 
Then the king held out to Esther the golden scepter. So Esther arose and stood before the king. She said, If it pleases the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right to the king, and I am pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews who are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that would come to my people? How can I endure to see the destruction of my relatives? Xerxes' Decree Then King Ahasuerus said to Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, See, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged on the gallows, because he laid his hand on the Jews. Write also to the Jews, as it pleases you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may not be reversed by any man. Then the king's scribes were called at that time, in the third month, Sivan, on the twenty-third day of the month, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded to the Jews, and to the satraps, and the governors and princes of the provinces, which are from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces, to every province according to its writing, and to every people in their language, and to the Jews in their writing and in their language. He wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by courier on horseback, riding on royal horses that were bred from swift steeds. In those letters, the king granted the Jews who were in every city to gather themselves together and to defend their life, to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them their little ones and women, and to plunder their possessions. On one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, a copy of the letter that the decree should be given out in every province was published to all the peoples, that the Jews should be ready for that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the couriers who rode on royal horses went out, hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment. The decree was given out in the citadel of Susa. Mordecai went out of the presence of the king in royal clothing of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a robe of fine linen and purple. And the city of Susa shouted and was glad. The Jews had light gladness, joy, and honor. In every province and in every city, wherever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had gladness, joy, a feast, and a good day. Many from among the peoples of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews was fallen on them. Chapter 9 the Jews destroy their enemies. Now in the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, on the thirteenth day of the month, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, on the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to conquer them, but it turned out the opposite happened, that the Jews conquered those who hated them. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who wanted to harm them. No one could withstand them because the fear of them had fallen on all the people, all the princes of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and those who did the king's business helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai had fallen on them. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces. For the man Mordecai grew greater and greater. 
the Jews struck all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and with slaughter and destruction and did what they wanted to those who hated them. In the citadel of Susa, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. They killed Parshandatha, Dalphon, Aspatha, Poretha, Adalia, Aridatha, Permashta, Arisai, Aridai, and Vizatha, the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Jews' enemy. But they didn't lay their hand on the plunder. On that day, the number of those who were slain in the citadel of Susa was brought before the king. Haman's sons hanged. The king said to Esther the queen, The Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in the citadel of Susa, including the ten sons of Haman. What then have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is your petition? It shall be granted you. What is your further request? It shall be done. Then Esther said, If it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do tomorrow also, according to this day's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. The king commanded this to be done. A decree was given out in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. The Jews who were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day also of the month Adar and killed three hundred men in Shushan, but they didn't lay their hand on the spoil. The other Jews who were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together, defended their lives, had rest from their enemies, and killed seventy-five thousand of those who hated them but they didn't lay their hand on the plunder. This was done on the thirteenth day of the month Adar, and on the fourteenth day of that month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. The Feast of Purim Instituted But the Jews who were in Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth and on the fourteenth days of the month, and on the fifteenth day of that month they rested, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the villages, who live in the unwalled towns, make the fourteenth day of the month Adar a day of gladness and feasting, a good day, and a day of sending presents of food to one another. Mordecai wrote these things, and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus, both near and far, to enjoin them that they should keep the fourteenth and fifteenth days of the month Adar yearly, as the days in which the Jews had rest from their enemies, and the month which was turned to them from sorrow to gladness, and from mourning into a good day, and they should make them days of feasting and gladness, and of sending presents of food to one another, and gifts to the needy. The Jews accepted the custom that they had begun, as Mordecai had written to them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast pure, that is, the lot, to consume them, and to destroy them. But when this became known to the king, he commanded by letters, that his wicked device, which he had devised against the Jews, should return on his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. Therefore they called these days Purim, from the word pure. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, and of that which they had seen concerning this matter, and that which had come to them, the Jews established and imposed on themselves and on their descendants and on all those who joined themselves to them, so that it should not fail, that they should keep these two days according to what was written and according to its appointed time every year, and that these days should be remembered and kept 
throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city, and that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memory of them perish from their seed. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihel, and Mordecai the Jew, wrote with all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. He sent letters to all the Jews, to the hundred twenty-seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with words of peace and truth, to confirm these days of Purim in their appointed times, as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had decreed, and as they had imposed upon themselves and their descendants, in the matter of the fastings and their cry. The commandment of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book. Chapter 10 Tribute to Xerxes and Mordecai King Ahasuerus laid a tribute on the land and on the islands of the sea. All the acts of his power and of his might, and the full account of the greatness of Mordecai, to which the king advanced him. Aren't they written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next to King Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted by the multitude of his brothers, seeking the good of his people, and speaking peace to all his descendants. End of section 42. Job Chapter 1 There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. His possessions also were seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, five hundred female donkeys, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the children of the East. His sons went and held a feast in the house of each one on his birthday, and they sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. It was so, when the days of their feasting had run their course, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and renounced God in their hearts. Job did so continually. Now on the day when God's sons came to present themselves before Yahweh, Satan also came among them. Yahweh said to Satan, Where have you come from? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going back and forth in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Yahweh said to Satan, Have you considered my servant, Job? For there is no one like him in the earth, a blameless and an upright man, one who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Haven't you made a hedge around him and around his house? and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But stretch out your hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will renounce you to your face. Yahweh said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only on himself. Don't stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of Yahweh. It fell on a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. 
that there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans attacked and took them away. Yes, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, there also came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from the sky and has burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made three bands and swept down on the camels and have taken them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, there came also another and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young men, and they are dead. I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell down on the ground and worshipped. He said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. Yahweh gave, and Yahweh has taken away. Blessed be Yahweh's name. In all this, Job didn't sin, nor charge God with wrongdoing. Chapter 2 Again, on the day when God's sons came to present themselves before Yahweh, Satan came also among them to present himself before Yahweh. Yahweh said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going back and forth in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Yahweh said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him in the earth a blameless and an upright man, one who fears God and turns away from evil. He still maintains his integrity, although you incited me against him, to ruin him without cause. Satan answered Yahweh and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will renounce you to your face. Yahweh said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of Yahweh, and struck Job with painful sores from the sole of his foot to his head. He took for himself a potsherd to scrape himself with, and he sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still maintain your integrity? Renounce God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women would speak. What, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job didn't sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that had come on him, they each came from his own place. Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite. And they made an appointment together to come to sympathize with him and to comfort him. When they lifted up their eyes from a distance and didn't recognize him, they raised their voices and wept, and they each tore his robe and sprinkled dust on their heads toward the sky. So they sat down with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief 
was very great. Chapter 3 After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. Job answered, Let the day perish in which I was born, the night which said, There is a boy conceived. Let that day be darkness. Don't let God from above seek for it, neither let the light shine on it. Let darkness and the shadow of death claim it for their own. Let a cloud dwell on it. Let all that makes black the day terrify it. As for that night, let thick darkness seize on it. Let it not rejoice among the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Behold, let that night be barren. Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it who curse the day, who are ready to rouse up Leviathan. Let the stars of its twilight be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the eyelids of the morning, because it didn't shut up the doors of my mother's womb, nor did it hide trouble from my eyes. Why didn't I die from the womb? Why didn't I give up the spirit when my mother bore me? Why did the knees receive me? Or why the breast that I should nurse? For now, should I have lain down and been quiet, I should have slept. Then I would have been at rest with kings and counselors of the earth who built up waste places for themselves. Or with princes who had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or as a hidden, untimely birth I had not been, as infants who never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling. There the weary are at rest. There the prisoners are at ease together. They don't hear the voice of the taskmaster. The small and the great are there. This servant is free from his master. Why is light given to him who is in misery? life to the bitter in soul, who long for death, but it doesn't come, and dig for it more than for hidden treasures, who rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave. Why is light given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? For my sighing comes before I eat, my groanings are poured out like water, for the thing which I fear comes on me. That which I am afraid of comes to me. I am not at ease, neither am I quiet, neither have I rest, but trouble comes. Chapter 4 Then Eliphaz the Timonite answered, If someone ventures to talk with you, will you be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, you have instructed many. You have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have supported him who was falling. You have made firm the feeble knees. But now it has come to you, and you faint. It touches you, and you are troubled. Isn't your piety your confidence? Isn't the integrity of your ways your hope? Remember, now, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the upright cut off? According to what I have seen, those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish. By the blast of his anger are they consumed. The roaring of the lion and the voice of the fierce lion, the teeth of the young lions, are broken. The old lion perishes for lack of prey. The cubs of the lioness are scattered abroad. Now a thing was secretly brought to me. My ear received a whisper of it. In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, Fear came on me, and trembling, which made all my bones shake. Then a spirit passed before my face, 
the hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I couldn't discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. Silence. Then I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he puts no trust in his servants. He charges his angels with error. How much more those who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before the moth. Between morning and evening they are destroyed. They perish forever without any regarding it. Isn't their tent cord plucked up within them? They die, and that without wisdom. Chapter 5 Call now. Is there any who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? For resentment kills the foolish man, and jealousy kills the simple. I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed his habitation. His children are far from safety. They are crushed in the gate. Neither is there any to deliver them, whose harvest the hungry eats up, and take it even out of the thorns. The snare gapes for their substance, for affliction doesn't come out of the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground. But man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. But as for me, I would seek God, I would commit my cause to God, who does great things that can't be fathomed, marvelous things without number, who gives rain on the earth and sends waters on the fields, so that he sets up on high those who are low, those who mourn are exalted to safety. He frustrates the plans of the crafty so that their hands can't perform their enterprise. He takes the wise in their own craftiness. The counsel of the cunning is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope at noonday as in the night. But he saves from the sword of their mouth even the needy from the hand of the mighty. So the poor has hope and injustice shuts her mouth. Behold, Happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Almighty, for he wounds and binds up. He injures, and his hands make whole. He will deliver you in six troubles. Yes, in seven no evil shall touch you. In famine he will redeem you from death. In war from the power of the sword. You shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall you be afraid of destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine you shall laugh. Neither shall you be afraid of the animals of the earth. For you shall be allied with the stones of the field. The animals of the field shall be at peace with you. You shall know that your tent is in peace. You shall visit your fold and shall miss nothing. You shall know also that your offspring shall be great, your offspring as the grass of the earth. You shall come to your grave in a full age, like a shock of grain comes in its season. Look this, we have searched it, so it is. Hear it and know it for your good. Chapter 6 Then Job answered, Oh, that my anguish were weighed, and all my calamity laid in the balances! For now it would be heavier than the sand of the seas. Therefore have my words been rash, for the arrows of the Almighty are within me. My spirit drinks up their poison. The terrors of God set themselves in array against me. Does the wild donkey bray when he has grass, or does the ox low over his fodder? 
can that which has no flavor be eaten without salt or is there any taste in the white of an egg my soul refuses to touch them they are as loathsome food to me oh that i might have my request that god would grant the thing that i long for even that it would please god to crush me that he would let loose his hand and cut me off be it still my consolation yes let me exult in pain that doesn't spare that i have not denied the words of the holy one what is my strength that i should wait what is my end that i should be patient is my strength the strength of stones or is my flesh of bronze isn't it that i have no help in me that wisdom is driven quite from me to him who is ready to faint kindness should be shown from his friend even to him who forsakes the fear of the almighty my brothers have dealt deceitfully as a brook as the channel of brooks that pass away which are black by reason of the ice in which the snow hides itself in the dry season they vanish when it is hot they are consumed out of their place the caravans that travel beside them turn away they go up into the waste and perish the caravans of tema looked the companies of sheba waited for them they were distressed because they were confident they came there and were confounded for now you are nothing you see a terror and are afraid did i say give to me or offer a present for me from your substance or deliver me from the adversary's hand or redeem me from the hand of the oppressors teach me and i will hold my peace cause me to understand wherein i have erred how forcible are words of uprightness but your reproof what does it reprove do you intend to reprove words since the speeches of one who is desperate are as wind yes you would even cast lots for the fatherless and make merchandise of your friend now therefore be pleased to look at me for surely i shall not lie to your face please return let there be no injustice yes return again my cause is righteous is there injustice on my tongue can't my taste discern mischievous things chapter seven isn't a man forced to labor on earth aren't his days like the days of a hired hand as a servant who earnestly desires the shadow as a hireling who looks for his wages so am i made to possess months of misery wearisome nights are appointed to me when i lie down i say when shall i arise and the night be gone i toss and turn until the dawning of the day my flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust my skin closes up and breaks out afresh my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope oh remember that my life is a breath my eye shall no more see good the eye of him who sees me shall see me no more your eyes shall be on me but i shall not be as the cloud is consumed and vanishes away so he who goes down to sheol shall come up no more he shall return no more to his house neither shall his place know him any more therefore i will not keep silent i will speak in the anguish of my spirit i will complain in the bitterness of my soul am i a sea or a sea monster that you put a guard over me when i say my bed shall comfort me my couch shall ease my complaint then you scare me with dreams and terrify me through visions so that my soul chooses strangling death rather than my bones i loathe my life i don't want to live forever leave me alone for my days are but a breath 
What is man that you should magnify him, that you should set your mind on him, that you should visit him every morning and test him every moment? How long will you not look away from me, nor leave me alone until I swallow down my spittle? If I have sinned, what do I do to you, you watcher of men? Why have you set me as a mark for you, so that I am a burden to myself? Why do you not pardon my disobedience and take away my iniquity? For now shall I lie down in the dust. You will seek me diligently, but I shall not be. Chapter 8 then Bildad the Shuhite answered, How long will you speak these things? Shall the words of your mouth be a mighty wind? Does God pervert justice? Or does the Almighty pervert righteousness? If your children have sinned against him, he has delivered them into the hand of their disobedience. If you want to seek God diligently, make your supplication to the Almighty. If you were pure and upright, surely now he would awaken for you and make the habitation of your righteousness prosperous. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would greatly increase. Please inquire of past generations. Find out about the learning of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing because our days on earth are a shadow. Shall they not teach you, tell you, and utter words out of their heart? Can the papyrus grow up without mire? Can the rushes grow without water? While it is yet in its greenness, not cut down, it withers before any other reed. So are the paths of all who forget God. The hope of the godless man shall perish, whose confidence shall break apart whose trust is a spider's web. He shall lean on his house, but it shall not stand. He shall cling to it, but it shall not endure. He is green before the sun. His shoots go out along his garden. His roots are wrapped around the rock pile. He sees the place of stones. If he is destroyed from his place, then it shall deny him, saying, I have not seen you. Behold, this is the joy of his way. Out of the earth others shall spring. Behold, God will not cast away a blameless man, neither will he uphold the evildoers. He will still fill your mouth with laughter, your lips with shouting. Those who hate you shall be clothed with shame. The tent of the wicked shall be no more. Chapter 9 Then Job answered, Truly, I know that it is so. But how can man be just with God? If he is pleased to contend with him, he can't answer him one time in a thousand. God, who is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and prospered? He removes the mountains, and they don't know it, when he overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place. Its pillars tremble. He commands the sun, and it doesn't rise, and seals up the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens, and treads on the waves of the sea. He makes the bear, Orion, and the Pleiades, and the rooms of the south. He does great things past finding out, yes, marvelous things without number. Behold, he goes by me, and I don't see him. He passes on also, but I don't perceive him. Behold, he snatches away. Who can hinder him? Who will ask him, What are you doing? God will not withdraw his anger. The helpers of Rahab stoop under him. How much less shall I answer him, 
and choose my words to argue with him. Though I were righteous, yet I wouldn't answer him. I would make supplication to my judge. If I had called, and he had answered me, yet I wouldn't believe that he listened to my voice. For he breaks me with a storm, and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not allow me to catch my breath, but fills me with bitterness. If it is a matter of strength, behold, he is mighty. If of justice, who, says he, will summon me? Though I am righteous, my own mouth shall condemn me. Though I am blameless, it shall prove me perverse. I am blameless. I don't respect myself. I despise my life. It is all the same. Therefore I say he destroys the blameless and the wicked. If the scourge kills suddenly, he will mock at the trial of the innocent. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of its judges. If not he, then who is it? Now my days are swifter than a runner. They flee away. They see no good. They have passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that swoops on the prey. If I say, I will forget my complaint, I will put off my sad face and cheer up. I am afraid of all my sorrows. I know that you will not hold me innocent. I shall be condemned. Why then do I labor in vain? If I wash myself with snow and cleanse my hands with lye, yet you will plunge me in the ditch. My own clothes shall abhor me. For he is not a man as I am that I should answer him, that we should come together in judgment. There is no umpire between us that might lay his hand on us both. Let him take his rod away from me. Let his terror not make me afraid. Then I would speak and not fear him, for I am not so in myself. Chapter 10 my soul is weary of my life. I will give free course to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will tell God, do not condemn me. Show me why you contend with me. Is it good to you that you should oppress? That you should despise the work of your hands and smile on the counsel of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh or do you see as man sees? Are your days as the days of mortals, or your years as man's years, that you inquire after my iniquity and search after my sin? Although you know that I am not wicked, there is no one who can deliver out of your hand. Your hands have framed me and fashioned me altogether, yet you destroy me. Remember, I beg you, that you have fashioned me as clay, Will you bring me into dust again? Haven't you poured me out like milk and curdled me like cheese? You have clothed me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and loving kindness. Your visitation has preserved my spirit, yet you hid these things in your heart. I know that this is with you. If I sin, then you mark me. You will not acquit me from my iniquity. If I am wicked, woe to me. If I am righteous, I still shall not lift up my head, being filled with disgrace and conscious of my affliction. If my head is held high, you hunt me like a lion. Again, you show yourself powerful to me. You renew your witnesses against me and increase your indignation on me. Changes and warfare are with me. Why then have you brought me out of the womb? I wish I had given up the spirit and no eye had seen me. I should have been as though I had not been. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. 
aren't my days few? Cease then, leave me alone, that I may find a little comfort before I go where I shall not return from, to the land of darkness and of the shadow of death, the land dark as midnight, of the shadow of death, without any order, where the light is as midnight. Chapter 11 Then Zophar the Naamathite answered, Shouldn't the multitude of words be answered? Should a man full of talk be justified? Should your boastings make men hold their peace? When you mock, shall no man make you ashamed? For you say, My doctrine is pure. I am clean in your eyes. But, oh, that God would speak and open his lips against you, that he would show you the secrets of wisdom. For true wisdom has two sides. Know, therefore, that God exacts of you less than your iniquity deserves. Can you fathom the mystery of God? Or can you probe the limits of the Almighty? They are high as heaven. What can you do? They are deeper than Sheol. What can you know? Its measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he passes by or confines or convenes a court, then who can oppose him? For he knows false men. He sees iniquity also, even though he doesn't consider it. An empty-headed man becomes wise when a man is born as a wild donkey's colt. If you set your heart aright, stretch out your hands toward him. If iniquity is in your hand, put it far away. Don't let unrighteousness dwell in your tents. Surely then you shall lift up your face without spot. Yes, you shall be steadfast and shall not fear, for you shall forget your misery. You shall remember it like waters that have passed away. Life shall be clearer than the noonday. Though there is darkness, it shall be as the morning. You shall be secure, because there is hope. Yes, you shall search and shall take your rest in safety. Also, you shall lie down, and no one shall make you afraid. Yes. Many shall court your favor, but the eyes of the wicked shall fail. They shall have no way to flee. Their hope shall be the giving up of the Spirit. Chapter 12 Then Job answered, No doubt, but you are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Yes, who doesn't know such things as these? I am like one who is a joke to his neighbor. I, who called on God, and he answered. The just, the blameless man, is a joke. In the thought of him who is at ease, there is contempt for misfortune. It is ready for them whose foot slips. The tents of robbers prosper. Those who provoke God are secure, who carry their God in their hands. But ask the animals now, and they shall teach you. The birds of the sky, and they shall tell you. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach you. The fish of the sea shall declare to you. Who doesn't know that in all these, Yahweh's hand has done this? in whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. 
Doesn't the ear try words, even as the palate tastes its food? With aged men is wisdom, in length of days, understanding. With God is wisdom and might. He has counsel and understanding. Behold, he breaks down, and it can't be built again. He imprisons a man, and there can be no release. Behold, he withholds the waters, and they dry up. Again, he sends them out, and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leads counselors away, stripped. He makes judges, fools. He loosens the bond of kings. He binds their waist with a belt. He leads priests away, stripped, and overthrows the mighty. He removes the speech of those who are trusted and takes away the understanding of the elders. He pours contempt on princes and loosens the belt of the strong. He uncovers deep things out of darkness and brings out to light the shadow of death. He increases the nations, and he destroys them. He enlarges the nations, and he leads them captive. He takes away understanding from the chiefs of the people of the earth and causes them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. They grope in the dark without light. He makes them stagger like a drunken man. Chapter 13 Behold, my eye has seen all this. My ear has heard and understood it. What you know, I know also. I am not inferior to you. Surely I would speak to the Almighty. I desire to reason with God. But you are forgers of lies. You are all physicians of no value. Oh, that you would be completely silent. Then you would be wise. Hear now my reasoning. Listen to the pleadings of my lips. Will you speak unrighteously for God and talk deceitfully for him? Will you show partiality to him? Will you contend for God? Is it good that he should search you out? Or as one deceives a man, will you deceive him? He will surely reprove you if you secretly show partiality. Shall not his majesty make you afraid and his dread fall on you? Your memorable sayings are proverbs of ashes. Your defenses are defenses of clay. Be silent. Leave me alone that I may speak. Let come on me what will. Why should I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? Behold, he will kill me. I have no hope. Nevertheless, I will maintain my ways before him. This also shall be my salvation, that a godless man shall not come before him. Hear diligently my speech. Let my declaration be in your ears. See now, I have set my cause in order. I know that I am righteous. Who is he who will contend with me? For then would I hold my peace and give up the spirit. Only don't do two things to me. Then I will not hide myself from your face. Withdraw your hand far from me and don't let your terror make me afraid. Then call, and I will answer, or let me speak, and you answer me. How many are my iniquities and sins? Make me know my disobedience and my sin. Why hide you your face and hold me for your enemy? Will you harass a driven leaf? Will you pursue the dry stubble? For you write bitter things against me and make me inherit the iniquities of my youth. You also put my feet in the stocks and mark all my paths. You set a bound to the soles of my feet, though I am decaying like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten. Chapter 14 
Man who is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He grows up like a flower and is cut down. He also flees like a shadow and doesn't continue. Do you open your eyes on such a one and bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months is with you, and you have appointed his bounds that he can't pass. Look away from him that he may rest until he shall accomplish as a hireling his day, for there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, that it will sprout again, that the tender branch of it will not cease. Though its root grows old in the earth, and its stalk dies in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and sprout boughs like a plant. But man dies and is laid low. Yes, man gives up the spirit, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the river wastes and dries up, so man lies down and doesn't rise, until the heavens are no more, they shall not awake, nor be roused out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would keep me secret until your wrath is past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my warfare would I wait until my release should come. You would call, and I would answer you. You would have a desire to the work of your hands. But now you count my steps. Don't you watch over my sin? My disobedience is sealed up in a bag. You fasten up my iniquity. But the mountain falling comes to nothing. The rock is removed out of its place. The waters wear the stones. The torrents of it wash away the dust of the earth, so you destroy the hope of man. You forever prevail against him, and he departs. You change his face and send him away. His sons come to honor, and he doesn't know it. They are brought low, but he doesn't perceive it of them. But his flesh on him has pain, and his soul within him mourns. Chapter 15 Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, Should a wise man answer with vain knowledge and fill himself with the east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk or with speeches with which he can do no good? Yes, you do away with fear and hinder devotion before God. For your iniquity teaches your mouth and you choose the language of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, and not I. Yes, your own lips testify against you. Are you the first man who was born, or were you brought out before the hills? Have you heard the secret counsel of God? Do you limit wisdom to yourself? What do you know that we don't know? What do you understand which is not in us? With us are both the gray-headed and the very aged men, much elder than your father. Are the consolations of God too small for you, even the word that is gentle toward you? Why does your heart carry you away? Why do your eyes flash that you turn your spirit against God and let such words go out of your mouth? What is man that he should be clean? What is he who is born of a woman that he should be righteous? Behold, he puts no trust in his holy ones. Yes, the heavens are not clean in his sight. How much less one who is abominable and corrupt, a man who drinks iniquity like water. I will show you. Listen to me. That which I have seen, I will declare. Which wise men have told by their fathers and have not hidden it. 
to whom alone the land was given, and no stranger passed among them. The wicked man writhes in pain all his days, even the number of years that are laid up for the oppressor. A sound of terror is in his ears. In prosperity, the destroyer shall come on him. He doesn't believe that he shall return out of darkness. He is waited for by the sword. He wanders abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knows that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. Distress and anguish make him afraid. They prevail against him as a king ready to the battle because he has stretched out his hand against God and behaves himself proudly against the Almighty. He runs at him with a stiff neck, with the thick shields of his bucklers, because he has covered his face with his fatness and gathered fat on his thighs. He has lived in desolate cities, in houses which no one inhabited, which were ready to become heaps. He shall not be rich, neither shall his substance continue, neither shall their possessions be extended on the earth. He shall not depart out of darkness. The flame shall dry up his branches. By the breath of God's mouth shall he go away. Let him not trust in emptiness, deceiving himself, for emptiness shall be his reward. It shall be accomplished before his time. His branch shall not be green. He shall shake off his unripe grape as the vine, and shall cast off his flower as the olive tree. For the company of the godless shall be barren, and fire shall consume the tents of bribery. They conceive mischief and produce iniquity. Their heart prepares deceit. Chapter 16 Then Job answered, I have heard many such things. You are all miserable comforters. Shall vain words have an end? Or what provokes you that you answer? I also could speak as you do. If your soul were in my soul's place, I could join words together against you and shake my head at you but I would strengthen you with my mouth. The solace of my lips would relieve you. Though I speak, my grief is not subsided. Though I forbear, what am I eased? But now, God, you have surely worn me out. You have made desolate all my company. You have shriveled me up. This is a witness against me. My leanness rises up against me. It testifies to my face. He has torn me in his wrath and persecuted me. He has gnashed on me with his teeth. My adversary sharpens his eyes on me. They have gaped on me with their mouth. They have struck me on the cheek reproachfully. They gather themselves together against me. God delivers me to the ungodly and casts me into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, and he broke me apart. Yes, he has taken me by the neck and dashed me to pieces. He has also set me up for his target. His archers surround me. He splits my kidneys apart and does not spare. He pours out my gall on the ground. He breaks me with breach on breach. He runs on me like a giant. I have sewed sackcloth on my skin and have thrust my horn in the dust. My face is red with weeping. Deep darkness is on my eyelids. Although there is no violence in my hands and my prayer is pure. Earth, don't cover my blood. Let my cry have no place to rest. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven. He who vouches for me is on high. My friends scoff at me. My eyes pour out tears to God, that he would maintain the right of a man with God, of a son of man with his neighbor. For when a few years have come, I shall go the way of no return.
Chapter 17 My spirit is consumed. My days are extinct, and the grave is ready for me. Surely there are mockers with me. My eye dwells on their provocation. Now, give a pledge. Be collateral for me with yourself. Who is there who will strike hands with me? For you have hidden their heart from understanding. Therefore you shall not exalt them. He who denounces his friends for plunder, even the eyes of his children shall fail. But he has made me a byword of the people. They spit in my face. My eye also is dim by reason of sorrow. All my members are as a shadow. Upright men shall be astonished at this. The innocent shall stir up himself against the godless. Yet shall the righteous hold on his way. He who has clean hands shall grow stronger and stronger. But as for you all, come on now again. I shall not find a wise man among you. My days are past. My plans are broken off, as are the thoughts of my heart. They change the night into day, saying, The light is near in the presence of darkness. If I look for Sheol as my house, if I have spread my couch in the darkness, if I have said to corruption, You are my father, to the worm, my mother and my sister. Where then is my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? Shall it go down with me to the gates of Sheol, or descend together into the dust? Chapter 18 Then Bildad the Shuhite answered, How long will you hunt for words? Consider, and afterwards we will speak. Why are we counted as animals, which have become unclean in your sight? You who tear yourself in your anger, shall the earth be forsaken for you? Or shall the rock be removed out of its place? Yes, the light of the wicked shall be put out. The spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tent. His lamp above him shall be put out. The steps of his strength shall be shortened. His own counsel shall cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he wanders into its mesh. A snare will take him by the heel. A trap will catch him. A noose is hidden for him in the ground. A trap for him on the path. Terrors shall make him afraid on every side, and shall chase him at his heels. His strength shall be famished. Calamity shall be ready at his side. The members of his body shall be devoured. The firstborn of death shall devour his members. He shall be rooted out of the security of his tent. He shall be brought to the king of terrors. There shall dwell in his tent that which is none of his. Sulphur shall be scattered on his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath. Above shall his branch be cut off. His memory shall perish from the earth. He shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall have neither son nor grandson among his people nor any remaining where he lived. Those who come after shall be astonished at his day, as those who went before were frightened. Surely such are the dwellings of the unrighteous. This is the place of him who doesn't know God. Chapter 19 Then Job answered, How long will you torment me and crush me with words? You have reproached me ten times. You aren't ashamed that you attack me. If it is true that I have erred, my error remains with myself. If indeed you will magnify yourselves against me and plead against me my reproach, know now that God has subverted me and has surrounded me with his net. Behold, 
I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry for help, but there is no justice. He has walled up my way so that I can't pass, and has set darkness in my paths. He has stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. He has broken me down on every side, and I am gone. My hope he has plucked up like a tree. He has also kindled his wrath against me. He counts me among his adversaries. His troops come on together, build a siege ramp against me, and encamp around my tent. He has put my brothers far from me. My acquaintances are wholly estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My familiar friends have forgotten me. Those who dwell in my house and my maids consider me a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I call to my servant, and he gives me no answer. I beg him with my mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to the children of my own mother. Even young children despise me. If I arise, they speak against me. All my familiar friends abhor me. They whom I loved have turned against me. My bones stick to my skin and to my flesh. I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me, have pity on me, you my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you persecute me as God and are not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. In the end, he will stand upon the earth. After my skin is destroyed, then in my flesh shall I see God, whom I, even I, shall see on my side. My eyes shall see, and not as a stranger. My heart is consumed within me. If you say, how we will persecute him, because the root of the matter is found in me. Be afraid of the sword, for wrath brings the punishments of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. Chapter 20 Then Zophar the Naamathite answered, Therefore, do my thoughts give answer to me, even by reason of my haste that is in me? I have heard the reproof which puts me to shame. The spirit of my understanding answers me. Don't you know this from old time? Since man was placed on earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, the joy of the godless but for a moment, though his height mount up to the heavens and his head reach to the clouds, yet he shall perish forever, like his own dung. Those who have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yes, he shall be chased away like a vision of the night. The eye which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more see him. His children shall seek the favor of the poor. His hands shall give back his wealth. His bones are full of his youth, but youth shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness is sweet in his mouth, though he hide it, under his tongue, though he spare it and will not let it go, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his food in his bowels is turned. It is cobra venom within him. He has swallowed down riches 
and he shall vomit them up again. God will cast them out of his belly. He shall suck cobra venom. The viper's tongue shall kill him. He shall not look at the rivers, the flowing streams of honey and butter, that for which he labored he shall restore and shall not swallow it down. According to the substance that he has gotten, he shall not rejoice, for he has oppressed and forsaken the poor. He has violently taken away a house, and he shall not build it up, because he knew no quietness within him. He shall not save anything of that in which he delights. There was nothing left that he didn't devour. Therefore, his prosperity shall not endure. In the fullness of his sufficiency, distress shall overtake him. The hand of everyone who is in misery shall come on him. When he is about to feel his belly, God will cast the fierceness of his wrath on him. It will rain on him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon. The bronze arrow shall strike him through. He draws it out, and it comes out of his body. Yes, the glittering point comes out of his liver. Terrors are on him. All darkness is laid up for his treasures. An unfanned fire shall devour him. It shall consume that which is left in his tent. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity. The earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart. They shall rush away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from God, the heritage appointed to him by God. Chapter 21 Then Job answered, Listen diligently to my speech. Let this be your consolation. Allow me, and I also will speak. After I have spoken, mock on. As for me, is my complaint to man? Why shouldn't I be impatient? Look at me, and be astonished. Lay your hand on your mouth. When I remember, I am troubled. Horror takes hold of my flesh. Why do the wicked live, become old, yes, and grow mighty in power? Their child is established with them in their sight, their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bulls breed without fail, their cows calf and don't miscarry. They send out their little ones like a flock, their children dance. They sing to the tambourine and the harp and rejoice at the sound of the pipe. They spend their days in prosperity. In an instant, they go down to Sheol. They tell God, Depart from us, for we don't want to know about your ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? What profit should we have if we pray to Him? Behold, their prosperity is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How often is it that the lamp of the wicked is put out, that their calamity comes on them, that God distributes sorrows in his anger? How often is it that they are as stubble before the wind, as chaff that the storm carries away? You say, God lays up his iniquity for his children. Let him recompense it to himself, that he may know it. Let his own eyes see his destruction. Let him drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what does he care for his house after him, when the number of his months is cut off? Shall any teach God knowledge, since he judges those who are high? 
one dies in his full strength, being wholly at ease and quiet. His pails are full of milk. The marrow of his bones is moistened. Another dies in bitterness of soul and never tastes of good. They lie down alike in the dust. The worm covers them. Behold, I know your thoughts, the plans with which you would wrong me. For you say, where is the house of the prince? Where is the tent in which the wicked lived? Haven't you asked wayfaring men? Don't you know their evidences? That the evil man is reserved to the day of calamity? That they are led out to the day of wrath? Who shall declare his way to his face? Who shall repay him what he has done? Yet he will be born to the grave. Men shall keep watch over the tomb. The clods of the valley shall be sweet to him. All men shall draw after him, as there were innumerable before him. So how can you comfort me with nonsense, because in your answers there remains only falsehood? End of section 43. Chapter 22. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, Can a man be profitable to God? Surely he who is wise is profitable to himself. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that you are righteous, or does it benefit him that you make your ways perfect? Is it for your piety that he reproves you, that he enters with you into judgment? Isn't your wickedness great? Neither is there any end to your iniquities, for you have taken pledges from your brother for nothing and stripped the naked of their clothing. You haven't given water to the weary to drink, and you have withheld bread from the hungry. But as for the mighty man, he had the earth. The honorable man, he lived in it. You have sent widows away empty, and the arms of the fatherless have been broken. Therefore snares are around you. Sudden fear troubles you, or darkness so that you cannot see and floods of waters cover you. Isn't God in the heights of heaven? See the height of the stars, how high they are. You say, what does God know? Can he judge through the thick darkness? Thick clouds are a covering to him so that he doesn't see. He walks on the vault of the sky. Will you keep the old way which wicked men have trodden? who were snatched away before their time, whose foundation was poured out as a stream, who said to God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for us? Yet he filled their houses with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see it and are glad. The innocent ridicule them, saying, Surely those who rose up against us are cut off. The fire has consumed their remnant. Acquaint yourself with him now and be at peace. By it, good shall come to you. Please receive instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. If you put away unrighteousness far from your tents, Lay your treasure in the dust, the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. The Almighty will be your treasure and precious silver to you, for then you will delight yourself in the Almighty and shall lift up your face to God. You shall make your prayer to Him, and He will hear you. You shall pay your vows. You shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established to you. Light shall shine on your ways. When they cast down, you shall say, Be lifted up. He will save the humble person. He will even deliver him who is not innocent. 
Yes, he shall be delivered through the cleanness of your hands. Chapter 23 Then Job answered, Even today my complaint is rebellious. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would set my cause in order before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would tell me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would listen to me. There the upright might reason with him, so I should be delivered forever from my judge. If I go east, he is not there. If west, I can't find him. He works to the north, but I can't see him. He turns south, but I can't catch a glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come out like gold. My foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his way and not turned away. I haven't gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured up the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he stands alone, and who can oppose him? What his soul desires, even that he does, for he performs that which is appointed for me. Many such things are with him. Therefore I am terrified at his presence. When I consider, I am afraid of him, for God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me, because I was not cut off before the darkness neither did he cover the thick darkness from my face. Chapter 24 Why aren't times laid up by the Almighty? Why don't those who know him see his days? There are people who remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed them. They drive away the donkey of the fatherless, and they take the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn the needy out of the way. The poor of the earth all hide themselves. Behold, as wild donkeys in the desert, they go out to their work, seeking diligently for food. The wilderness yields them bread for their children. They cut their food in the field. They glean the vineyard of the wicked. They lie all night naked, without clothing, and have no covering in the cold. They are wet with the showers of the mountains and embrace the rock for lack of a shelter. There are those who pluck the fatherless from the breast and take a pledge of the poor so that they go around naked without clothing. Being hungry, they carry the sheaves. They make oil within the walls of these men. They tread wine presses and suffer thirst. From out of the populous city, Men groan. The soul of the wounded cries out. Yet God doesn't regard the folly. These are of those who rebel against the light. They don't know its ways, nor stay in its paths. The murderer rises with the light. He kills the poor and needy. In the night he is like a thief. The eye also of the adulterer waits for the twilight, saying, no eye shall see me. He disguises his face. In the dark they dig through houses. They shut themselves up in the daytime. They don't know the light. For the morning is to all of them like thick darkness, for they know the terrors of the thick darkness. They are foam on the surface of the waters. Their portion is cursed in the earth. They don't turn into the way of the vineyards. Drought and heat consume the snow waters. So does Sheol, those who have sinned. The womb shall forget him. The worm shall feed sweetly on him. He shall be no more remembered. Unrighteousness shall be broken as a tree. He devours the barren who don't bear. He shows no kindness to the widow. 
Yet God preserves the mighty by his power. He rises up who has no assurance of life. God gives them security, and they rest in it. His eyes are on their ways. They are exalted. Yet a little while, and they are gone. Yes, they are brought low. They are taken out of the way as all others, and are cut off as the tops of the ears of grain. If it isn't so, now who will prove me a liar and make my speech worth nothing? Chapter 25 Then Bildad the Shuhite answered, Dominion and fear are with him. He makes peace in his high places. Can his armies be counted? On whom does his light not arise? How then can man be just with God? Or how can he who is born of a woman be clean? Behold, even the moon has no brightness, and the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man, who is a worm, the son of man, who is a worm. Chapter 26 Then Job answered, How you have helped him who is without power! How have you saved the arm that has no strength! How have you counseled him who has no wisdom, and plentifully declared sound knowledge! To whom have you uttered words? Whose spirit came out of you? The departed spirits tremble, those beneath the waters and all that live in them. Sheol is naked before God, and Abaddon has no covering. He stretches out the north over empty space and hangs the earth on nothing. He binds up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not burst under them. He encloses the face of his throne and spreads his cloud on it. He has described a boundary on the surface of the waters and to the confines of light and darkness. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his rebuke. He stirs up the sea with his power, and by his understanding he strikes through Rahab. By his spirit the heavens are garnished, his hand has pierced the swift serpent. Behold, these are but the outskirts of his ways. How small a whisper do we hear of him? But the thunder of his power, who can understand? Chapter 27 Job again took up his parable and said, As God lives, who has taken away my right, the Almighty, who has made my soul bitter. For the length of my life is still in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Surely my lips shall not speak unrighteousness, neither shall my tongue utter deceit. Far be it from me that I should justify you. Until I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. I hold fast to my righteousness and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Let my enemy be as the wicked. Let him who rises up against me be as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the godless when he is cut off, when God takes away his life? Will God hear his cry when trouble comes on him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty and call on God at all times? I will teach you about the hand of God. I will not conceal that which is with the Almighty. Behold, all of you have seen it yourselves. Why then have you become altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God, the heritage of oppressors, which they receive from the Almighty. If his children are multiplied, it is for the sword. His offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those who remain of him shall be buried in death. His widows shall make no lamentation, though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare clothing as the clay. He may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, 
and the innocent shall divide the silver. He builds his house as the moth, as a booth which the watchman makes. He lies down rich, but he shall not do so again. He opens his eyes, and he is not. Terrors overtake him like waters. A storm steals him away in the night. The east wind carries him away, and he departs. It sweeps him out of his place, for it hurls at him and does not spare as he flees away from his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him and shall hiss him out of his place. Chapter 28 Surely there is a mine for silver and a place for gold which they refine. Iron is taken out of the earth and copper is smelted out of the ore. Man sets an end to darkness and searches out to the furthest bound the stones of obscurity and of thick darkness. He breaks open a shaft away from where people live. They are forgotten by the foot. They hang far from men. They swing back and forth. As for the earth, out of it comes bread. Underneath it is turned up, as it were, by fire. Sapphires come from its rocks. It has dust of gold. That path no bird of prey knows, neither has the falcon's eye seen it. The proud animals have not trodden it, nor has the fierce lion passed by there. He puts his hand on the flinty rock, and he overturns the mountains by the roots. He cuts out channels among the rocks. His eye sees every precious thing, he binds the streams that they don't trickle. The thing that is hidden he brings out to light. But where shall wisdom be found? Where is the place of understanding? Man doesn't know its price, neither is it found in the land of the living. The deep says, it isn't in me. The sea says, it isn't with me. It can't be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for its price. It can't be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. Gold and glass can't equal it, neither shall it be exchanged for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of crystal. Yes, the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Where, then, does wisdom come from? Where is the place of understanding, seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the birds of the sky? Destruction and death say, We have heard a rumor of it with our ears. God understand its way, and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole sky. He establishes the force of the wind. Yes, he measures out the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then he saw it and declared it. He established it, yes, and searched it out. To man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom. To depart from evil is understanding. Chapter 29 Job again took up his parable and said, Oh, that I were as in the months of old, as in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone on my head, and by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the ripeness of my days. When the friendship of God was in my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, and my children were around me, when my steps were washed with butter, and the rock poured out streams of oil for me, when I went out to the city gate, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves. The aged rose up and stood, the princes refrained from talking and laid their hand on their mouth. 
the voice of the nobles was hushed, and their tongue stuck to the roof of their mouth. For when the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it commended me, because I delivered the poor who cried, and the fatherless also, who had no one to help him. The blessing of him who was ready to perish came on me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy. The cause of him who I didn't know I searched out. I broke the jaws of the unrighteous and plucked the prey out of his teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my own house. I shall count my days as the sand. My root is spread out to the waters. The dew lies all night on my branch. My glory is fresh in me. My bow is renewed in my hand. Men listened to me, waited, and kept silence for my counsel. After my words, they didn't speak again. My speech fell on them. They waited for me as for the rain. Their mouths drank as with the spring rain. I smiled on them when they had no confidence. They didn't reject the light of my face. I chose out their way and sat as chief. I lived as a king in the army, as one who comforts the mourners. Chapter 30 But now those who are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to put with my sheepdogs. Of what use is the strength of their hands to me, men in whom ripe age has perished? They are gaunt from lack and famine. They gnaw the dry ground in the gloom of waste and desolation. They pluck salt herbs by the bushes. The roots of the broom are their food. They are driven out from among men. They cry after them as after a thief, so that they dwell in frightful valleys and in holes of the earth and of the rocks. Among the bushes they bray, and under the nettles they are gathered together. They are children of fools, yes, children of wicked men. They are flogged out of the land. Now I have become their song. Yes, I am a byword to them. They abhor me. They stand aloof from me and don't hesitate to spit in my face. For he has untied his cord and afflicted me, and they have thrown off restraint before me. On my right hand rise the rabble, they thrust aside my feet. They cast up against me their ways of destruction. They mar my path. They set forward my calamity without anyone's help. As through a wide breach they come, in the middle of the ruin they roll themselves in. Terrors have turned on me. They chase my honor as the wind. My welfare has passed away as a cloud. Now my soul is poured out within me. Days of affliction have taken hold on me. In the night season, my bones are pierced in me, and the pains that gnaw me take no rest. By great force is my garment disfigured. It binds me about as the collar of my tunic. He has cast me into the mire. I have become like dust and ashes. I cry to you, and you do not answer me. I stand up, and you gaze at me. You have turned to be cruel to me. With the might of your hand, you persecute me. You lift me up to the wind and drive me with it. You dissolve me in the storm, for I know that you will bring me to death, to the house appointed for all living. However, doesn't one stretch out a hand in his fall, or in his calamity therefore cry for help? Didn't I weep for him who was in trouble? 
Wasn't my soul grieved for the needy? When I looked for good, then evil came. When I waited for light, there came darkness. My heart is troubled and doesn't rest. Days of affliction have come on me. I go mourning without the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. I am a brother to jackals and a companion to ostriches. My skin grows black and peels from me. My bones are burned with heat. Therefore my harp has turned to mourning, and my pipe into the voice of those who weep. Chapter 31 I made a covenant with my eyes. How then should I look lustfully at a young woman? For what is the portion from God above, and the heritage from the Almighty on high? Is it not calamity to the unrighteous, and disaster to the workers of iniquity? Doesn't he see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with falsehood, and my foot has hurried to deceit, let me be weighed in an even balance, that God may know my integrity. If my step has turned out of the way, if my heart walked after my eyes, if any defilement has stuck to my hands, then let me sow and let another eat. Yes, let the produce of my field be rooted out. If my heart has been enticed to a woman, and I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind for another, and let others sleep with her, for that would be a heinous crime. Yes, it would be an iniquity to be punished by the judges, for it is a fire that consumes to destruction and would root out all my increase. If I have despised the cause of my male servant or of my female servant when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God rises up? When he visits, what shall I answer him? Didn't he who made me in the womb make him? Didn't one fashion us in the womb? If I have withheld the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel alone, and the fatherless has not eaten of it. No, from my youth he grew up with me as with a father. Her I have guided from my mother's womb. If I have seen any perish for want of clothing, or that the needy had no covering, if his heart hasn't blessed me, if he hasn't been warmed with my sheep's fleece, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless because I saw my help in the gate, then let my shoulder fall from the shoulder blade and my arm be broken from the bone. For calamity from God is a terror to me. Because of his majesty, I can do nothing. If I have made gold my hope, and have said to the fine gold, You are my confidence. If I have rejoiced because my wealth was great, and because my hand had gotten much, if I have seen the sun when it shined, or the moon moving in splendor, and my heart has been secretly enticed, and my hand threw a kiss from my mouth, this also would be an iniquity to be punished by the judges for I should have denied the God who is above. If I have rejoiced at the destruction of him who hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, yes, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking his life with a curse. If the men of my tent have not said, who can find one who has not been filled with his meat? The foreigner has not camped in the street but I have opened my doors to the traveler. If, like Adam, I have covered my transgressions by hiding my iniquity in my heart, because I feared the great multitude and the contempt of families terrified me so that I kept silence and didn't go out of the door. Oh, that I had one to hear me. Behold, here is my signature. Let the Almighty answer me. 
let the accuser write my indictment. Surely I would carry it on my shoulder, and I would bind it to me as a crown. I would declare to him the number of my steps. As a prince would I go near to him. If my land cries out against me, and its furrows weep together, if I have eaten its fruits without money, or have caused its owners to lose their life, let briars grow instead of wheat, and stinkweed instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. Chapter 32 So these three men ceased to answer Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barakal, the Buzite, of the family of Ram, was kindled against Job. His wrath was kindled because he justified himself rather than God. Also his wrath was kindled against his three friends, because they had found no answer, and yet had condemned Job. Now Elihu had waited to speak to Job, because they were elder than he. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, his wrath was kindled. Elihu, the son of Barakal, the Buzite, answered, I am young and you are very old. Therefore I held back, and didn't dare show you my opinion. I said, Days should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the spirit of the Almighty gives them understanding. It is not the great who are wise, nor the aged who understand justice. Therefore I said, Listen to me, I also will show my opinion. Behold, I waited for your words, and I listened for your reasoning, while you searched out what to say. Yes, I gave you my full attention, but there was no one who convinced Job, or who answered his words among you. Beware lest you say, We have found wisdom. God may refute him, not man, for he has not directed his words against me. Neither will I answer him with your speeches. They are amazed. They answer no more. They don't have a word to say. Shall I wait because they don't speak, because they stand still and answer no more? I also will answer my part, and I also will show my opinion, for I am full of words. The spirit within me constrains me. Behold, my breast is as wine which has no vent, like new wineskins, it is ready to burst. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. Please don't let me respect any man's person. Neither will I give flattering titles to any man. For I don't know how to give flattering titles. Or else my maker would soon take me away. Chapter 33 However, Job. Please hear my speech, and listen to all my words. See now, I have opened my mouth. My tongue has spoken in my mouth. My words shall utter the uprightness of my heart. That which my lips know, they shall speak sincerely. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. If you can, answer me. Set your words in order before me, and stand up. Behold, I am toward God even as you are. I am also formed out of the clay. Behold, my terror shall not make you afraid, neither shall my pressure be heavy on you. Surely you have spoken in my hearing. I have heard the voice of your words, saying, I am clean without disobedience. I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he finds occasions against me. He counts me for his enemy. He puts my feet in the stocks. He marks all my paths. Behold, I will answer you. In this you are not just, for God is greater than man. Why do you strive against him? 
because he doesn't give account of any of his mitres? For God speaks once, yes, twice, though man pays no attention. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, in slumbering on the bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain on his bed, with continual strife in his bones, so that his life abhors bread and his soul dainty food. His flesh is so consumed away that it can't be seen. His bones that were not seen stick out. Yes, his soul draws near to the pit, and his life to the destroyers. If there is beside him an angel, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show to man what is right for him, then God is gracious to him and says, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He returns to the days of his youth. He prays to God, and he is favorable to him, so that he sees his face with joy. He restores to man his righteousness. He sings before men and says, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it didn't profit me. He has redeemed my soul from going into the pit. My life shall see the light. Behold, God does all these things twice, yes, three times, with a man, to bring back his soul from the pit, that he may be enlightened with the light of the living. Mark well, Job, and listen to me. Hold your peace, and I will speak. If you have anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify you. If not, listen to me. Hold your peace, and I will teach you wisdom. Chapter 34 Moreover, Elihu answered, Hear my words, you wise men. Give ear to me, you who have knowledge, for the ear tries words, as the palate tastes food. Let us choose for us that which is right. Let us know among ourselves what is good, for Job has said, I am righteous. God has taken away my right. Notwithstanding my right, I am considered a liar. My wound is incurable, though I am without disobedience. What man is like Job, who drinks scorn like water, who goes in company with the workers of iniquity and walks with wicked men? For he has said, It profits a man nothing that he should delight himself with God. Therefore, listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man he will render to him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yes, surely, God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert justice. Who put him in charge of the earth, or who has appointed him over the whole world? If he set his heart on himself, if he gathered to himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh would perish together, and man would turn again to dust. If now you have understanding, hear this. Listen to the voice of my words. Shall even one who hates justice govern? Will you condemn him who is righteous and mighty? Who says to a king, vile? or to nobles, wicked. Who doesn't respect the persons of princes, nor respects the rich more than the poor, for they all are the work of his hands. In a moment they die, even at midnight. The people are shaken and pass away. The mighty are taken away without a hand, for his eyes are on the ways of a man. He sees all his goings, there is no darkness nor thick gloom where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. 
for he doesn't need to consider a man further, that he should go before God in judgment. He breaks in pieces mighty men in ways past finding out, and sets others in their place. Therefore, he takes knowledge of their works. He overturns them in the night, so that they are destroyed. He strikes them as wicked men in the open sight of others, because they turned away from following him and wouldn't pay attention to any of his ways, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come to him. He heard the cry of the afflicted. When he gives quietness, who then can condemn? When he hides his face, who then can see him? Alike, whether to a nation or to a man, that the godless man may not reign, that there be no one to ensnare the people. For has any said to God, I am guilty, but I will not offend any more? Teach me that which I don't see. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. Shall his recompense be as you desire, that you refuse it? For you must choose, and not I. Therefore speak what you know. Men of understanding will tell me, yes, every wise man who hears me. Job speaks without knowledge. His words are without wisdom. I wish that Job were tried to the end, because of his answering like wicked men. For he adds rebellion to his sin. He claps his hand among us and multiplies his words against God. Chapter 35 Moreover, Elihu answered, Do you think this to be your right? Or do you say, My righteousness is more than God's? That you ask, What advantage will it be to you? What profit shall I have more than if I had sinned? I will answer you, and your companions with you. Look to the heavens and see. See the skies, which are higher than you. If you have sinned, what effect do you have against him? If your transgressions are multiplied, what do you do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness may hurt a man as you are, and your righteousness may profit a son of man. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they cry out. They cry for help by reason of the arm of the mighty. But no one says, Where is God, my Maker, who gives songs in the night? Who teaches us more than the animals of the earth, and makes us wiser than the birds of the sky? There they cry, but no one answers, because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not hear an empty cry, neither will the Almighty regard it. How much less when you say you don't see him? The cause is before him, and you wait for him. But now, because he has not visited in his anger, neither does he greatly regard arrogance. Therefore, Job opens his mouth with empty talk, and he multiplies words without knowledge. Chapter 36 Elihu also continued and said, Bear with me a little, and I will show you, for I still have something to say on God's behalf. I will get my knowledge from afar, and will ascribe righteousness to my Maker. For truly my words are not false. One who is perfect in knowledge is with you. Behold, God is mighty, and doesn't despise anyone. He is mighty in strength of understanding. He doesn't preserve the life of the wicked, but gives to the afflicted their right. He doesn't withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but with kings on the throne, he sets them forever, and they are exalted. If they are bound in fetters and are taken in the cords of afflictions, then he shows them their work and their transgressions, that they have behaved themselves proudly. He also opens their ears to instruction and commands that they return from iniquity. If they listen and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. 
But if they don't listen, they shall perish by the sword. They shall die without knowledge. But those who are godless in heart lay up anger. They don't cry for help when he binds them. They die in youth. Their life perishes among the unclean. He delivers the afflicted by their affliction and opens their ear in oppression. Yes, he would have allured you out of distress into a wide place where there is no restriction. That which is set on your table would be full of fatness. But you are full of the judgment of the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold of you. Don't let riches entice you to wrath. Neither let the great size of a bribe turn you aside. Would your wealth sustain you in distress? Or all the might of your strength? Don't desire the night when people are cut off in their place. Take heed. Don't regard iniquity, for you have chosen this rather than affliction. Behold, God is exalted in his power. Who is a teacher like him? Who has prescribed his way for him? Or who can say, you have committed unrighteousness? Remember that you magnify his work, whereof men have sung. All men have looked on it. Man sees it afar off. Behold, God is great, and we don't know him. The number of his years is unsearchable, for he draws up the drops of water, which distill in rain from his vapor, which the skies pour down, and which drop on man abundantly. Yes, can any understand the spreading of the clouds and the thunderings of his pavilion? Behold, he spreads his light around him, he covers the bottom of the sea. For by these he judges the people. He gives food in abundance. He covers his hands with the lightning and commands it to strike the mark. Its noise tells about him. And the livestock also concerning the storm that comes up. Chapter 37 Yes, at this my heart trembles and is moved out of its place. Hear, oh, hear the noise of his voice, the sound that goes out of his mouth. He sends it out under the whole sky and his lightning to the ends of the earth. After it, a voice roars. He thunders with the voice of his majesty. He doesn't hold back anything when his voice is heard. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we can't comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the shower of rain and to the showers of his mighty rain. He seals up the hand of every man that all men whom he has made may know it. Then the animals take cover and remain in their dens. Out of its room comes the storm and cold out of the north. By the breath of God, ice is given, and the width of the waters is frozen. Yes, he loads the thick cloud with moisture. He spreads abroad the cloud of his lightning. It is turned around by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the surface of the inhabitable world, whether it is for correction or for his land, or for loving kindness that he causes it to come. Listen to this, Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Do you know how God controls them and causes the lightning of his cloud to shine? Do you know the workings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge, you whose clothing is warm when the earth is still by reason of the south wind? Can you with him spread out the sky, which is strong as a cast metal mirror? Teach us what we shall tell him, for we can't make our case by reason of darkness. Will it be told him that I would speak? Or should a man wish that he were swallowed up? Now men don't see the light which is bright in the skies, but the wind passes and clears them. Out of the north comes golden splendor. With God is awesome majesty. We can't reach the Almighty. 
he is exalted in power, in justice and great righteousness. He will not oppress. Therefore men revere him. He doesn't regard any who are wise of heart. Chapter 38 Then Yahweh answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man, for I will question you. Then you answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if you have understanding. Who determined its measures, if you know? Or who stretched the line on it? Whereupon were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea? with doors, when it broke out of the womb, when I made clouds its garment, and wrapped it in thick darkness, marked out for it my bound, set bars and doors, and said, Here you may come, but no further. Here your proud waves shall be stayed. Have you commanded the morning in your days? and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and shake the wicked out of it. It is changed as clay under the seal and presented as a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld. The high arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or... Have you walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the earth in its width? Declare, if you know it all. What is the way to the dwelling of light? As for darkness, where is its place? that you should take it to its bound, that you should discern the paths to its house. Surely you know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. Have you entered the treasuries of the snow, or have you seen the treasures of the hell, which I have reserved against the time of trouble? against the day of battle and war? By what way is the lightning distributed, or the east wind scattered on the earth? Who has cut a channel for the flood water, or the path for the thunderstorm, to cause it to rain on a land where no man is, on the wilderness in which there is no man, to satisfy the waste and desolate ground, to cause the tender grass to grow. Does the rain have a father, or who fathers the drops of dew? Out of whose womb came the ice, the gray frost of the sky? Who has given birth to it? The waters become hard like stone when the surface of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades, or loosen the cords of Orion? Can you lead the constellations out in their season, or can you guide the bear with her cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you establish its dominion over the earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds, that abundance of waters may cover you? Can you send out lightnings, that they may go? Do they report to you, here we are? Who has put wisdom in the inward parts, 
or who has given understanding to the mind? Who can count the clouds by wisdom? Or who can pour out the containers of the sky when the dust runs into a mass and the clods of earth stick together? Can you hunt the prey for the lioness? Or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens and lie in wait in the thicket? Who provides for the raven his prey when his young ones cry to God and wonder for lack of food? Chapter 39 do you know the time when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch when the doe bears fawns? Can you count the months that they fulfill? Or do you know the time when they give birth? They vow themselves. They bear their young. They end their labor pains. Their young ones become strong. They grow up in the open field. They go out and don't return again. Who has set the wild donkey free? Or who has loosened the bonds of the swift donkey? Whose home I have made the wilderness and the salt land his dwelling place? He scorns the tumult of the city. Neither does he hear the shouting of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture. He searches after every green thing. Will the wild ox be content to serve you? Or will he stay by your feeding trough? Can you hold the wild ox in the furrow with his harness? Or will he till the valleys after you? Will you trust him because his strength is great? Or will you leave to him your labor? Will you confide in him that he will bring home your seed and gather the grain of your threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich wave proudly, but are they the feathers and plumage of love? For she leaves her eggs on the earth, warms them in the dust, and forgets that the foot may crush them, or that the wild animal may trample them. She deals harshly with her young ones, as if they were not hers. Though her labor is in vain, she is without fear because God has deprived her of wisdom. Neither has he imparted to her understanding. When she lifts up herself on high, she scorns the horse and his rider. Have you given the horse might? Have you clothed his neck with a quivering mane? Have you made him to leap as a locust? The glory of his snorting is awesome. He paws in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He goes out to meet the armed men. He mocks at fear and is not dismayed. Neither does he turn back from the sword. The quiver rattles against him, the flashing spear and the javelin. He eats up the ground with fierceness and rage. Neither does he stand still at the sound of the trumpet. As often as the trumpet sounds, he snorts, aha. He smells the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Is it by your wisdom that the hawk soars? and stretches her wings toward the south? Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high? On the cliff he dwells and makes his home, on the point of the cliff and the stronghold. From there 
he spies out the prey. His eyes see it afar off. His young ones also suck up blood. Where the slain are, there he is. Chapter 40 Moreover, Yahweh answered Job, Shall he who argues contend with the Almighty? He who argues with God, let him answer it. Then Job answered Yahweh, Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand on my mouth. I have spoken once, and I will not answer. Yes, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then Yahweh answered Job out of the whirlwind. Now brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you will answer me. Will you even annul my judgment? Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Or do you have an arm like God? Can you thunder with a voice like him? Now deck yourself with excellency and dignity. Array yourself with honor and majesty. Pour out the fury of your anger. Look at everyone who is proud and bring him low. Look at everyone who is proud and humble him. Crush the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together. Bind their faces in the hidden place. Then I will also admit to you that your own right hand can save you. See now, behemoth, which I made as well as you. He eats grass as an ox. Look now, his strength is in his thighs. His force is in the muscles of his belly. He moves his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are knit together. His bones are like tubes of bronze. His limbs are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He who made him gives him his sword. Surely the mountains produce food for him, where all the animals of the field play. He lies under the lotus trees, in the covert of the reed and the marsh. The lotuses cover him with their shade. The willows of the brook surround him. Behold, if a river overflows, he doesn't tremble. He is confident, though the Jordan swells even to his mouth. Shall any take him when he is on the watch, or pierce through his nose with a snare? Chapter 41 Can you draw out Leviathan with a fish hook? or press down his tongue with a cord? Can you put a rope into his nose, or pierce his jaw through with a hook? Will he make many petitions to you, or will he speak soft words to you? Will he make a covenant with you that you should take him for a servant forever? Will you play with him as with a bird? Or will you bind him for your girls? Will traders barter for him? Will they part him among the merchants? Can you feel his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle, and do so no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Won't one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that he dare stir him up. Who, then, is he who can stand before me? 
who has first given to me, that I should repay him. Everything under the heavens is mine. I will not keep silence concerning his limbs, nor his mighty strength, nor his goodly frame. Who can strip off his outer garment? Who shall come within his jaws? Who can open the doors of his face? Around his teeth is terror. Strong scales are his pride, shut up together with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined to one another. They stick together so that they can't be pulled apart. His sneezing flashes out light. His eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning torches. Sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils a smoke goes, as of a boiling pot over a fire of reeds. His breath kindles coals. A flame goes out of his mouth. There is strength in his neck. Terror dances before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm on him. They can't be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone. Yes, firm as the lower millstone. When he raises himself up, the mighty are afraid. They retreat before his thrashing. If one attacks him with the sword, it can't prevail, nor the spear, the dart, nor the pointed shaft. He counts iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow can't make him flee. Sling stones are like chaff to him. Clubs are counted as stubble. He laughs at the rushing of the javelin. His undersides are like sharp potsherds, leaving a trail in the mud like a threshing sledge. He makes the deep to boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. He makes a path shine after him. One would think the deep had white hair. On earth there is not his equal that is made without fear. He sees everything that is high. He is king over all the sons of pride. Chapter 42 Then Job answered Yahweh, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be restrained. You asked, Who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that which I didn't understand, things too wonderful for me, which I didn't know. You said, Listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you will answer me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. It was so, that after Yahweh had spoken these words to Job, Yahweh said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you, and against your two friends. For you have not spoken of me, the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore, Take to yourselves seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept him, that I not deal with you according to your folly. For you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite, went, and did what Yahweh commanded them. 
and Yahweh accepted Job. Yahweh turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Yahweh gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there to him all his brothers and all his sisters and all those who had been of his acquaintance before and ate bread with him in his house. They comforted him and consoled him concerning all the evil that Yahweh had brought on him. Everyone also gave him a piece of money, and everyone a ring of gold. So Yahweh blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a thousand female donkeys. He had also seven sons and three daughters. He called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Hapuk. In all the land were no women found so beautiful as the daughters of Job. Their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons to four generations. So Job died, being old and full of days. End of section 44. The Psalms Book 1 Psalm 1 Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand on the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in Yahweh's law. On his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the streams of water that produces its fruit in its season, whose leaf also does not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Psalm 2 Why do the nations rage, and the peoples plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth take a stand, and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, Let's break their bonds apart and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens will laugh. The Lord will have them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his wrath. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will tell of the decree. Yahweh said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will give the nations for your inheritance, the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, you kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth, Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. Give sincere homage to the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish on the way, for his wrath will soon be kindled. Blessed are all those who take refuge in him. Psalm 3 A Psalm by David When He Fled from Absalom his son. Yahweh, how my adversaries have increased! Many are those who rise up against me. 
Many there are who say of my soul, There is no help for him in God. But you, Yahweh, are a shield around me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cry to Yahweh with my voice, and he answers me out of his holy hill. I laid myself down and slept. I awaken, for Yahweh sustains me. I will not be afraid of tens of thousands of people who have set themselves against me on every side. Arise, Yahweh, save me, my God, for you have struck all of my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to Yahweh. Your blessing be on your people. Psalm 4 For the Chief Musician on Stringed Instruments A Psalm by David Answer me when I call, God of my righteousness. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You sons of men, how long shall my glory be turned into dishonor? Will you love vanity and seek after falsehood? But know that Yahweh has set apart for himself him who is godly. Yahweh will hear when I call to him. Stand in awe and don't sin. Search your own heart on your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness. Put your trust in Yahweh. Many say, who will show us any good? Yahweh, let the light of your face shine on us. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and their new wine are increased. In peace I will both lay myself down and sleep. For you, Yahweh, alone, make me live in safety. Psalm 5 for the chief musician with the flutes, a song by David. Give ear to my words, Yahweh. Consider my meditation. Listen to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for I pray to you. Yahweh, in the morning you shall hear my voice. In the morning I will lay my requests before you and will watch expectantly. For you are not a God who has pleasure in wickedness. Evil can't live with you. The arrogant shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You will destroy those who speak lies. Yahweh abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me, in the abundance of your loving kindness, I will come into your house. I will bow toward your holy temple in reverence of you. Lead me, Yahweh, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their heart is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Hold them guilty, God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Thrust them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them always shout for joy, because you defend them. Let them also who love your name be joyful in you, for you will bless the righteous. Yahweh, you will surround him with favor, as with a shield. Psalm 6 For the chief musician on stringed instruments upon the eight-stringed lyre, a psalm by David. Yahweh, don't rebuke me in your anger, neither discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Yahweh, for I am faint. Yahweh, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul is also in great anguish. But you, Yahweh, how long? 
return, Yahweh. Deliver my soul and save me for your loving kindness sake. For in death there is no memory of you. In Sheol, who shall give you thanks? I am weary with my groaning. Every night I flood my bed. I drench my couch with my tears. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows old because of all my adversaries. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for Yahweh has heard the voice of my weeping. Yahweh has heard my supplication. Yahweh accepts my prayer. May all my enemies be ashamed and dismayed. They shall turn back. They shall be disgraced suddenly. Psalm 7 A Meditation by David, which he sang to Yahweh, concerning the words of Cush the Benjamite. Yahweh, my God, I take refuge in you. Save me from all those who pursue me and deliver me lest they tear apart my soul like a lion, ripping it in pieces, while there is no one to deliver. Yahweh, my God, if I have done this, if there is iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil to him who was at peace with me, yes, I have delivered him who without cause was my adversary. Let the enemy pursue my soul and overtake it, Yes, let him tread my life down to the earth and lay my glory in the dust. Arise, Yahweh, in your anger. Lift up yourself against the rage of my adversaries. Awake for me. You have commanded judgment. Let the congregation of the peoples surround you. Rule over them on high. Yahweh administers judgment to the people. Judge me, Yahweh, according to my righteousness and to my integrity that is in me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous. Their minds and hearts are searched by the righteous God. My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, yes, a God who has indignation every day. If a man doesn't repent, he will sharpen his sword. He has bent and strung his bow. He has also prepared for himself the instruments of death. He makes ready his flaming arrows. Behold, he travails with iniquity. Yes, he has conceived mischief and brought out falsehood. He has dug a hole and has fallen into the pit which he made. The trouble he causes shall return to his own head. His violence shall come down on the crown of his own head. I will give thanks to Yahweh according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of Yahweh Most High. Psalm 8 for the chief musician on an instrument of Gath, a psalm by David. Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of babes and infants you have established strength because of your adversaries, that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you think of him? What is the son of man that you care for him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You make him ruler over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet all sheep and cattle, yes, and the animals of the field, the birds of the sky, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes through the paths of the seas. Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth!
Psalm 9. For the chief musician set to the death of the son, a psalm by David. I will give thanks to Yahweh with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish in your presence, for you have maintained my just cause. You sit on the throne judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy is overtaken by endless ruin. The very memory of the cities which you have overthrown has perished. But Yahweh reigns forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will administer judgment to the peoples in uprightness. Yahweh will also be a high tower for the oppressed, a high tower in times of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Yahweh, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to Yahweh who dwells in Zion and declare among the people what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers them. He doesn't forget the cry of the afflicted. Have mercy on me, Yahweh. See my affliction by those who hate me, and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may show all of your praise. In the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid, their own foot is taken. Yahweh has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked is snared by the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned back to Sheol, even all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Arise, Yahweh, don't let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, Yahweh. Let the nations know that they are only men. Psalm 10 Why do you stand far off, Yahweh? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In arrogance, the wicked hunt down the weak. They are caught in the schemes that they devise, for the wicked boasts of his heart's cravings. He blesses the greedy and condemns Yahweh. The wicked, in the pride of his face, has no room in his thoughts for God. His ways are prosperous at all times. He is arrogant, and your laws are far from his sight. As for all his adversaries, he sneers at them. He says in his heart, I shall not be shaken. For generations I shall have no trouble. His mouth is full of cursing, deceit, and oppression. Under his tongue is mischief and iniquity. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambushes he murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly set against the helpless. He lurks in secret as a lion in his ambush. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless when he draws him in his net. The helpless are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see it. Arise, Yahweh. God, lift up your hand. Don't forget the helpless. Why does the wicked person condemn God and say in his heart, God won't call me into account? But you do see trouble and grief. You consider it to take it into your hand. You help the victim and the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked. As for the evil man, 
Seek out his wickedness until you find none. Yahweh is king forever and ever. The nations will perish out of his land. Yahweh, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that man who is of the earth may terrify no more. Psalm 11 For the Chief Musician by David In Yahweh I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, Flee as a bird to your mountain? For, behold, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows on the strings, that they may shoot in darkness at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yahweh is in his holy temple. Yahweh is on his throne in heaven. His eyes observe. His eyes examine the children of men. Yahweh examines the righteous, but the wicked and him who loves violence his soul hates. On the wicked he will rain blazing coals. Fire, sulfur, and scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For Yahweh is righteous. He loves righteousness. The upright shall see his face. Psalm 12 for the chief musician upon an eight-stringed lyre, a psalm of David. Help, Yahweh, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Everyone lies to his neighbor. They speak with flattering lips and with a double heart. May Yahweh cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that boasts, who have said, With our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Because of the oppression of the weak, and because of the groaning of the needy, I will now arise, says Yahweh. I will set him in safety from those who malign him. Yahweh's words are flawless words, as silver, refined in a clay furnace, purified seven times. You will keep them, Yahweh. You will preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when what is vile is exalted among the sons of men. Psalm 13 For the Chief Musician a Psalm by David. How long, Yahweh, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart every day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Behold and answer me, Yahweh my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death, lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him, lest my adversaries rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your loving kindness. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to Yahweh, because he has been good to me. Psalm 14 for the Chief Musician by David The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. Yahweh looked down from heaven on the children of men to see if there were any who understood, who sought after God. They have all gone aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and don't call on Yahweh? There they were in great fear.
for God is in the generation of the righteous. You frustrate the plan of the poor, because Yahweh is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When Yahweh restores the fortunes of his people, then Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Psalm 15 A Psalm by David Yahweh, who shall dwell in your sanctuary? Who shall live on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. He who doesn't slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his friend, nor casts slurs against his fellow man, in whose eyes a vile man is despised, but who honors those who fear Yahweh. He who keeps an oath, even when it hurts, and doesn't change. He who doesn't lend out his money for usury, nor take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be shaken. Psalm 16 A Poem by David Preserve me, God, for I take refuge in you. My soul, you have said to Yahweh, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who give gifts to another god. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take their names on my lips. Yahweh assigned my portion and my cup. You made my lot secure. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless Yahweh, who has given me counsel. Yes, my heart instructs me in the night seasons. I have set Yahweh always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body shall also dwell in safety, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol, neither will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 17 a prayer by David. Hear, Yahweh, my righteous plea. Give ear to my prayer that doesn't go out of deceitful lips. Let my sentence come out of your presence. Let your eyes look on equity. You have proved my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and found nothing. I have resolved that my mouth shall not disobey. As for the deeds of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I have called on you, for you will answer me, God. Turn your ear to me. Hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness. You who save those who take refuge by your right hand from their enemies. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me, my deadly enemies who surround me. They close up their callous hearts. With their mouth they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They set their eyes to cast us down to the earth. He is like a lion that is greedy of his prey, as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, Yahweh, confront him, cast him down. 
deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, from men by your hand, Yahweh, from men of the world whose portion is in this life. You fill the belly of your cherished ones. Your sons have plenty, and they store up wealth for their children. As for me, I shall see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with seeing your form. Psalm 18 For the Chief Musician by David, the servant of Yahweh, who spoke to Yahweh the words of this song in the day that Yahweh delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, I love you, Yahweh, my strength. Yahweh is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower. I call on Yahweh, who is worthy to be praised. And I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death surrounded me. The floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The cords of Sheol were around me. The snares of death came on me. In my distress, I called on Yahweh and cried to my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. My cry before him came into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the mountains quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Smoke went out of his nostrils. Consuming fire came out of his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. Yes, he soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place his pavilion around him, darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. Yahweh also thundered in the sky. The Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them, Yes, great lightning bolts, and routed them. Then the channels of water appeared. The foundations of the world were laid bare at your rebuke, Yahweh, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They came on me in the day of my calamity, but Yahweh was my support. He brought me out also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Yahweh has rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of Yahweh and have not wickedly departed from my God for all his ordinances were before me. I didn't put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless with him. I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, Yahweh has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With the perfect man, you will show yourself perfect. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the crooked, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the afflicted people, but the arrogant eyes you will bring down. For you will light my lamp, Yahweh. My God will light up my darkness. For by you, I advance through a troop. By my God, I leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. Yahweh's word is tried. He is a shield 
to all those who take refuge in him. For who is God except Yahweh? Who is a rock besides our God? The God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like deer's feet and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that my arms bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand sustains me. Your gentleness has made me great. You have enlarged my steps under me. My feet have not slipped. I will pursue my enemies and overtake them. I won't turn away until they are consumed. I will strike them through so that they will not be able to rise. They shall fall under my feet, for you have armed me with strength to the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also made my enemies turn their backs to me, that I might cut off those who hate me. They cried, but there was no one to save, even to Yahweh, but he didn't answer them. Then I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I cast them out as the mire of the streets. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The foreigners shall submit themselves to me. The foreigners shall fade away and shall come trembling out of their strongholds. Yahweh lives, and blessed be my rock. Exalted be the God of my salvation even the God who executes vengeance for me and subdues peoples under me. He rescues me from my enemies. Yes, you lift me up above those who rise up against me. You deliver me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, Yahweh, among the nations, and will sing praises to your name. He gives great deliverance to his king and shows loving kindness to his anointed, to David, and to his offspring forevermore. Psalm 19 For the Chief Musician, a Psalm by David The heavens declare the glory of God. The expanse shows his handiwork. Day after day they pour out speech and night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their voice has gone out through all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his room, like a strong man rejoicing to run his course. His going out is from the end of the heavens, his circuit, to its ends. There is nothing hidden from its heat. Yahweh's law is perfect, restoring the soul. Yahweh's covenant is sure, making wise the simple. Yahweh's precepts are right, rejoicing the heart. Yahweh's commandment is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. Yahweh's ordinances are true and righteous altogether. They are more to be desired than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the extract of the honeycomb. Moreover, your servant is warned by them. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive me from hidden errors. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I will be upright. I will be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 20 
for the chief musician, a psalm by David. May Yahweh answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob set you up on high, send you help from the sanctuary, grant you support from Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burned sacrifice. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your counsel. We will triumph in your salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May Yahweh grant all your requests. Now I know that Yahweh saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of Yahweh our God. They are bowed down and fallen, but we rise up and stand upright. Save, Yahweh. Let the king answer us when we call. Psalm 21 For the Chief Musician A Psalm by David The king rejoices in your strength, Yahweh. How greatly he rejoices in your salvation. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. For you meet him with the blessings of goodness. You set a crown of fine gold on his head. He asked life of you. You gave it to him, even length of days, forever and ever. His glory is great in your salvation. You lay honor and majesty on him, for you make him most blessed forever. You make him glad with joy in your presence, for the king trusts in Yahweh. Through the loving kindness of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Your hand will find out all of your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them as a fiery furnace in the time of your anger. Yahweh will swallow them up in his wrath. The fire shall devour them. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from among the children of men. For they intended evil against you. They plotted evil against you which cannot succeed. For you will make them turn their back when you aim drawn bows at their face. Be exalted, Yahweh, in your strength. So we will sing and praise your power. Psalm 22 For the chief musician, set to the doe of the morning, a psalm by David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry in the daytime, but you don't answer. In the night season, and I'm not silent. But you are holy, you who inhabit the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and were delivered. They trusted in you, and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. All those who see me mock me. They insult me with their lips. They shake their heads, saying, He trusts in Yahweh. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, since he delights in him. But you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust while at my mother's breasts. I was thrown on you from my mother's womb. You are my God since my mother bore me. Don't be far from me, for trouble is near, for there is no one to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They open their mouths wide against me, lions tearing prey and roaring. 
I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me. A company of evildoers have enclosed me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all of my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. But don't be far off, Yahweh. You are my help. Hurry to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. Yes, from the horns of the wild oxen, you have answered me. I will declare your name to my brother. Among the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear Yahweh, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. My praise of you comes in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The humble shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise Yahweh who seek after him. Let your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to Yahweh. All the relatives of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is Yahweh's. He is the ruler over the nations. All the rich ones of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him, even he who can't keep his soul alive. Posterity shall serve him. Future generations shall be told about the Lord. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness to a people that shall be born, for he has done it. Psalm 23 A Psalm by David Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in Yahweh's house forever. Psalm 24 A Psalm by David The earth is Yahweh's, with its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it on the seas, and established it on the floods. Who may ascend to Yahweh's hill? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood, and has not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from Yahweh, righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, even Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory will come in. Who is the king of glory? Yahweh, strong and mighty. Yahweh, 
mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Yes, lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? Yahweh of armies is the King of glory. Psalm 25 By David To you, Yahweh, I lift up my soul, my God. I have trusted in you. Don't let me be shamed. Don't let my enemies triumph over me. Yes, no one who waits for you will be shamed. They will be shamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, Yahweh. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. I wait for you all day long. Yahweh, remember your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from old times. Don't remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. Remember me according to your loving kindness, for your goodness sake, Yahweh. Good and upright is Yahweh, therefore he will instruct sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in justice. He will teach the humble his way. All the paths of Yahweh are loving kindness and truth to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, Yahweh, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he who fears Yahweh? He shall instruct him in the way that he shall choose. His soul will dwell at ease. His offspring will inherit the land. The friendship of Yahweh is with those who fear him. He will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever on Yahweh, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my travail. Forgive all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many. They hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be disappointed, for I take refuge in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, God, out of all his troubles. Psalm 26 By David Judge me, Yahweh, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in Yahweh without wavering. Examine me, Yahweh, and prove me. Try my heart and my mind for your loving kindness is before my eyes. I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with deceitful men, neither will I go in with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, Yahweh, that I may make the voice of thanksgiving to be heard and tell of all your wondrous deeds. Yahweh, I love the habitation of your house, the place where your glory dwells. Don't gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands is wickedness. Their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me, and be merciful to me. My foot stands in an even place. In the congregations, I will bless Yahweh. Psalm 27 By David Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 
when evildoers came at me to eat up my flesh, even my adversaries and my foes. They stumbled and fell, though an army should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I have asked of Yahweh, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in Yahweh's house all the days of my life, to see Yahweh's beauty, and to inquire in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me secretly in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. Now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tent. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to Yahweh. Hear, Yahweh, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also on me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, I will seek your face, Yahweh. Don't hide your face from me. Don't put your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Don't abandon me, neither forsake me, God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahweh will take me up. Teach me your way, Yahweh. Lead me in a straight path because of my enemies. Don't deliver me over to the desire of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, such as breathe out cruelty. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of Yahweh in the land of the living. Wait for Yahweh. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for Yahweh. Psalm 28 by David To you, Yahweh, I call. My rock, don't be deaf to me, lest, if you are silent to me, I would become like those who go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my petitions when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy place. Don't draw me away with the wicked, with the workers of iniquity, who speak peace with their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their work and according to the wickedness of their doings. Give them according to the operation of their hands. Bring back on them what they deserve, because they don't respect the works of Yahweh, nor the operation of his hands. He will break them down and not build them up. Blessed be Yahweh, because he has heard the voice of my petitions. Yahweh is my strength and my shield. My heart has trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. With my song, I will thank him. Yahweh is their strength. He is a stronghold of salvation to his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd also and bear them up forever. Psalm 29 A Psalm by David Ascribe to Yahweh, you sons of the mighty, Ascribe to Yahweh glory and strength. Ascribe to Yahweh the glory due to his name. Worship Yahweh in holy array. Yahweh's voice is on the waters. The God of glory thunders, even Yahweh on many waters. Yahweh's voice is powerful. Yahweh's voice is full of majesty. Yahweh's voice breaks the cedars. Yes, Yahweh breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also to skip like a calf. 
Lebanon, and Syrian, like a young wild ox. Yahweh's voice strikes with flashes of lightning. Yahweh's voice shakes the wilderness. Yahweh shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. Yahweh's voice makes the deer calve and strips the forests bare. In his temple, everything says glory. Yahweh sat enthroned at the flood. Yes, Yahweh sits as king forever. Yahweh will give strength to his people. Yahweh will bless his people with peace. Psalm 30 A Psalm A Song for the Dedication of the Temple by David I will extol you, Yahweh, for you have raised me up and have not made my foes to rejoice over me. Yahweh, my God, I cried to you, and you have healed me. Yahweh, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to Yahweh, you saints of his. Give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. You, Yahweh, when you favored me, made my mountain stand strong. But when you hid your face, I was troubled. I cried to you, Yahweh. I made supplication to the Lord. What profit is there in my destruction if I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise you? Shall it declare your truth? Hear, Yahweh, and have mercy on me. Yahweh, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing for me. You have removed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my heart may sing praise to you and not be silent. Yahweh, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Psalm 31 For the Chief Musician, a Psalm by David in you, Yahweh, I take refuge. Let me never be disappointed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be to me a strong rock, a house of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pluck me out of the net that they have laid secretly for me, for you are my stronghold. Into your hand I commend my spirit. You redeem me, Yahweh, God of truth. I hate those who regard lying vanities, but I trust in Yahweh. I will be glad and rejoice in your loving kindness, for you have seen my affliction. You have known my soul in adversities. You have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a large place. Have mercy on me, Yahweh, for I am in distress. My eye, my soul, and my body waste away with grief, for my life is spent with sorrow, my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity. My bones are wasted away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become utterly contemptible to my neighbors, a horror to my acquaintances. Those who saw me on the street fled from me. I am forgotten from their hearts like a dead man. I am like broken pottery, for I have heard the slander of many terror on every side while they conspire together against me. 
They plot to take away my life. But I trust in you, Yahweh. I said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine on your servant. Save me in your loving kindness. Let me not be disappointed, Yahweh, for I have called on you. Let the wicked be disappointed. Let them be silent in Sheol. Let the lying lips be mute, which speak against the righteous insolently, with pride and contempt. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have worked for those who take refuge in you, before the sons of men. In the shelter of your presence, you will hide them from the plotting of man. You will keep them secretly in a dwelling away from the strife of tongues. Praise be to Yahweh, for he has shown me his marvelous loving kindness in a strong city. As for me, I said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my petitions when I cried to you. O oh, love Yahweh, all you his saints. Yahweh preserves the faithful and fully recompenses him who behaves arrogantly. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who hope in Yahweh. Psalm 32 By David a contemplative psalm. Blessed is he whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom Yahweh doesn't impute iniquity, in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silence, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped in the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you. I didn't hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to Yahweh. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely when the great waters overflow, they shall not reach to him. You are my hiding place. You will preserve me from trouble. You will surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. I will counsel you with my eye on you. Don't be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, who are controlled by bit and bridle, or else they will not come near to you. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but loving kindness shall surround him who trusts in Yahweh. Be glad in Yahweh and rejoice, you righteous. Shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Psalm 33 Rejoice in Yahweh, you righteous. Praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to Yahweh with the lyre. Sing praises to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy, for Yahweh's word is right. All his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of Yahweh. By Yahweh's word, the heavens were made, all their army by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear Yahweh. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded and it stood firm. 
Yahweh brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the thoughts of the peoples to be of no effect. The counsel of Yahweh stands fast forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Yahweh looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth, he who fashions all of their hearts, and he considers all of their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither does he deliver any by his great power. Behold, Yahweh's eye is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his loving kindness to deliver their soul from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul has waited for Yahweh. He is our help and our shield, for our heart rejoices in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your loving kindness be on us, Yahweh, since we have hoped in you. End of section 45. Psalm 34 By David, when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. I will bless Yahweh at all times. His praise will always be in my mouth. My soul shall boast in Yahweh. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify Yahweh with me. Let's exalt his name together. I sought Yahweh, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him, and were radiant. Their faces shall never be covered with shame. This poor man cried, and Yahweh heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Yahweh's angel encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that Yahweh is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear Yahweh, you his saints, for there is no lack with those who fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek Yahweh shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of Yahweh. Who is someone who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Yahweh's eyes are toward the righteous. His ears listen to their cry. Yahweh's face is against those who do evil to cut off their memory from the earth. The righteous cry, and Yahweh hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Yahweh is near to those who have a broken heart and saves those who have a crushed spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahweh delivers him out of them all. He protects all of his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall kill the wicked. Those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Yahweh redeems the soul of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him shall be condemned. Psalm 35 By David Contend, Yahweh, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Brandish the spear 
and block those who pursue me. Tell my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my soul be disappointed and brought to dishonor. Let those who plot my ruin be turned back and confounded. Let them be as chaff before the wind, Yahweh's angel driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery, Yahweh's angel pursuing them. For without cause they have hidden their net in a pit for me. Without cause they have dug a pit for my soul. Let destruction come on him unawares. Let his net that he has hidden catch himself. Let him fall into that destruction. My soul shall be joyful in Yahweh. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Yahweh, who is like you, who delivers the poor from him, who is too strong for him? Yes, the poor and the needy from him who robs him. Unrighteous witnesses rise up. They ask me about things that I don't know about. They reward me evil for good to the bereaving of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I afflicted my soul with fasting. My prayer returned into my own bosom. I behaved myself as though it had been my friend or my brother. I bowed down mourning as one who mourns his mother. But in my adversity they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. The attackers gathered themselves together against me, and I didn't know it. They tore at me and didn't cease. Like the profane mockers in feasts, they gnashed their teeth at me. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction, my precious life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Don't let those who are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let those who hate me without a cause wink their eyes. For they don't speak peace, but they devise deceitful words against those who are quiet in the land. Yes, they open their mouth wide against me. They say, Aha, aha, our eye has seen it. You have seen it, Yahweh. Don't keep silent. Lord, don't be far from me. Wake up. Rise up to defend me, my God. My Lord, contend for me. Vindicate me, Yahweh, my God, according to your righteousness. Don't let them gloat over me. Don't let them say in their heart, Aha, that's the way we want it. Don't let them say, We have swallowed him up. Let them be disappointed and confounded together, who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Yes, let them say continually, Yahweh be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. My tongue shall talk about your righteousness and about your praise all day long. Psalm 36 For the Chief Musician by David, the Servant of Yahweh A revelation is within my heart about the disobedience of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes, too much to detect and hate his sin. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He plots iniquity on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He doesn't abhor evil. Your loving kindness, Yahweh, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like a great deep. Yahweh, you preserve man and animal. 
How precious is your loving kindness, God! The children of men take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the abundance of your house. You will make them drink of the river of your pleasures, for with you is the spring of life. In your light we will see light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. Don't let the foot of pride come against me. Don't let the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the workers of iniquity are fallen. They are thrust down and shall not be able to rise. Psalm 37 By David don't fret because of evildoers, neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in Yahweh and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy a safe pasture. Also, delight yourself in Yahweh, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to Yahweh, Trust also in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness go out as the light, and your justice as the noonday sun. Rest in Yahweh, and wait patiently for him. Don't fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who makes wicked plots happen. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Don't fret. It leads only to evil doing, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for Yahweh shall inherit the land. For yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Yes, though you look for his place, he isn't there. But the humble shall inherit the land, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord will laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, to kill those who are upright on the path. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. Their bows shall be broken. Better is a little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but Yahweh upholds the righteous. Yahweh knows the days of the perfect. Their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be disappointed in the time of evil. In the days of famine they shall be satisfied, but the wicked shall perish. The enemies of Yahweh shall be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and don't pay back, but the righteous give generously. For such as are blessed by him shall inherit the land. Those who are cursed by him shall be cut off. A man's goings are established by Yahweh. He delights in his way. Though he stumble, he shall not fall, for Yahweh holds him up with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. All day long he deals graciously and lends. His offspring is blessed. Depart from evil and do good. Live securely forever. For Yahweh loves justice and doesn't forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouth of the righteous talks of wisdom. His tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to kill him. Yahweh will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged.
wait for Yahweh and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, spreading himself like a green tree in its native soil. But he passed away, and behold, he was not. Yes, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and see the upright, for there is a future for the man of peace. As for transgressors, they shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from Yahweh. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. Yahweh helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they have taken refuge in him. Psalm 38 A Psalm by David for a Memorial Yahweh don't rebuke me in your wrath, neither chasten me in your hot displeasure, for your arrows have pierced me, your hand presses hard on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation, neither is there any health in my bones because of my sin, for my iniquities have gone over my head. As a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds are loathsome and corrupt because of my foolishness. I am pained and bowed down greatly. I go mourning all day long, for my waist is filled with burning. There is no soundness in my flesh. I am faint and severely bruised. I have groaned by reason of the anguish of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you. My groaning is not hidden from you. My heart throbs. My strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it has also left me. My lovers and my friends stand aloof from my plague. My kinsmen stand far away. They also who seek after my life lay snares. Those who seek my hurt speak mischievous things and meditate deceits all day long. But I, as a deaf man, don't hear. I am as a mute man who doesn't open his mouth. Yes, I am as a man who doesn't hear, in whose mouth are no reproofs. For in you, Yahweh, do I hope. You will answer, Lord my God, for I said, don't let them gloat over me or exalt themselves over me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall. My pain is continually before me, for I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. But my enemies are vigorous and many. Those who hate me without reason are numerous. They who render evil for good are also adversaries to me, because I follow what is good. Don't forsake me, Yahweh. My God, don't be far from me. Hurry to help me, Lord, my salvation. Psalm 39 For the Chief Musician for a Jeduthun a Psalm by David. I said, I will watch my ways so that I don't sin with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was mute with silence. I held my peace, even from good. My sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. I spoke with my tongue. Yahweh, show me my end. What is the measure of my days? Let me know how frail I am. Behold, you have made my days hand widths. My lifetime is as nothing before you. 
surely every man stands as a breath. Surely every man walks like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up and doesn't know who shall gather. Now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Don't make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I didn't open my mouth because you did it. Remove your scourge away from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. When you rebuke and correct man for iniquity, you consume his wealth like a moth. Surely every man is but a breath. Hear my prayer, Yahweh, and give ear to my cry. Don't be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a foreigner as all my fathers were. Oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go away and exist no more. Psalm 40 for the Chief Musician, a Psalm by David. I waited patiently for Yahweh. He turned to me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He has put a new song in my mouth even praise to our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in Yahweh. Blessed is the man who makes Yahweh his trust and doesn't respect the proud nor such as turn away to lies. Many, Yahweh my God, are the wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts which are toward us. They can't be declared back to you. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you didn't desire. You have opened my ears. You have not required burnt offering and sin offering. Then I said, Behold, I have come. It is written about me in the book, in the scroll. I delight to do your will, my God, yes. Your law is within my heart. I have proclaimed glad news of righteousness in the great assembly. Behold, I will not seal my lips, Yahweh, you know. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. Don't withhold your tender mercies from me, Yahweh. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me, for innumerable evils have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. My heart has failed me. Be pleased, Yahweh, to deliver me. Hurry to help me, Yahweh. Let them be disappointed and confounded together who seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be turned backward and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let them be desolate by reason of their shame that tell me, Aha! Aha! Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually, Let Yahweh be exalted. But I am poor and needy. May the Lord think about me. You are my help and my deliverer. Don't delay, my God. Psalm 41 For the Chief Musician a Psalm by David. Blessed is he who considers the poor. Yahweh will deliver him in the day of evil. Yahweh will preserve him and keep him alive. 
he shall be blessed on the earth and he will not surrender him to the will of his enemies yahweh will sustain him on his sick bed and restore him from his bed of illness i said yahweh have mercy on me heal me for i have sinned against you my enemies speak evil against me when will he die and his name perish if he comes to see me he speaks falsehood his heart gathers iniquity to itself when he goes abroad he tells it all who hate me whisper together against me they imagine the worst for me an evil disease they say has afflicted him now that he lies he shall rise up no more yes my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate bread with me, has lifted up his heel against me. But you, Yahweh, have mercy on me, and raise me up, that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me, because my enemy doesn't triumph over me. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity, and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and Amen. Book 2 Psalm 42 For the Chief Musician A Contemplation by the Sons of Korah as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants after you, God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food, day and night, while they continually ask me, Where is your God? These things I remember, and pour out my soul within me how I used to go with the crowd and led them to God's house, with the voice of joy and praise, a multitude keeping a holy day. Why are you in despair, my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall still praise him for the saving help of his presence. My God, my soul is in despair within me, Therefore I remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and your billows have swept over me. Yahweh will command his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will ask God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, my adversaries reproach me, while they continually ask me, where is your God? Why are you in despair, my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? Hope in God for I shall still praise him, the saving help of my countenance and my God. Psalm 43 Vindicate me, God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Oh, deliver me from deceitful and wicked men, for you are the God of my strength. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill, to your tents. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my exceeding joy. I will praise you on the harp, God, my God. Why are you in despair, my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? 
hope in God, for I shall still praise him, my Savior, my Helper, and my God. Psalm 44 For the Chief Musician by the Sons of Korah A Contemplative Psalm We have heard with our ears, God, our fathers have told us what work you did in their days, in the days of old. You drove out the nations with your hand, but you planted them. You afflicted the peoples, but you spread them abroad. For they didn't get the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your face because you were favorable to them. You are my king, God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you will we push down our adversaries. Through your name we will tread them under who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our adversaries and have shamed those who hate us. In God we have made our boast all day long. We will give thanks to your name forever. But now you rejected us and brought us to dishonor, and don't go out with our armies. You make us turn back from the adversary. Those who hate us take plunder for themselves. You have made us like sheep for food and have scattered us among the nations. You sell your people for nothing and have gained nothing from their sale. You make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scoffing and a derision to those who are around us. You make us a byword among the nations, a shaking of the head among the peoples. All day long my dishonor is before me, and shame covers my face at the taunt of one who reproaches and verbally abuses because of the enemy and the avenger. All this has come on us, yet we haven't forgotten you. We haven't been false to your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, neither have our steps strayed from your path. Though you have crushed us in the haunt of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death, if we have forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a strange God, won't God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Yes, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Wake up. Why do you sleep, Lord? Arise. Don't reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and our oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust, our body clings to the earth. Rise up to help us. Redeem us for your loving kindness sake. Psalm 45 For the Chief Musician Set to The Lilies a contemplation by the sons of Korah, a wedding song. My heart overflows with a noble theme. I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is like the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of the sons of men. Grace has anointed your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Strap your sword on your thigh, mighty one your splendor, and your majesty. In your majesty, ride on victoriously on behalf of truth, humility, and righteousness. Let your right hand display awesome deeds. Your arrows are sharp. The nations fall under you with arrows in the heart of the king's enemies. Your throne, God, is forever and ever. A scepter of equity is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. 
Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments smell like myrrh, aloes, and cassia. Out of ivory palaces, stringed instruments have made you glad. King's daughters are among your honorable women. At your right hand, the queen stands in gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, consider and turn your ear. Forget your own people and also your father's house. So the king will desire your beauty. Honor him, for he is your lord. The daughter of Tyre comes with a gift. The rich among the people entreat your favor. The princess inside is all glorious. Her clothing is interwoven with gold. She shall be led to the king in embroidered work. The virgins, her companions who follow her, shall be brought to you. With gladness and rejoicing they shall be led. They shall enter into the king's palace. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You shall make them princes in all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the peoples shall give you thanks forever and ever. Psalm 46 For the chief musician by the sons of Korah, according to Alamoth. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we won't be afraid, though the earth changes, though the mountains are shaken into the heart of the seas, though its waters roar and are troubled, though the mountains tremble with their swelling. There is a river, the streams of which make the city of God glad, the holy place of the tents of the Most High. God is within her. She shall not be moved. God will help her at dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He lifted his voice, and the earth melted. Yahweh of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, see Yahweh's works, what desolations he has made in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Yahweh of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Psalm 47 For the Chief Musician A Psalm by the Sons of Korah O oh, clap your hands, all you nations! Shout to God with the voice of triumph! For Yahweh Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He subdues nations under us and peoples under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the glory of Jacob, whom he loved. God has gone up with a shout, Yahweh with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples are gathered together, the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Psalm 48 A Song A Psalm by the Sons of Korah Great is Yahweh, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, in his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, 
the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion, on the north sides, the city of the great king. God has shown himself in her citadels as a refuge, for, behold, the kings assembled themselves. They passed by together. They saw it. Then they were amazed. They were dismayed. They hurried away. Trembling took hold of them there, pain as of a woman in travail. With the east wind you break the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen. In the city of Yahweh of armies, in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. We have thought about your loving kindness, God, in the middle of your temple. As is your name, God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion and go around her. Number its towers. Mark well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces that you may tell it to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to death. Psalm 49 For the Chief Musician A Psalm by the Sons of Korah Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all you inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. My heart shall utter understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will open my riddle on the harp. Why should I fear in the days of evil when iniquity at my heels surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their life is costly. No payment is ever enough that he should live on forever, that he should not see corruption. For he sees that wise men die, likewise the fool and the senseless perish, and leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that their houses will endure forever, and their dwelling places to all generations. They name their lands after themselves. But man, despite his riches, doesn't endure. He is like the animals that perish. This is the destiny of those who are foolish and of those who approve their sayings. They are appointed as a flock for Sheol. Death shall be their shepherd. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. Their beauty shall decay in Sheol, far from their mansion. But God will redeem my soul from the power of Sheol, for he will receive me. Don't be afraid when a man is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he will carry nothing away. His glory won't descend after him. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul and men praise you when you do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see the light. A man who has riches without understanding is like the animals that perish. Psalm 50 A Psalm by Asaph The Mighty One, God Yahweh speaks and calls the earth from sunrise to sunset. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines out. Our God comes and does not keep silent. A fire devours before him. It is very stormy around him. He calls to the heavens above, to the earth, 
that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, my people, and I will speak. Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I don't rebuke you for your sacrifices. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I have no need for a bull from your stall, nor male goats from your pens. For every animal of the forest is mine, and the livestock on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains. The wild animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Will I eat the meat of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Pay your vows to the Most High. Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. But to the wicked, God says, What right do you have to declare my statutes, that you have taken my covenant on your lips, since you hate instruction, and throw my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you consented with him, and have participated with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil, your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother, you slander your own mother's son. You have done these things, and I kept silent. You thought that I was just like you. I will rebuke you and accuse you in front of your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you into pieces, and there be no one to deliver. Whoever offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving glorifies me and prepares his way so that I will show God's salvation to him. Psalm 51 For the chief musician, a psalm by David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions. My sin is constantly before me. Against you and you only I have sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, that you may be proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Behold, I was born in iniquity. In sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Don't throw me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. Sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation. My tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips. My mouth shall declare your praise. For you don't delight in sacrifice, or else I would give it. You have no pleasure in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. 
do well in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of righteousness, in burnt offerings, and in whole burnt offerings. Then they will offer bulls on your altar. Psalm 52 For the Chief Musician a contemplation by David. When Doeg the Edomite came and told Saul, David has come to Ahimelech's house. Why do you boast of mischief, mighty man? God's loving kindness endures continually. Your tongue plots destruction, like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking the truth. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God will likewise destroy you forever. He will take you up and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous also will see it and fear and laugh at him, saying, Behold, this is the man who didn't make God his strength but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But as for me, I am like a green olive tree in God's house. I trust in God's loving kindness forever and ever. I will give you thanks forever because you have done it. I will hope in your name, for it is good in the presence of your saints. Psalm 53 For the Chief Musician To the Tune of Mahalath A Contemplation by David The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on the children of men to see if there are any who understood, who seek after God. Every one of them has gone back. They have become filthy together. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread and don't call on God? There they were, in great fear, where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him who encamps against you. You have put them to shame, because God has rejected them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When God brings back his people from captivity, then Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Psalm 54 for the chief musician, on stringed instruments, a contemplation by David. When the Ziphites came and said to Saul, Isn't David hiding himself among us? Save me, God, by your name. Vindicate me in your might. Hear my prayer, God. Listen to the words of my mouth, for strangers have risen up against me. Violent men have sought after my soul. They haven't set God before them. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the one who sustains my soul. He will repay the evil to my enemies. Destroy them in your truth. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, Yahweh, for it is good for he has delivered me out of all trouble. My eye has seen triumph over my enemies. Psalm 55 For the chief musician on stringed instruments, a contemplation by David. Listen to my prayer, God. Don't hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint, and moan because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring suffering on me. 
In anger they hold a grudge against me. My heart is severely pained within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fearfulness and trembling have come on me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I would fly away and be at rest. Behold, then I would wander far off. I would lodge in the wilderness. I would hurry to a shelter from the stormy wind and storm. Confuse them, Lord, and confound their language. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl around on its walls. Malice and abuse are also within her. Destructive forces are within her. Threats and lies don't depart from her streets. For it was not an enemy who insulted me. Then I could have endured it. Neither was it he who hated me, who raised himself up against me. Then I would have hidden myself from him. But it was you, a man like me, my companion, and my familiar friend. We took sweet fellowship together. We walked in God's house with company. Let death come suddenly on them. Let them go down alive into Sheol, for wickedness is among them in their dwelling. As for me, I will call on God. Yahweh will save me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I will cry out in distress. He will hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, although there are many who oppose me. God, who is enthroned forever, will hear and answer them. They never change who don't fear God. He raises his hands against his friends. He has violated his covenant. His mouth was smooth as butter, but his heart was war. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on Yahweh, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be moved. But you, God, will bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in you. Psalm 56 For the chief musician, to the tune of Silent Dove in Distant Land, a poem by David, when the Philistines seized him in Gath. Be merciful to me, God, for man wants to swallow me up. All day long he attacks and oppresses me. My enemies want to swallow me up all day long, for they are many who fight proudly against me. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God I praise his word. In God I put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They conspire and lurk, watching my steps. They are eager to take my life. Shall they escape by iniquity? In anger, Cast down the peoples, God. You count my wanderings. You put tears into your container. Aren't they in your book? Then my enemies shall turn back in the day that I call. I know this, that God is for me. In God I will praise his word. In Yahweh I will praise his word. I have put my trust in God. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Your vows are on me, God. I will give thank offerings to you, for you have delivered my soul from death and prevented my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Psalm 57 For the Chief Musician to the tune of Do Not Destroy, 
a poem by David when he fled from Saul in the cave. Be merciful to me, God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. Yes, in the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until disaster has passed. I cry out to God Most High, to God who accomplishes my requests for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He rebukes the one who is pursuing me. God will send out his loving kindness and his truth. My soul is among lions. I lie among those who are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They dig a pit before me. They fall into the middle of it themselves. My heart is steadfast, God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises. Wake up, my glory. Wake up, lute and harp. I will wake up the dawn. I will give thanks to you, Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your great loving kindness reaches to the heavens and your truth to the skies. Be exalted, God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Psalm 58 for the chief musician, to the tune of Do Not Destroy, a poem by David. Do you indeed speak righteousness, silent ones? Do you judge blamelessly, you sons of men? No, in your heart you plot injustice. You measure out the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked go astray from the womb. They are wayward as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a snake, like a deaf cobra that stops its ear, which doesn't listen to the voice of charmers, no matter how skillful the charmer may be. Break their teeth, God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, Yahweh. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, let their arrows be made blunt. Let them be like a snail which melts and passes away, like the stillborn child who has not seen the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, he will sweep away the green and the burning alike. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked so that men shall say, Most certainly there is a reward for the righteous. Most certainly there is a God who judges the earth. Psalm 59 For the chief musician, to the tune of Do Not Destroy, a poem by David, when Saul sent, and they watched the house to kill him. Deliver me from my enemies, my God. Set me on high from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. Save me from the bloodthirsty men. For, behold, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty gather themselves together against me. Not for my disobedience, nor for my sin, Yahweh, I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Rise up, behold, and help me. You, Yahweh, God of armies, the God of Israel, rouse yourself to punish the nations. Show no mercy to the wicked traitors. They return at evening, howling like dogs, and prowl around the city. 
Behold, they spew with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For, they say, who hears us? But you, Yahweh, laugh at them. You scoff at all the nations. O oh, my strength, I watch for you. For God is my high tower. My God will go before me with his loving kindness. God will let me look at my enemies in triumph. Don't kill them, or my people may forget. Scatter them by your power, and bring them down, Lord our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them be caught in their pride, for the curses and lies which they utter. Consume them in wrath. Consume them, and they will be no more. Let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. At evening, let them return. Let them howl like a dog and go around the city. They shall wander up and down for food and wait all night if they aren't satisfied. But I will sing of your strength. Yes. I will sing aloud of your loving kindness in the morning, for you have been my high tower, a refuge in the day of my distress. To you, my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my high tower, the God of my mercy. Psalm 60 For the chief musician, to the tune of the Lily of the Covenant, a teaching poem by David, when he fought with Aram Nehoram and with Aram Zobah, and Joab returned and killed twelve thousand of Edom in the Valley of Salt. God, you have rejected us. You have broken us down. You have been angry. Restore us again. You have made the land tremble. You have torn it, mend its fractures, for it quakes. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine that makes us stagger. You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be displayed because of the truth, so that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and answer us. God has spoken from his sanctuary. I will triumph. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the defense of my head. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my wash basin. I will throw my shoe on Edom. I shout in triumph over Philistia. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who has led me to Edom? Haven't you, God, rejected us? You don't go out with our armies, God. Give us help against the adversary, for the help of man is vain. Through God we shall do valiantly, for it is he who will tread down our adversaries. Psalm 61 For the chief musician for a stringed instrument by David. Hear my cry, God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will call to you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been a refuge for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will dwell in your tent forever. I will take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life. His years shall be for generations. He shall be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your loving kindness and truth that they may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever, that I may fulfill my vows daily. Psalm 62 For the chief musician, 
to Jeduthun, a psalm by David. My soul rests in God alone. My salvation is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I will never be greatly shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence? They fully intend to throw him down from his lofty place. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. My soul, wait in silence for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I will not be shaken. With God is my salvation and my honor. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are just a breath, and men of high degree are a lie. In the balances they will go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Don't trust in oppression. Don't become vain in robbery. If riches increase, don't set your heart on them. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Also to you, Lord, belongs loving kindness, for you reward every man according to his work. End of section 46. Psalm 63, a psalm by David when he was in the desert of Judah. God, you are my God. I will earnestly seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have seen you in the sanctuary watching your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. So I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with the richest food. My mouth shall praise you with joyful lips when I remember you on my bed and think about you in the night watches for you have been my help. I will rejoice in the shadow of your wings. My soul stays close to you. Your right hand holds me up, but those who seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be jackal food. But the king shall rejoice in God, Everyone who swears by him will praise him, for the mouth of those who speak lies shall be silenced. Psalm 64 For the Chief Musician, a Psalm by David Hear my voice, God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the noisy crowd of the ones doing evil, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and aim their arrows, deadly words, to shoot innocent men from ambushes. They shoot at him suddenly and fearlessly. They encourage themselves in evil plans. They talk about laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They plot injustice, saying, We have made a perfect plan. Surely man's mind and heart are cunning. But God will shoot at them. They will be suddenly struck down with an arrow. Their own tongues shall ruin them. All who see them will shake their heads. 
All mankind shall be afraid. They shall declare the work of God and shall wisely ponder what he has done. The righteous shall be glad in Yahweh and shall take refuge in him. All the upright in heart shall praise him. Psalm 65 For the Chief Musician a psalm by David, a song. Praise waits for you, God, in Zion. To you shall vows be performed. You who hear prayer, to you all men will come. Sins overwhelmed me, but you atoned for our transgressions. Blessed is the one whom you choose and calls to come near that he may live in your courts. We will be filled with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds of righteousness, you answer us, God of our salvation. You who are the hope of all the ends of the earth, of those who are far away on the sea. By your power, you form the mountains, having armed yourself with strength. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. They also who dwell in faraway places are afraid at your wonders. You call the morning's dawn and the evening with songs of joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide them grain for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows. You level its ridges. You soften it with showers. You bless it with a crop. You crown the year with your bounty. Your carts overflow with abundance. The wilderness grasslands overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The pastures are covered with flocks. The valleys also are clothed with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. Psalm 66 For the chief musician, a song, a psalm. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing to the glory of his name. Offer glory and praise. Tell God how awesome are your deeds. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies submit themselves to you. All the earth will worship you and will sing to you. They will sing to your name. Come and see God's deeds. Awesome work on behalf of the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. There we rejoiced in him. He rules by his might forever. His eyes watch the nations. Don't let the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, you peoples. Make the sound of his praise heard, who preserves our life among the living and doesn't allow our feet to be moved. For you, God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into prison. You laid a burden on our backs. You allowed men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us to the place of abundance. I will come into your temple with burnt offerings. I will pay my vows to you, which my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in distress. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fat animals with the offering of rams. I will offer bulls with goats. Come and hear, all you who fear God. I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth. He was extolled with my tongue. If I cherished sin in my heart, the Lord wouldn't have listened. But most certainly, God has listened. 
he has heard the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his loving kindness from me. Psalm 67 For the chief musician, with stringed instruments, a psalm, a song. May God be merciful to us, bless us, and cause his face to shine on us, that your way may be known on earth, and your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you will judge the peoples with equity and govern the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, even our own God, will bless us. God will bless us. All the ends of the earth shall fear him. Psalm 68 For the chief musician, a psalm by David, a song. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them who hate him also flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice with gladness. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. To Yah, his name, rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless and a defender of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God sets the lonely in families. He brings out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious dwell in a sun-scorched land. God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth trembled. The sky also poured down rain at the presence of the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You, God, sent a plentiful rain. You confirmed your inheritance when it was weary. Your congregation lived therein. You, God, prepared your goodness for the poor. The Lord announced the word. The ones who proclaim it are a great company. Kings of armies flee. They flee. She who waits at home divides the plunder. While you sleep among the campfires, the wings of a dove sheathed with silver, her feathers with shining gold. When the Almighty scattered kings in her, it snowed on Zalma. The mountains of Bashan are majestic mountains. The mountains of Bashan are rugged. Why do you look in envy, you rugged mountains, at the mountain where God chooses to reign? Yes, Yahweh will dwell there forever. The chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them, from Sinai into the sanctuary. You have ascended on high. You have led away captives. You have received gifts among people. Yes, among the rebellious also, that Yah, God, might dwell there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears our burdens, even the God who is our salvation. God is to us a God of deliverance. To Yahweh, the Lord, belongs escape from death but God will strike through the head of his enemies. The hairy scalp of such a one as still continues in his guiltiness. The Lord said, I will bring you again from Bashan. I will bring you again from the depths of the sea, 
that you may crush them, dipping your foot in blood, that the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from your enemies. They have seen your processions, God, even the processions of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers went before, the minstrels followed after, among the ladies playing with tambourines. Bless God in the congregations, even the Lord in the assembly of Israel. There is little Benjamin, their ruler, the princes of Judah, their council, the princes of Zebulun, and the princes of Naphtali. Your God has commanded your strength. Strengthen God that which you have done for us. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings shall bring presents to you. Rebuke the wild animal of the reeds, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people. Being humbled, may it bring bars of silver. Scatter the nations that delight in war. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall hurry to stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord, to him who rides on the heaven of heavens, which are of old. Behold, he utters his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe strength to God. His excellency is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. You are awesome, God, in your sanctuaries. The God of Israel gives strength and power to his people. Praise be to God. Psalm 69 For the Chief Musician to the Tune of Lilies by David Save me, God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire, where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters, where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail, looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. Those who want to cut me off, being my enemies wrongfully, are mighty. I have to restore what I didn't take away. God, you know my foolishness. My sins aren't hidden from you. Don't let those who wait for you be ashamed through me, Lord Yahweh of armies. Don't let those who seek you be brought to dishonor through me, God of Israel. Because, for your sake, I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my mother's children. For the zeal of your house consumes me. The reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. When I wept and I fasted, that was to my reproach. When I made sackcloth my clothing, I became a byword to them. Those who sit in the gate talk about me. I am the song of the drunkards. But as for me, my prayer is to you, Yahweh, in an acceptable time. God, in the abundance of your loving kindness, answer me in the truth of your salvation. Deliver me out of the mire, and don't let me sink. Let me be delivered from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Don't let the flood waters overwhelm me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Don't let the pit shut its mouth on me. Answer me, Yahweh, for your loving kindness is good. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, turn to me. Don't hide your face from your servant for I am in distress. Answer me speedily. Draw near to my soul and redeem it. Ransom me because of my enemies. 
you know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before you. Reproach has broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. They also gave me gall for my food. In my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table before them become a snare. May it become a retribution and a trap. Let their eyes be darkened so that they can't see. Let their backs be continually bent. Pour out your indignation on them. Let the fierceness of your anger overtake them. Let their habitation be desolate. Let no one dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom you have wounded. They tell of the sorrow of those whom you have hurt. Charge them with crime upon crime. Don't let them come into your righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of life and not be written with the righteous. But I am in pain and distress. Let your salvation, God, protect me. I will praise the name of God with a song, and will magnify him with thanksgiving. It will please Yahweh better than an ox, or a bull that has horns and hooves. The humble have seen it, and are glad, you who seek after God, let your heart live, for Yahweh hears the needy and doesn't despise his captive people. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves therein, for God will save Zion and build the cities of Judah. They shall settle there and own it. The children also of his servants shall inherit it. Those who love his name shall dwell therein. Psalm 70 For the Chief Musician by David A Reminder Hurry, God, to deliver me. Come quickly to help me, Yahweh. Let them be disappointed and confounded who seek my soul. Let those who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. Let them be turned because of their shame who say, Aha, aha. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation continually say, Let God be exalted. But I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, God. You are my help and my deliverer. Yahweh, don't delay. Psalm 71 In you, Yahweh, I take refuge. Never let me be disappointed. Deliver me in your righteousness and rescue me. Turn your ear to me, and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, to which I may always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, Lord Yahweh, my confidence from my youth. I have relied on you from the womb. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. I will always praise you. I am a marvel to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, with your honor all day long. Don't reject me in my old age. Don't forsake me when my strength fails, for my enemies talk about me. Those who watch for my soul conspire together, saying, God has forsaken him. Pursue and take him, 
for no one will rescue him. God, don't be far from me. My God, hurry to help me. Let my accusers be disappointed and consumed. Let them be covered with disgrace and scorn who want to harm me. But I will always hope and will add to all of your praise. My mouth will tell about your righteousness and of your salvation all day, though I don't know its full measure. I will come with the mighty acts of the Lord Yahweh. I will make mention of your righteousness, even of yours alone. God, you have taught me from my youth. Until now I have declared your wondrous works. Yes, even when I'm old and gray-haired, God, don't forsake me until I have declared your strength to the next generation, your might to everyone who is to come. Your righteousness also, God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. God, who is like you? You who have shown us many and bitter troubles, you will let me live. You will bring us up again from the depths of the earth, Increase my honor and comfort me again. I will also praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I sing praises to you with the lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips shall shout for joy. My soul, which you have redeemed, sings praises to you. My tongue will also talk about your righteousness all day long, for they are disappointed and they are confounded who want to harm me. Psalm 72 by Solomon God, give the king your justice, your righteousness to the royal son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains shall bring prosperity to the people. The hills bring the fruit of righteousness. He will judge the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and will break the oppressor in pieces. They shall fear you while the sun endures. And as long as the moon throughout all generations, he will come down like rain on the mown grass as showers that water the earth. In his days the righteous shall flourish, and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him. His enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish, and of the islands will bring tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him, for he will deliver the needy when he cries, the poor who has no helper. He will have pity on the poor and needy. He will save the souls of the needy, he will redeem their soul from oppression and violence. Their blood will be precious in his sight. They shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Men shall pray for him continually. They shall bless him all day long. Abundance of grain shall be throughout the land. Its fruit sways like Lebanon. Let it flourish thriving like the grass of the field. His name endures forever. His name continues as long as the sun. Men shall be blessed by him. All nations will call him blessed. Praise be to Yahweh God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvelous deeds. Blessed be his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. 
This ends the prayers by David, the son of Jesse. Book 3 Psalm 73 A Psalm by Asaph Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no struggles in their death, but their strength is firm. They are free from burdens of men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride is like a chain around their neck. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with fat. Their minds pass the limits of conceit. They scoff and speak with malice. In arrogance, they threaten oppression. They have set their mouth in the heavens. Their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore their people return to them, and they drink up waters of abundance. They say, How does God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Being always at ease, they increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and punished every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. When I tried to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I entered God's sanctuary, and considered their latter end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You throw them down to destruction. How they are suddenly destroyed. They are completely swept away with terrors. As a dream when one wakes up, so, Lord, when you awake, you will despise their fantasies. For my soul was grieved. I was embittered in my heart. I was so senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You have held my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom do I have in heaven? There is no one on earth whom I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fails. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For, behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who are unfaithful to you. But it is good for me to come close to God. I have made the Lord Yahweh my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Psalm 74. A Contemplation by Asaph. God, why have you rejected us forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you purchased of old, which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your inheritance. Mount Zion, in which you have lived, Lift up your feet to the perpetual ruins, all the evil that the enemy has done in the sanctuary. Your adversaries have roared in the middle of your assembly. They have set up their standards as signs. They behaved like men wielding axes, cutting through a thicket of trees. Now they break all its carved work down with hatchet and hammers. They have burned your sanctuary to the ground. They have profaned the dwelling place of your name. They said in their heart, We will crush them completely. They have burned up all the places in the land where God was worshipped. We see no miraculous signs. There is no longer any prophet, 
neither is there among us anyone who knows how long. How long, God, shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why do you draw back your hand, even your right hand? Take it from your chest and consume them. Yet God is my king of old, working salvation throughout the earth. You divided the sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea monsters in the waters. You broke the heads of Leviathan in pieces. You gave him as food to people and desert creatures. You opened up spring and stream. You dried up mighty rivers. The day is yours. The night is also yours. You have prepared the light and the sun. You have set all the boundaries of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Remember this, that the enemy has mocked you, Yahweh. Foolish people have blasphemed your name. Don't deliver the soul of your dove to wild beasts. Don't forget the life of your poor forever. Honor your covenant, for haunts of violence fill the dark places of the earth. Don't let the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, God. Plead your own cause. Remember how the foolish man mocks you all day. Don't forget the voice of your adversaries. The tumult of those who rise up against you ascends continually. Psalm 75 For the chief musician, to the tune of Do Not Destroy, a psalm by Asaph, a song. We give thanks to you, God. We give thanks, for your name is near. Men tell about your wondrous works. When I choose the appointed time, I will judge blamelessly. The earth and all its inhabitants quake. I firmly hold its pillars. I said to the arrogant, don't boast. I said to the wicked, don't lift up the horn. Don't lift up your horn on high. Don't speak with a stiff neck. For neither from the east, nor from the west, nor yet from the south, comes exaltation. But God is the judge. He puts down one and lifts up another. For in Yahweh's hand there is a cup full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours it out. Indeed, the wicked of the earth drink, and drink it to its very dregs. But I will declare this forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. I will cut off all the horns of the wicked, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. Psalm 76 For the chief musician on stringed instruments, a psalm by Asaph, a song. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. His tabernacle is also in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flaming arrows of the bow, the shield and the sword, and the weapons of war. Glorious are you and excellent, more than mountains of gain. Valiant men lie plundered. They have slept their last sleep. None of the men of war can lift their hands. At your rebuke, God of Jacob, both chariot and horse are cast into a dead sleep. You, even you, are to be feared. Who can stand in your sight when you are angry? You pronounced judgment from heaven. The earth feared and was silent when God arose to judgment to save all the afflicted ones of the earth. Surely the wrath of man praises you. The survivors of your wrath are restrained. 
make vows to Yahweh your God and fulfill them. Let all of his neighbors bring presents to him who is to be feared. He will cut off the spirit of princes. He is feared by the kings of the earth. Psalm 77 For the Chief Musicians To Jeduthun A Psalm by Asaph My cry goes to God. Indeed, I cry to God for help and for him to listen to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night and didn't get tired. My soul refused to be comforted. I remember God, and I groan. I complain, and my spirit is overwhelmed. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I can't speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I remember my song in the night. I consider in my own heart. My spirit diligently inquires, Will the Lord reject us forever? Will he be favorable no more? Has his loving kindness vanished forever? Does his promise fail for generations? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he, in anger, withheld his compassion? Then I thought, I will appeal to this the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember Yah's deeds, for I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and consider your doings. Your way, God, is in the sanctuary. What God is great like God? You are the God who does wonders. You have made your strength known among the peoples. You have redeemed your people with your arm, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you, and they writhed. The depths also convulsed. The clouds poured out water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows also flashed around. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your paths through the great waters. Your footsteps were not known. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Psalm 78 A Contemplation by Asaph Hear my teaching, my people. Turn your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of Yahweh, his strength and his wondrous deeds that he has done. For he established a covenant in Jacob, and appointed a teaching in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know, even the children who should be born, who should arise and tell their children, that they might set their hope in God, and not forget God's deeds, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that didn't make their hearts loyal, whose spirit was not steadfast with God, the children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They didn't keep God's covenant and refused to walk in his law. They forgot his doings, his wondrous deeds that he had shown them, he did marvelous things in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the waters stand as a heap. 
In the daytime he also led them with a cloud, and all night with a light of fire. He split rocks in the wilderness, and gave them drink abundantly, as out of the depths. He brought streams also out of the rock, and caused waters to run down like rivers. Yet they still went on to sin against him, to rebel against the Most High in the desert. They tempted God in their heart by asking food according to their desire. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that waters gushed out and streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Will he provide meat for his people? Therefore Yahweh heard and was angry. A fire was kindled against Jacob. Anger also went up against Israel, because they didn't believe in God and didn't trust in his salvation. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna on them to eat and gave them food from the sky. Man ate the bread of angels. He sent them food to the full. He caused the east wind to blow in the sky. By his power he guided the south wind. He rained also meat on them as the dust, winged birds as the sand of the seas. He let them fall in the middle of their camp, around their habitations. So they ate and were well filled. He gave them their own desire. They didn't turn from their cravings. Their food was yet in their mouths when the anger of God went up against them, killed some of their fattest, and struck down the young men of Israel. For all this they still sinned and didn't believe in his wondrous works. Therefore he consumed their days in vanity and their years in terror. When he killed them, then they inquired after him. They returned and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the Most High God, their Redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouth and lied to him with their tongue for their heart was not right with him, neither were they faithful in his covenant. But he, being merciful, forgave iniquity and didn't destroy them. Yes, many times he turned his anger away and didn't stir up all his wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes away and doesn't come again. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness, and grieved him in the desert. They turned again and tempted God, and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They didn't remember his hand, nor the day when he redeemed them from the adversary, how he set his signs in Egypt, his wonders in the field of Zoan. He turned their rivers into blood, and their streams, so that they could not drink. He sent among them swarms of flies, which devoured them, and frogs, which destroyed them. He gave also their increase to the caterpillar, and their labor to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail, their sycamore fig trees with frost. He gave over their livestock also to the hail, and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He threw on them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble, and a band of angels of evil. He made a path for his anger. He didn't spare their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence, and struck all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength in the tents of Ham. But he led out his own people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them safely, so that they weren't afraid. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies. He brought them to the border of his sanctuary, to this mountain, which his right hand had taken. 
he also drove out the nations before them, allotted them for an inheritance by line, and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and rebelled against the Most High God, and didn't keep his testimonies, but turned back and dealt treacherously like their fathers. They were twisted like a deceitful bow, for they provoked him to anger with their high places, and moved him to jealousy with their engraved images. When God heard this, he was angry and greatly abhorred Israel, so that he abandoned the tent of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity, his glory into the adversary's hand. He also gave his people over to the sword and was angry with his inheritance. Fire devoured the young men. Their virgins had no wedding song. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows couldn't weep. Then the Lord awakened as one out of sleep, like a mighty man who shouts by reason of wine. He struck his adversaries backward, he put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he rejected the tent of Joseph and didn't choose the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. He built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth which he has established forever. He also chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds from following the ewes that have their young. He brought him to be the shepherd of Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he was their shepherd according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Psalm 79 A Psalm by Asaph God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in heaps. They have given the dead bodies of your servants to be food for the birds of the sky, the flesh of your saints to the animals of the earth. Their blood they have shed like water around Jerusalem. There was no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, a scoffing and derision to those who are around us. How long, Yahweh, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that don't know you, on the kingdoms that don't call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and destroyed his homeland. Don't hold the iniquities of our forefathers against us. Let your tender mercies speedily meet us, for we are in desperate need. Help us, God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? Let it be known among the nations, before our eyes, that vengeance for your servant's blood is being poured out. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before you. According to the greatness of your power, preserve those who are sentenced to death. Pay back to our neighbors seven times into their bosom their reproach with which they have reproached you, Lord. So we, your people and sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will praise you forever to all generations. Psalm 80 For the chief musician, to the tune of The Lilies of the Covenant, a psalm by Asaph. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit above the cherubim, shine out. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might. Come to save us. 
Turn us again, God. Cause your face to shine, and we will be saved. Yahweh, God of armies, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and given them tears to drink in large measure. You make us a source of contention to our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Turn us again, God of armies. Cause your face to shine, and we will be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shadow. Its boughs were like God's cedars. It sent out its branches to the sea, its shoots to the river. Why have you broken down its walls so that all those who pass by the way pluck it? The boar out of the wood ravages it. The wild animals of the field feed on it. Turn again, we beg you, God of armies. Look down from heaven and see and visit this vine, the stock which your right hand planted, the branch that you made strong for yourself. It's burned with fire. It's cut down. They perish at your rebuke. Let your hand be on the man of your right hand, on the son of man whom you made strong for yourself, so we will not turn away from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. Turn us again, Yahweh, God of armies. Cause your face to shine, and we will be saved. Psalm 81 for the Chief Musician, on an Instrument of Gath, by Asaph. Sing aloud to God our strength. Make a joyful shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, and bring here the tambourine, the pleasant lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, on our feast day for it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He appointed it in Joseph for a covenant when he went out over the land of Egypt. I heard a language that I didn't know. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were freed from the basket. You called in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, my people, and I will testify to you. Israel, if you would listen to me. There shall be no strange God in you, neither shall you worship any foreign God. I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people didn't listen to my voice. Israel desired none of me. So I let them go after the stubbornness of their hearts, that they might walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of Yahweh, would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But he would have also fed them with the finest of the wheat. I will satisfy you with honey out of the rock. Psalm 82 A Psalm by Asaph God presides in the great assembly. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak, the poor, and the fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. 
They don't know, neither do they understand. They walk back and forth in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. All of you are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like men and fall like one of the rulers. Arise, God, judge the earth, for you inherit all of the nations. Psalm 83 A Song A Psalm by Asaph God, don't keep silent. Don't keep silent and don't be still, God. For behold, your enemies are stirred up. Those who hate you have lifted up their heads. They conspire with cunning against your people. They plot against your cherished ones. Come, they say, let's destroy them as a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more, for they have conspired together with one mind. They form an alliance against you, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gebel, Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also is joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Do to them as you did to Midian, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the river Kishon, who perished at Endor, who became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb. Yes, all their princes, like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, Let's take possession of God's pasture lands. My God, make them like tumbleweed, like chaff before the wind, as the fire that burns the forest, as the flame that sets the mountains on fire. So pursue them with your tempest, and terrify them with your storm. Fill their faces with confusion, that they may seek your name, Yahweh. Let them be disappointed and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be confounded and perish, that they may know that you alone, whose name is Yahweh, are the Most High over all the earth. Psalm 84 for the chief musician, on an instrument of Gath, a psalm by the sons of Korah. How lovely are your dwellings, Yahweh of armies! My soul longs and even faints for the courts of Yahweh. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Yes, the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. Near your altars, Yahweh of armies, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are always praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on a pilgrimage. Passing through the valley of weeping, they make it a place of springs. Yes. The autumn rain covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears before God in Zion. Yahweh, God of armies, hear my prayer. Listen, God of Jacob. Behold, God our shield. Look at the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For Yahweh God is a sun and a shield. Yahweh will give grace and glory. He withholds no good thing from those who walk blamelessly. Yahweh of armies, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Psalm 85 
for the chief musician, a psalm by the sons of Korah. Yahweh, you have been favorable to your land. You have restored the fortunes of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. Turn us, God of our salvation, and cause your indignation toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you draw out your anger to all generations? Won't you revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your loving kindness, Yahweh. Grant us your salvation. I will hear what God, Yahweh, will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth meet together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth springs out of the earth, Righteousness has looked down from heaven. Yes, Yahweh will give that which is good. Our land will yield its increase. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Psalm 86 A Prayer by David Hear, Yahweh, and answer me for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am godly. You, my God, save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to the soul of your servant, for to you, Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive abundant in loving kindness to all those who call on you. Hear, Yahweh, my prayer. Listen to the voice of my petitions. In the day of my trouble I will call on you, for you will answer me. There is no one like you among the gods, Lord, nor any deeds like your deeds. All nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord, they shall glorify your name, for you are great and do wondrous things. You are God alone. Teach me your way, Yahweh. I will walk in your truth. Make my heart undivided to fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with my whole heart. I will glorify your name forevermore for your loving kindness is great toward me. You have delivered my soul from the lowest shield. God, the proud have risen up against me. A company of violent men have sought after my soul, and they don't hold regard for you before them. But you, Lord, are a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the son of your servant. Show me a sign of your goodness, that those who hate me may see it and be shamed, because you, Yahweh, have helped me and comforted me. Psalm 87 a Psalm by the Sons of Korah, a Song. His foundation is in the holy mountains. Yahweh loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken about you, city of God. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me. Behold, Philistia, Tyre, and also Ethiopia. This one was born there. Yes, of Zion it will be said, This one and that one was born in her. The Most High himself will establish her. 
Yahweh will count when he writes up the peoples. This one was born there. Those who sing as well as those who dance say, All my springs are in you. Psalm 88 A song, a psalm by the sons of Korah, for the chief musician, to the tune of The Suffering of Affliction, a contemplation by Heman, the Ezraite. Yahweh, the God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Turn your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles. My life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down into the pit. I am like a man who has no help, set apart among the dead like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more. They are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have afflicted me with all your waves. You have taken my friends from me. You have made me an abomination to them. I am confined, and I can't escape. My eyes are dim from grief. I have called on you daily, Yahweh. I have spread out my hands to you. Do you show wonders to the dead? Do the departed spirits rise up and praise you? Is your loving kindness declared in the grave? Or your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders made known in the dark? or your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But to you, Yahweh, I have cried. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Yahweh, why do you reject my soul? Why do you hide your face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer your terrors, I am distracted. Your fierce wrath has gone over me. Your terrors have cut me off. They came around me like water all day long. They completely engulfed me. You have put lover and friend far from me and my friends into darkness. End of section 47. Psalm 89 A Contemplation by Ethan the Ezraite I will sing of the loving kindness of Yahweh forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. I indeed declare, love stands firm forever. You established the heavens. Your faithfulness is in them. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build up your throne to all generations. The heavens will praise your wonders, Yahweh, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to Yahweh? Who among the sons of the heavenly beings is like Yahweh, a very awesome God in the council of the holy ones, to be feared above all those who are around him. Yahweh, God of armies, who is a mighty one like you? Yah, your faithfulness is around you. You rule the pride of the sea. When its waves rise up, you calm them. You have broken Rahab in pieces, like one of the slain. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and its fullness. You have founded them. The north and the south, you have created them. Tabor and Hermon rejoice in your name. 
You have a mighty arm. Your hand is strong, and your right hand is exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Loving kindness and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who learn to acclaim you. They walk in the light of your presence, Yahweh. In your name they rejoice all day. In your righteousness they are exalted, for you are the glory of their strength. In your favor our horn will be exalted, for our shield belongs to Yahweh, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Then you spoke in vision to your saints and said, I have given strength to the warrior. I have exalted a young man from the people. I have found David, my servant. I have anointed him with my holy oil, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm will also strengthen him. No enemy will tax him. No wicked man will oppress him. I will beat down his adversaries before him and strike those who hate him. But my faithfulness and my loving kindness will be with him. In my name his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand also on the sea, and his right hand on the rivers. He will call to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will also appoint him my firstborn the highest of the kings of the earth. I will keep my loving kindness for him forevermore. My covenant will stand firm with him. I will also make his offspring endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and don't walk in my ordinances, if they break my statutes and don't keep my commandments, then I will punish their sin with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. But I will not completely take my loving kindness from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. I will not break my covenant, nor alter what my lips have uttered. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His offspring will endure forever, his throne like the sun before me. It will be established forever like the moon, the faithful witness in the sky. But you have rejected and spurned. You have been angry with your anointed. You have renounced the covenant of your servant. You have defiled his crown in the dust. You have broken down all his hedges. You have brought his strongholds to ruin. All who pass by the way rob him. He has become a reproach to his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries. You have made all of his enemies rejoice. Yes, you turn back the edge of his sword and haven't supported him in battle. You have ended his splendor and thrown his throne down to the ground. You have shortened the days of his youth. You have covered him with shame. How long, Yahweh, will you hide yourself forever? Will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. For what vanity have you created all the children of men? What man is he who shall live and not see death? who shall deliver his soul from the power of Sheol. Lord, where are your former loving kindnesses, which you swore to David in your faithfulness? Remember, Lord, the reproach of your servants, how I bear in my heart the taunts of all the mighty peoples, with which your enemies have mocked, Yahweh, with which they have mocked the footsteps of your anointed one. Blessed be Yahweh forevermore. Amen and Amen. Book 4 Psalm 90 A Prayer by Moses, the Man of God 
Lord, you have been our dwelling place for all generations. Before the mountains were born, before you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction, saying, Return, you children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are just like yesterday when it is past, like a watch in the night. You sweep them away as they sleep. In the morning they sprout like new grass. In the morning it sprouts and springs up. By evening it is withered and dry. For we are consumed in your anger. We are troubled in your wrath. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We bring our years to an end as a sigh. The days of our years are seventy, or even by reason of strength, eighty years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for it passes quickly, and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, your wrath according to the fear that is due to you? So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Yahweh. How long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants, your glory to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Psalm 91 He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will take refuge. His faithfulness is your shield and rampart. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made Yahweh your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he will put his angels in charge of you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, so that you won't dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and cobra. You will trample the young lion and the serpent underfoot. Because he has set his love on me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. I will satisfy him with long life and show him my salvation. Psalm 92 A Psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is a good thing to give thanks to Yahweh, to sing praises to your name, Most High, to proclaim your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night with the ten-stringed lute, with the harp, and with the melody of the lyre. For you, Yahweh, have made me glad through your work. 
I will triumph in the works of your hands. How great are your works, Yahweh! Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man doesn't know. Neither does a fool understand this. Though the wicked spring up as the grass, and all the evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Yahweh, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, Yahweh, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the evildoers will be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eye has also seen my enemies. My ears have heard of the wicked enemies who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in Yahweh's house. They will flourish in our God's courts. They will still produce fruit in old age. They will be full of sap and green to show that Yahweh is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Psalm 93 Yahweh reigns. He is clothed with majesty. Yahweh is armed with strength. The world also is established. It can't be moved. Your throne is established from long ago. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, Yahweh. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. Above the voices of many waters, the mighty breakers of the sea, Yahweh on high is mighty. Your statutes stand firm. Holiness adorns your house, Yahweh, forevermore. Psalm 94 Yahweh, you, God, to whom vengeance belongs, you, God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine out. Rise up, you judge of the earth. Pay back the proud what they deserve. Yahweh, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked triumph? They pour out arrogant words. All the evildoers boast. They break your people in pieces, Yahweh, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the alien and murder the fatherless. They say, Yah will not see, neither will Jacob's God consider. Consider, you senseless among the people, you fools. When will you be wise? He who implanted the ear won't he hear? He who formed the eye, won't he see? He who disciplines the nations, won't he punish? He who teaches man, knows. Yahweh knows the thoughts of man, that they are futile. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, Yah, and teach out of your law, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For Yahweh won't reject his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance, for judgment will return to righteousness. All the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will stand up for me against the evildoers? Unless Yahweh had been my help, my soul would have soon lived in silence. When I said, my foot is slipping, your loving kindness, Yahweh, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, your comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of wickedness have fellowship with you, which brings about mischief by statute? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But Yahweh has been my high tower, my God, the rock of my refuge. He has brought on them their own iniquity, 
and will cut them off in their own wickedness. Yahweh, our God, will cut them off. Psalm 95 O come, let's sing to Yahweh. Let's shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let's extol him with songs. For Yahweh is a great God, a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the mountains are also his. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel before Yahweh, our Maker, for He is our God. We are the people of His pasture and the sheep in His care. Today, O oh, that you would hear His voice. Don't harden your heart as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, tested me, and saw my work. Forty long years I was grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that errs in their heart. They have not known my ways. Therefore I swore in my wrath, they won't enter into my rest. Psalm 96 Sing to Yahweh a new song. Sing to Yahweh all the earth sing to yahweh bless his name proclaim his salvation from day to day declare his glory among the nations his marvelous works among all the peoples for yahweh is great and greatly to be praised he is to be feared above all gods for all the gods of the peoples are idols but Yahweh made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to Yahweh, you families of nations. Ascribe to Yahweh glory and strength. Ascribe to Yahweh the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship Yahweh in holy array. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, Yahweh reigns. The world is also established. It can't be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and its fullness. Let the field and all that is in it exult. Then all the trees of the woods shall sing for joy before Yahweh, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness, the peoples with his truth. Psalm 97 Yahweh reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of Yahweh, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness. All the peoples have seen his glory. Let all them be shamed who serve engraved images, who boast in their idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad. The daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgments, Yahweh. For you, Yahweh, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love Yahweh, 
hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Be glad in Yahweh, you righteous people. Give thanks to his holy name. Psalm 98 A Psalm Sing to Yahweh a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. Yahweh has made known his salvation. He has openly shown his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his loving kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to Yahweh, all the earth. Burst out and sing for joy. Yes, sing praises. Sing praises to Yahweh with the harp, with the harp and the voice of melody, with trumpets and sound of the ram's horn. Make a joyful noise before the king, Yahweh. Let the sea roar with its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing for joy together. Let them sing before Yahweh, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Psalm 99 Yahweh reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned among the cherubim. Let the earth be moved. Yahweh is great in Zion. He is high above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king's strength also loves justice. You establish equity. You execute justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt Yahweh our God. Worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on Yahweh, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies, this statute that he gave them. You answered them. Yahweh our God, you are a God who forgave them, although you took vengeance for their doings. Exalt Yahweh our God, worship at his holy hill, for Yahweh our God is holy. Psalm 100 A Psalm of Thanksgiving Shout for joy to Yahweh, all you lands. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that Yahweh, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for Yahweh is good. His loving kindness endures forever, his faithfulness to all generations. Psalm 101 A Psalm by David I will sing of loving kindness and justice. To you, Yahweh, I will sing praises. I will be careful to live a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a blameless heart. I will set no vile thing before my eyes. I hate the deeds of faithless men. They will not cling to me. 
a perverse heart will be far from me. I will have nothing to do with evil. I will silence whoever secretly slanders his neighbor. I won't tolerate one who is arrogant and conceited. My eyes will be on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he will serve me. He who practices deceit won't dwell within my house. He who speaks falsehood won't be established before my eyes. Morning by morning, I will destroy all the wicked of the land to cut off all the workers of iniquity from Yahweh's city. Psalm 102 A prayer of the afflicted when he is overwhelmed and pours out his complaint before Yahweh. Hear my prayer, Yahweh. Let my cry come to you. Don't hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Turn your ear to me. Answer me quickly in the day when I call. For my days consume away like smoke. My bones are burned as a torch. My heart is blighted like grass and withered, for I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones stick to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I have become as an owl of the waste places. I watch and have become like a sparrow that is alone on the housetop. My enemies reproach me all day. Those who are mad at me use my name as a curse, for I have eaten ashes like bread and mixed my drink with tears because of your indignation and your wrath, for you have taken me up and thrown me away. My days are like a long shadow. I have withered like grass. But you, Yahweh, will remain forever. Your renown endures to all generations. You will arise and have mercy on Zion, for it is time to have pity on her. Yes, the set time has come. For your servants take pleasure in her stones and have pity on her dust. So the nations will fear Yahweh's name, all the kings of the earth, your glory. For Yahweh has built up Zion. He has appeared in his glory. He has responded to the prayer of the destitute and has not despised their prayer. This will be written for the generations to come. A people which will be created will praise Yah, for he has looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven, Yahweh saw the earth to hear the groans of the prisoner, to free those who are condemned to death, that men may declare Yahweh's name in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together, the kingdoms, to serve Yahweh. He weakened my strength along the course. He shortened my days. I said, My God, don't take me away in the middle of my days. Your years are throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth. The heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. Yes, all of them will wear out like a garment. You will change them like a cloak, and they will be changed. But you are the same. Your years will have no end. The children of your servants will continue. Their offspring will be established before you. Psalm 103 By David Praise Yahweh, my soul. All that is within me, praise his holy name. Praise Yahweh, my soul, and don't forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? 
who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your desire with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Yahweh executes righteous acts and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the children of Israel. Yahweh is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness. He will not always accuse, neither will he stay angry forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us for our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father has compassion on his children, so Yahweh has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are made. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. Its place remembers it no more. But Yahweh's loving kindness is from everlasting to everlasting with those who fear him. His righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant, to those who remember to obey his precepts. Yahweh has established his throne in the heavens. His kingdom rules over all. Praise Yahweh, you angels of his, who are mighty in strength, who fulfill his word, obeying the voice of his word. Praise Yahweh, all you armies of his, you servants of his, who do his pleasure. Praise Yahweh, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Praise Yahweh, my soul, Psalm 104 Bless Yahweh, my soul. Yahweh, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. He covers himself with light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of his rooms in the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He walks on the wings of the wind. He makes his messengers winds and his servants flames of fire. He laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with a cloak. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hurried away. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place which you had assigned to them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they don't turn again to cover the earth. He sends springs into the valleys. They run among the mountains. They give drink to every animal of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by them. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his rooms. The earth is filled with the fruit of your works. He causes the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may produce food out of the earth, wine that makes the heart of man glad, oil to make his face to shine, and bread that strengthens man's heart. Yahweh's trees are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon, which he has planted, where the birds make their nests. The stork makes its home in the cypress trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the rock badgers. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows when to set. You make darkness, and it is night in which all the animals of the forest prowl. 
The young lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work, to his labor until the evening. Yahweh, how many are your works? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. There is the sea, great and wide, in which are innumerable living things, both small and large animals. There the ships go, and Leviathan, whom you formed to play there. These all wait for you, that you may give them their food in due season. You give to them, they gather. You open your hand, they are satisfied with good. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. You send out your spirit, and they are created. You renew the face of the ground. Let Yahweh's glory endure forever. Let Yahweh rejoice in his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to Yahweh as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have any being. Let my meditation be sweet to him. I will rejoice in Yahweh. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth. Let the wicked be no more. Bless Yahweh, my soul. Praise Yah. Psalm 105 Give thanks to Yahweh. Call on his name. Make his doings known among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek Yahweh rejoice. Seek Yahweh and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. You offspring of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is Yahweh, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham, his oath to Isaac, and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance when they were but a few men in number, yes, very few, and foreigners in it. They went about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. He allowed no one to do them wrong. Yes, he reproved kings for their sakes. Don't touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. He called for a famine on the land. He destroyed the food supplies. He sent a man before them. Joseph was sold for a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was locked in irons until the time that his word happened. And Yahweh's word proved him true. The king sent and freed him, even the ruler of the peoples, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all of his possessions to discipline his princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt. Jacob lived in the land of Ham. He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their adversaries. He turned their heart to hate his people, to conspire against his servants, he sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed miracles among them and wonders in the land of Ham. 
he sent darkness and made it dark. They didn't rebel against his words. He turned their waters into blood and killed their fish. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the rooms of their kings. He spoke, and swarms of flies came, and lice in all their borders. He gave them hail for rain, with lightning in their land. He struck their vines, and also their fig trees, and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke, and the locusts came, and the grasshoppers without number, ate up every plant in their land, and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck also all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their manhood. He brought them out with silver and gold. There was not one feeble person among his tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen on them. He spread a cloud for a covering, fire to give light in the night. They asked, and he brought quails, and satisfied them with the bread of the sky. He opened the rock, and waters gushed out. They ran as a river in the dry places, for he remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. He brought his people out with joy, his chosen with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations. They took the labor of the peoples in possession, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise Yah! Psalm 106 Praise Yahweh! Give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of Yahweh or fully declare all his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice. Blessed is one who does what is right at all times. Remember me, Yahweh, with the favor that you show to your people. Visit me with your salvation, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers didn't understand your wonders in Egypt. They didn't remember the multitude of your loving kindnesses, but were rebellious at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake that he might make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up. So he led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of him who hated them, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their adversaries. There was not one of them left. Then they believed his words. They sang his praise. They soon forgot his works. They didn't wait for his counsel, but gave in to craving in the desert and tested God in the wasteland. He gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp and Aaron, Yahweh's saint. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. The fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped a molten image. Thus they exchanged their glory for an image of a bull that eats grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said that he would destroy them, had Moses, his chosen, not stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, so that he wouldn't destroy them. Yes, they despised the pleasant land. 
they didn't believe his word, but murmured in their tents and didn't listen to Yahweh's voice. Therefore he swore to them that he would overthrow them in the wilderness, that he would overthrow their offspring among the nations and scatter them in the lands. They joined themselves also to Baal Peor and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their deeds. The plague broke in on them. Then Phineas stood up and executed judgment, so the plague was stopped. That was credited to him for righteousness for all generations to come. They angered him also at the waters of Meribah, so that Moses was troubled for their sakes. Because they were rebellious against his spirit, he spoke rashly with his lips. They didn't destroy the peoples, as Yahweh commanded them, but mixed themselves with the nations and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. Yes, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. The land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled with their works and prostituted themselves in their deeds. Therefore Yahweh burned with anger against his people. He abhorred his inheritance. He gave them into the hand of the nations. Those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them. They were brought into subjection under their hand. He rescued them many times, but they were rebellious in their counsel and were brought low in their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their distress when he heard their cry. He remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. He made them also to be pitied by all those who carried them captive. Save us, Yahweh, our God. Gather us from among the nations to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, from everlasting even to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise Yah. Book 5 Psalm 107 Give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Let the redeemed by Yahweh say so whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desert way. They found no city to live in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. He led them also by a straight way that they might go to a city to live in. Let them praise Yahweh for his loving kindness, for his wonderful deeds to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul. He fills the hungry soul with good. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was no one to help. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke away their chains. Let them praise Yahweh for his loving kindness, for his wonderful deeds to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. Fools are afflicted because of their disobedience and because of their iniquities. 
their soul abhors all kinds of food. They draw near to the gates of death. Then they cry to Yahweh in their trouble. He saves them out of their distresses. He sends his word and heals them and delivers them from their graves. Let them praise Yahweh for his loving kindness, for his wonderful deeds to the children of men. Let them offer the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his deeds with singing. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business in great waters, these see Yahweh's deeds and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind which lifts up its waves. They mount up to the sky. They go down again to the depths. Their soul melts away because of trouble. They reel back and forth and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry to Yahweh in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distress. He makes the storm a calm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because it is calm. So he brings them to their desired haven. Let them praise Yahweh for his loving kindness, for his wonderful deeds for the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the seat of the elders. He turns rivers into a desert, water springs into a thirsty ground, and a fruitful land into a salt waste for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. He turns a desert into a pool of water and a dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry live, that they may prepare a city to live in, sow fields, plant vineyards, and reap the fruits of increase. He blesses them also, so that they are multiplied greatly. He doesn't allow their livestock to decrease. Again, they are diminished and bowed down through oppression, trouble, and sorrow. He pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in a trackless waste. Yet he lifts the needy out of their affliction and increases their families like a flock. The upright will see it and be glad. All the wicked will shut their mouths. Whoever is wise will pay attention to these things they will consider the loving kindnesses of Yahweh. Psalm 108 A Song A Psalm by David My heart is steadfast, God. I will sing, and I will make music with my soul. Wake up, harp and lyre. I will wake up the dawn. I will give thanks to you, Yahweh, among the nations. I will sing praises to you among the peoples. For your loving kindness is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth, that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and answer us. God has spoken from his sanctuary. In triumph, I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is my helmet. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my washpot. I will toss my sandal on Edom. I will shout over Philistia. Who will bring me into the fortified city? Who has led me to Edom? Haven't you rejected us, God? You don't go out, God, with our armies. Give us help against the enemy, for the help of man is vain. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is he who will tread down our enemies. Psalm 109 For the chief musician, 
A Psalm by David God of my praise, don't remain silent, for they have opened the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of deceit against me. They have spoken to me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are my adversaries, but I am in prayer. They have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set a wicked man over him. Let an adversary stand at his right hand. When he is judged, let him come out guilty. Let his prayer be turned into sin. Let his days be few. Let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be wandering beggars. Let them be sought from their ruins. Let the creditor seize all that he has. Let strangers plunder the fruit of his labor. Let there be no one to extend kindness to him. Neither let there be anyone to have pity on his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off. In the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered by Yahweh. Don't let the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before Yahweh continually, that he may cut off their memory from the earth. Because he didn't remember to show kindness, but persecuted the poor and needy man, the broken in heart, to kill them. Yes, he loved cursing, and it came to him. He didn't delight in blessing, and it was far from him. He clothed himself also with cursing as with his garment. It came into his inward parts like water, like oil into his bones. Let it be to him as the clothing with which he covers himself, for the belt that is always around him. This is the reward of my adversaries from Yahweh, of those who speak evil against my soul. But deal with me, Yahweh the Lord, for your name's sake. Because your loving kindness is good, deliver me, for I am poor and needy. My heart is wounded within me, I fade away like an evening shadow. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting. My body is thin and lacks fat. I have also become a reproach to them. When they see me, they shake their head. Help me, Yahweh, my God. Save me according to your loving kindness, that they may know that this is your hand that you, Yahweh, have done it. They may curse, but you bless. When they arise, they will be shamed, but your servant shall rejoice. Let my adversaries be clothed with dishonor. Let them cover themselves with their own shame as with a robe. I will give great thanks to Yahweh with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude, for he will stand at the right hand of the needy to save him from those who judge his soul. Psalm 110 A Psalm by David Yahweh says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool for your feet. Yahweh will send out the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule among your enemies. Your people offer themselves willingly in the day of your power, in holy array. Out of the womb of the morning you have the dew of your youth. Yahweh has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings in the day of his wrath. He will judge among the nations. 
He will heap up dead bodies. He will crush the ruler of the whole earth. He will drink of the brook on the way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. Psalm 111 Praise Yah! I will give thanks to Yahweh with my whole heart, in the counsel of the upright and in the congregation. Yahweh's works are great, pondered by all those who delight in them. His work is honor and majesty. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonderful works to be remembered. Yahweh is gracious and merciful. He has given food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are sure. They are established forever and ever. They are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. His name is holy and awesome. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. All those who do his work have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Psalm 112 Praise Yah! Blessed is the man who fears Yahweh, who delights greatly in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house. His righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright, gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals graciously and lends. He will maintain his cause in judgment, for he will never be shaken. The righteous will be remembered forever. He will not be afraid of evil news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in Yahweh. His heart is established. He will not be afraid in the end when he sees his adversaries. He has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Psalm 113 Praise Yah! Praise, you servants of Yahweh! Praise Yahweh's name! Blessed be Yahweh's name! from this time forward and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, Yahweh's name is to be praised. Yahweh is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like Yahweh, our God, who has his seat on high, who stoops down to see in heaven and in the earth, he raises up the poor out of the dust, lifts up the needy from the ash heap, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He settles the barren woman in her home as a joyful mother of children. Praise Yah! Psalm 114 When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of foreign language. Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. The Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like lambs. What was it, you see, that you fled? You Jordan, that you turned back? 
you mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like lambs. Tremble, you earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of waters. Psalm 115 not to us, Yahweh, not to us, but to your name give glory, for your loving kindness and for your truth's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God now? But our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they don't speak. They have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. They have noses, but they don't smell. They have hands, but they don't feel. They have feet, but they don't walk. Neither do they speak through their throat. Those who make them will be like them. Yes, everyone who trusts in them. Israel. Trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. House of Aaron, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. You who fear Yahweh, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. Yahweh remembers us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear Yahweh, both small and great. May Yahweh increase you more and more, you and your children. Blessed are you by Yahweh, who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the heavens of Yahweh, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The dead don't praise Yah, neither any who go down into silence. But we will bless Yah from this time forward and forevermore. Praise Yah. End of section 48. Psalm 116. I love Yahweh because he listens to my voice and my cries for mercy, because he has turned his ear to me. Therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death surrounded me. The pains of Sheol got a hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called on Yahweh's name. Yahweh, I beg you, deliver my soul. Yahweh is gracious and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. Yahweh preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for Yahweh has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before Yahweh in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I said, I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, All people are liars. What will I give to Yahweh for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call on Yahweh's name. I will pay my vows to Yahweh. Yes, in the presence of all his people. Precious in Yahweh's sight is the death of his saints. Yahweh, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your servant girl. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on Yahweh's name. I will pay my vows to Yahweh. Yes, in the presence of all his people, in the courts of Yahweh's house, in the middle of you, Jerusalem, 
Praise Yah. Psalm 117 Praise Yahweh, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For his loving kindness is great toward us. Yahweh's faithfulness endures forever. Praise Yah. Psalm 118 Give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Let Israel now say that his loving kindness endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his loving kindness endures forever. Now let those who fear Yahweh say, that his loving kindness endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on Yah. Yah answered me with freedom. Yahweh is on my side. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Yahweh is on my side among those who help me. Therefore, I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. It is better to take refuge in Yahweh than to put confidence in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in Yahweh's name I cut them off. They surrounded me, yes, they surrounded me. In Yahweh's name I indeed cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They are quenched like the burning thorns. In Yahweh's name, I cut them off. You pushed me back hard to make me fall, but Yahweh helped me. Yah is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of Yahweh does valiantly. The right hand of Yahweh is exalted. The right hand of Yahweh does valiantly. I will not die, but live and declare Yah's works. Yah has punished me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will enter into them. I will give thanks to Yah. This is the gate of Yahweh. The righteous will enter into it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is Yahweh's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that Yahweh has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save us now, we beg you, Yahweh. Yahweh, we beg you, send prosperity now. Blessed is he who comes in Yahweh's name. We have blessed you out of Yahweh's house. Yahweh is God, and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Psalm 119 Aleph Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to Yahweh's law. Blessed are those who keep his statutes, who seek him with their whole heart. Yes, they do nothing wrong. They walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts that we should fully obey them. Oh, that my ways were steadfast to obey your statutes. Then I wouldn't be disappointed when I consider all of your commandments. 
I will give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will observe your statutes. Don't utterly forsake me. Bet. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Don't let me wander from your commandments. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, Yahweh. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the ordinances of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Gimel Do good to your servant. I will live and I will obey your word. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things out of your law. I am a stranger on the earth. Don't hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your ordinances at all times. You have rebuked the proud who are cursed, who wander from your commandments. Take reproach and contempt away from me, for I have kept your statutes. Though princes sit and slander me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Indeed, your statutes are my delight and my counselors. Dalid My soul is laid low in the dust. Revive me according to your word. I declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Let me understand the teaching of your precepts. Then I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Keep me from the way of deceit. Grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. I have set your ordinances before me. I cling to your statutes, Yahweh. Don't let me be disappointed. I run in the path of your commandments, for you have set my heart free. Hey. Teach me, Yahweh, the way of your statutes. I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law. Yes, I will obey it with my whole heart. Direct me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in them. Turn my heart toward your statutes, not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things. Revive me in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant that you may be feared. Take away my disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. Woo! Let your loving kindness also come to me, Yahweh your salvation according to your word. So I will have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. Don't snatch the word of truth out of my mouth, for I put my hope in your ordinances. So I will obey your law continually, forever and ever. I will walk in liberty, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your statutes before kings and will not be disappointed. I will delight myself in your commandments because I love them. I reach out my hands for your commandments, which I love. I will meditate on your statutes. Zion Remember your word to your servant because you gave me hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for your word has revived me. The arrogant mock me excessively, but I don't swerve from your law. 
I remember your ordinances of old, Yahweh, and have comforted myself. Indignation has taken hold on me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house where I live. I have remembered your name, Yahweh, in the night, and I obey your law. This is my way that I keep your precepts. Ket Yahweh is my portion. I promised to obey your words. I sought your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. I considered my ways and turned my steps to your statutes. I will hurry and not delay to obey your commandments. The ropes of the wicked bind me, but I won't forget your law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a friend of all those who fear you, of those who observe your precepts. The earth is full of your loving kindness, Yahweh. Teach me your statutes. Tet Do good to your servant according to your word, Yahweh. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I observe your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have smeared a lie upon me. With my whole heart, I will keep your precepts. Their heart is as callous as the fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of pieces of gold and silver. Yod. Your hands have made me and formed me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will see me and be glad, because I have put my hope in your word. Yahweh, I know that your judgments are righteous, that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Please let your loving kindness be for my comfort according to your word, to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me, that I may live. For your law is my delight. Let the proud be disappointed, for they have overthrown me wrongfully. I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me. They will know your statutes. Let my heart be blameless toward your decrees, that I may not be disappointed. Kaf. My soul faints for your salvation. I hope in your word. My eyes fail for your word. I say, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke. I don't forget your statutes. How many are the days of your servant? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me, contrary to your law. All of your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me. They had almost wiped me from the earth, but I didn't forsake your precepts. Preserve my life according to your loving kindness so I will obey the statutes of your mouth. Lamed Yahweh, your word is settled in heaven forever. Your faithfulness is to all generations. You have established the earth, and it remains. Your laws remain to this day, for all things serve you. Unless your law had been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for with them you have revived me. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. 
the wicked have waited for me to destroy me. I will consider your statutes. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commands are boundless. Maim. How I love your law. It is my meditation all day. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for your commandments are always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, because I have kept your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil way, that I might observe your word. I have not turned away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. How sweet are your promises to my taste, more than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. None. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. I have sworn and have confirmed it, that I will obey your righteous ordinances. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, Yahweh, according to your word. Accept, I beg you, the willing offerings of my mouth. Yahweh, teach me your ordinances. My soul is continually in my hand, yet I won't forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I haven't gone astray from your precepts. I have taken your testimonies as a heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I have set my heart to perform your statutes forever, even to the end. Samek I hate double-minded men, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word, that I may live. Let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up, and I will be safe, and will have respect for your statutes continually. You reject all those who stray from your statutes, for their deceit is in vain. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you. I am afraid of your judgments. Ayin. I have done what is just and righteous. Don't leave me to my oppressors. Ensure your servants' well-being. Don't let the proud oppress me. My eyes fail, looking for your salvation, for your righteous word. Deal with your servant according to your loving kindness. Teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. It is time to act, Yahweh, for they break your law. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold, yes, more than pure gold. Therefore, I consider all of your precepts to be right. I hate every false way. Pe. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth wide and panted, for I longed for your commandments. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Establish my footsteps in your word. Don't let any iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man, so I will observe your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant. Teach me your statutes. Streams of tears run down my eyes because they don't observe your law. Zadai. 
You are righteous, Yahweh. Your judgments are upright. You have commanded your statutes in righteousness. They are fully trustworthy. My zeal wears me out because my enemies ignore your words. Your promises have been thoroughly tested, and your servant loves them. I am small and despised. I don't forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Your law is truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold of me. Your commandments are my delight. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. Koth I have called with my whole heart. Answer me, Yahweh. I will keep your statutes. I have called to you. Save me. I will obey your statutes. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I put my hope in your words. My eyes stay open through the night watches that I might meditate on your word. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. Revive me, Yahweh, according to your ordinances. They draw near who follow after wickedness. They are far from your law. You are near, Yahweh. All your commandments are truth. Of old I have known from your testimonies that you have founded them forever. Raish Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I don't forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they don't seek your statutes. Great are your tender mercies, Yahweh. Revive me according to your ordinances. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries. I haven't swerved from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with loathing because they don't observe your word. Consider how I love your precepts. Revive me, Yahweh, according to your loving kindness. All of your words are truth. Every one of your righteous ordinances endures forever. Sin and Shin Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great plunder. I hate and abhor falsehood. I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous ordinances. Those who love your law have great peace. Nothing causes them to stumble. I have hoped for your salvation, Yahweh. I have done your commandments. My soul has observed your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I have obeyed your precepts and your testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Tav Let my cry come before you, Yahweh. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your word. Let my lips utter praise, for you teach me your statutes. Let my tongue sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I have longed for your salvation, Yahweh. Your law is my delight. Let my soul live that I may praise you. Let your ordinances help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I don't forget your commandments. Psalm 120 a Song of Ascents In my distress I cried to Yahweh. 
he answered me deliver my soul yahweh from lying lips from a deceitful tongue what will be given to you and what will be done more to you you deceitful tongue sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper woe is me that i live in meshech that i dwell among the tents of Kedar. my soul has had her dwelling too long with him who hates peace i am for peace but when i speak they are for war psalm 121 a song of ascents i will lift up my eyes to the hills where does my help come from my help comes from yahweh who made heaven and earth he will not allow your foot to be moved he who keeps you will not slumber behold he who keeps israel will neither slumber nor sleep yahweh is your keeper yahweh is your shade on your right hand the sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night yahweh will keep you from all evil he will keep your soul yahweh will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forward and for evermore psalm 122 a song of ascents by david i was glad when they said to me let's go to yahweh's house our feet are standing within your gates jerusalem jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together where the tribes go up even yah's tribes according to an ordinance for israel to give thanks to yahweh's name for there are set thrones for judgment the thrones of david's house pray for the peace of jerusalem those who love you will prosper peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces for my brothers and companions sakes i will now say peace be within you for the sake of the house of yahweh our god I will seek your good. Psalm 123 A Song of Ascents To you I do lift up my eyes, you who sit in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to yahweh our god until he has mercy on us have mercy on us yahweh have mercy on us for we have endured much contempt our soul is exceedingly filled with the scoffing of those who are at ease with the contempt of the proud psalm 124 a song of ascents by david if it had not been yahweh who was on our side let israel now say if it had not been yahweh who was on our side when men rose up against us then they would have swallowed us up alive when their wrath was kindled against us then the waters would have overwhelmed us the stream would have gone over our soul then the proud waters would have gone over our soul blessed be yahweh who has not given us as a prey to their teeth our soul has escaped like a bird out of the fowler's snare the snare is broken and we have escaped our help is in yahweh's name who made heaven and earth psalm 125 a song of ascents those who trust in yahweh are as mount zion which can't be moved but remains forever 
as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so Yahweh surrounds his people from this time forward and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness won't remain over the allotment of the righteous, so that the righteous won't use their hands to do evil. Do good, Yahweh, to those who are good, to those who are upright in their hearts. But as for those who turn away to their crooked ways, Yahweh will lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be on Israel. Psalm 126 A Song of Ascents When Yahweh brought back those who returned to Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, Yahweh has done great things for them. Yahweh has done great things for us, and we are glad. Restore our fortunes again, Yahweh, like the streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed for sowing, will certainly come again with joy, carrying his sheaves. Psalm 127 A Song of Ascents by Solomon Unless Yahweh builds the house, they who build it labor in vain. Unless Yahweh watches over the city, the watchman guards it in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to stay up late, eating the bread of toil, for he gives sleep to his loved ones. Behold, children are a heritage of Yahweh. The fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They won't be disappointed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Psalm 128 A Song of Ascents Blessed is everyone who fears Yahweh, who walks in his ways. For you will eat the labor of your hands. You will be happy, and it will be well with you. Your wife will be as a fruitful vine in the innermost parts of your house. Your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears Yahweh. May Yahweh bless you out of Zion, and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Psalm 129 A Song of Ascents Many times they have afflicted me from my youth up. Let Israel now say, Many times they have afflicted me from my youth up. Yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed on my back. They made their furrows long. Yahweh is righteous. He has cut apart the cords of the wicked. Let them be disappointed and turned backward, all those who hate Zion. Let them be as the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up with which the reaper doesn't fill his hand, nor he who binds sheaves his bosom. Neither do those who go by say, The blessing of Yahweh be on you. We bless you in Yahweh's name. Psalm 130 A Song of Ascents out of the depths I have cried to you, Yahweh. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my petitions. If you, Yah, 
kept a record of sins. Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, therefore you are feared. I wait for Yahweh. My soul waits. I hope in his word. My soul longs for the Lord more than watchmen long for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. Israel, hope in Yahweh. For with Yahweh there is loving kindness. With him is abundant redemption. He will redeem Israel from all their sins. Psalm 131 A Song of Ascents by David Yahweh, my heart isn't arrogant, nor my eyes lofty, nor do I concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. Surely I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. Israel, hope in Yahweh. From this time forward and forevermore. Psalm 132 A Song of Ascents Yahweh, remember David and all his affliction, how he swore to Yahweh, and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the structure of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes, or slumber to my eyelids, until I find out a place for Yahweh, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrathah, we found it in the field of Jair, we will go into his dwelling place. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, Yahweh, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, don't turn away the face of your anointed one. Yahweh has sworn to David in truth. He will not turn from it. I will set the fruit of your body on your throne. If your children will keep my covenant, my testimony that I will teach them, their children also will sit on your throne forevermore. For Yahweh has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. I will live here, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priests I will also clothe with salvation. Her saints will shout aloud for joy. There I will make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. I will clothe his enemies with shame. But on himself his crown will be resplendent. Psalm 133 A Song of Ascent by David See how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head that ran down on the beard, even Aaron's beard, that came down on the edge of his robes, like the dew of Hermon that comes down on the hills of Zion. For there Yahweh gives the blessing, even life forevermore. Psalm 134 A Song of Ascents Look, praise Yahweh, all you servants of Yahweh, who stand by night in Yahweh's house. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Praise Yahweh. May Yahweh bless you from Zion, even he who made heaven and earth. Psalm 135 
Praise Yah. Praise Yahweh's name. Praise him, you servants of Yahweh, you who stand in Yahweh's house, in the courts of our God's house. Praise Yah, for Yahweh is good. Sing praises to his name, for that is pleasant. For Yah has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his own possession. For I know that Yahweh is great, that our Lord is above all gods. Whatever Yahweh pleased, that he has done, in heaven and in earth, in the seas and in all deeps, who causes the clouds to rise from the ends of the earth, who makes lightnings with the rain, who brings the wind out of his treasuries, who struck the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and animal, who sent signs and wonders into the middle of you, Egypt, on Pharaoh, and on all his servants, who struck many nations and killed mighty kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for a heritage, a heritage to Israel, his people, your name, Yahweh, endures forever. Your renown, Yahweh, throughout all generations. For Yahweh will judge his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they can't speak. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them. Yes, everyone who trusts in them. House of Israel, praise Yahweh. House of Aaron, praise Yahweh. House of Levi, praise Yahweh. You who fear Yahweh, praise Yahweh. Blessed be Yahweh from Zion, who dwells at Jerusalem. Praise Yah. Psalm 136 Give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his loving kindness endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his loving kindness endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his loving kindness endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who struck down the Egyptian firstborn, for his loving kindness endures forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his loving kindness endures forever. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea apart, for his loving kindness endures forever. And made Israel to pass through the middle of it, for his loving kindness endures forever but overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his loving kindness endures forever. To him who struck great kings, for his loving kindness endures forever. And killed mighty kings, for his loving kindness endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, 
for his loving kindness endures forever. Og, king of Bashan, for his loving kindness endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, for his loving kindness endures forever. Even a heritage to Israel, his servant, for his loving kindness endures forever. Who remembered us in our low estate, for his loving kindness endures forever. And has delivered us from our adversaries, for his loving kindness endures forever. Who gives food to every creature, for his loving kindness endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his loving kindness endures forever. Psalm 137 By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yes, we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows in that land we hung up our harps, for there those who led us captive asked us for songs. Those who tormented us demanded songs of joy. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing Yahweh's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I don't remember you, if I don't prefer Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, Yahweh, against the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it even to its foundation. Daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, he will be happy who rewards you as you have served us. Happy shall he be who takes and dashes your little ones against the rock. Psalm 138 By David I will give you thanks with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing praises to you. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. For you have exalted your name and your word above all. In the day that I called, you answered me. You encouraged me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth will give you thanks, Yahweh, for they have heard the words of your mouth. Yes, they will sing of the ways of Yahweh, for great is Yahweh's glory. For though Yahweh is high, yet he looks after the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the middle of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. Yahweh will fulfill that which concerns me. Your loving kindness, Yahweh, endures forever. Don't forsake the works of your own hands. Psalm 139 For the Chief Musician a Psalm by David Yahweh, you have searched me, and you know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but, behold, Yahweh, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before. You laid your hand on me. This knowledge is beyond me. It's lofty. I can't attain it. Where could I go from your spirit? Or where could I flee from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn and settle in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will hold me. 
if i say surely the darkness will overwhelm me the light around me will be night even the darkness doesn't hide from you but the night shines as the day the darkness is like light to you for you formed my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb i will give thanks to you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made your works are wonderful my soul knows that very well. My frame wasn't hidden from you when I was made in secret, woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my body. In your book they were all written, the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, God! How vast is their sum! If I would count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I wake up, I am still with you. If only you, God, would kill the wicked. Get away from me, you bloodthirsty men, for they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. Yahweh, don't I hate those who hate you? Am I not grieved with those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. They have become my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. Psalm 140 for the chief musician a psalm by david deliver me yahweh from the evil man preserve me from the violent man those who devise mischief in their hearts they continually gather themselves together for war they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent Viper's poison is under their lips. Yahweh, keep me from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent men who have determined to trip my feet. The proud have hidden a snare for me. They have spread the cords of a net by the path. They have set traps for me. I said to Yahweh, you are my God. Listen to the cry of my petitions, Yahweh. Yahweh, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Yahweh, don't grant the desires of the wicked. Don't let their evil plans succeed, or they will become proud. As for the head of those who surround me, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall on them. Let them be thrown into the fire, into miry pits, from where they never rise. An evil speaker won't be established in the earth. Evil will hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that Yahweh will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name. The upright will dwell in your presence. Psalm 141 A Psalm by David Yahweh, I have called on you. Come to me quickly. Listen to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be set before you like incense, the lifting up of my hands like the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, Yahweh, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Don't incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice deeds of wickedness with men who work iniquity. Don't let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, it is kindness. Let him reprove me. It is like oil on the head. Don't let my head refuse it. 
yet my prayer is always against evil deeds. Their judges are thrown down by the sides of the rock. They will hear my words, for they are well spoken. As when one plows and breaks up the earth, our bones are scattered at the mouth of Sheol. For my eyes are on you, Yahweh the Lord. In you I take refuge. Don't leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snare which they have laid for me, from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall together into their own nets while I pass by. Psalm 142 A Contemplation by David When He Was in the Cave A Prayer I cry with my voice to Yahweh. With my voice, I ask Yahweh for mercy. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell him my troubles. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, you knew my route. On the path in which I walk, they have hidden a snare for me. Look on my right and see, for there is no one who is concerned for me. Refuge has fled from me. No one cares for my soul. I cried to you, Yahweh. I said, You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will be good to me. Psalm 143 A Psalm by David Hear my prayer, Yahweh. Listen to my petitions. In your faithfulness and righteousness, relieve me. Don't enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no man living is righteous. For the enemy pursues my soul. He has struck my life down to the ground. He has made me live in dark places, as those who have been long dead. Therefore my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your doings. I contemplate the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Hurry to answer me, Yahweh. My spirit fails. Don't hide your face from me so that I don't become like those who go down into the pit. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for I trust in you. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, Yahweh, from my enemies. I flee to you to hide me. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, Yahweh, for your name's sake. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. In your loving kindness, cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my soul, for I am your servant. Psalm 144 By David Blessed be Yahweh, my rock, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to battle. My loving kindness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Yahweh, what is man that you care for him, or the son of man? that you think of him. Man is like a breath. 
His days are like a shadow that passes away. Part your heavens, Yahweh, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they will smoke. Throw out lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters, out of the hands of foreigners, whose mouths speak deceit, whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, God. On a ten-stringed lyre, I will sing praises to you. You are he who gives salvation to kings who rescues David, his servant, from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me out of the hands of foreigners whose mouths speak deceit, whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Then our sons will be like well-nurtured plants, our daughters like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns are full, filled with all kinds of provision. Our sheep produce thousands and ten thousands in our fields. Our oxen will pull heavy loads. There is no breaking in and no going away and no outcry in our streets. Happy are the people who are in such a situation. Happy are the people whose God is Yahweh. Psalm 145 A Praise Psalm by David I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you. I will extol your name forever and ever. Great is Yahweh and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation will commend your works to another and will declare your mighty acts of the glorious majesty of your honor. Of your wondrous works, I will meditate. Men will speak of the might of your awesome acts. I will declare your greatness. They will utter the memory of your great goodness and will sing of your righteousness. Yahweh is gracious, merciful, slow to anger, and of great loving kindness. Yahweh is good to all. His tender mercies are over all his works. All your works will give thanks to you, Yahweh. Your saints will extol you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk about your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts, the glory of the majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all generations. Yahweh is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. Yahweh upholds all who fall and raises up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait for you. You give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Yahweh is righteous in all his ways and gracious in all his works. Yahweh is near to all those who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Yahweh preserves all those who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of Yahweh. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Psalm 146 Praise Yah, praise Yahweh, my soul. While I live, I will praise Yahweh. I will sing praises to my God as long as I exist. 
Don't put your trust in princes, each a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, and he returns to the earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in Yahweh his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. Yahweh frees the prisoners. Yahweh opens the eyes of the blind. Yahweh raises up those who are bowed down. Yahweh loves the righteous. Yahweh preserves the foreigners. He upholds the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. Yahweh will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise Yah. Psalm 147 Praise Yah, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and fitting to praise Him. Yahweh builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Yahweh upholds the humble. He brings the wicked down to the ground. Sing to Yahweh with thanksgiving. Sing praises on the harp to our God, who covers the sky with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass grow on the mountains. He provides food for the livestock and for the young ravens when they call. He doesn't delight in the strength of the horse. He takes no pleasure in the legs of a man. Yahweh takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his loving kindness. Praise Yahweh, Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He makes peace in your borders. He fills you with the finest of the wheat. He sends out his commandment to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down his hail like pebbles. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. He shows his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done this for just any nation. They don't know his ordinances. Praise Yah! End of section 49. Psalm 148 Praise Yah! Praise Yahweh from the heavens! Praise Him in the heights! Praise Him, all His angels! Praise Him, all His army! Praise Him, sun and moon! Praise Him, all you shining stars! Praise Him, you heavens of heavens! You waters that are above the heavens, let them praise Yahweh's name, for he commanded, and they were created. He has also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which will not pass away. Praise Yahweh from the earth, you great sea creatures and all depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. 
mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise Yahweh's name, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and the heavens. He has lifted up the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise Yah! Psalm 149 Praise Yahweh. Sing to Yahweh a new song, his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him who made them. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises to him with tambourine and harp. For Yahweh takes pleasure in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Let the saints rejoice in honor. Let them sing for joy on their beds. May the high praises of God be in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment all his saints have this honor. Praise Yah! Psalm 150 Praise Yah! Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his heavens for his acts of power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and flute. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise Yah. Praise Yah. The Book of Proverbs Chapter 1 The Beginning of Knowledge The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel To know wisdom and instruction To discern the words of understanding To receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness justice and equity to give prudence to the simple knowledge and discretion to the young man that the wise man may hear and increase in learning that the man of understanding may attain to sound counsel to understand a proverb and parables the words and riddles of the wise the fear of yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but the foolish despise wisdom and instruction. The Enticement of Sin My son, listen to your father's instruction and don't forsake your mother's teaching, for they will be a garland to grace your head and chains around your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, don't consent. If they say, come with us, let's lay in wait for blood. Let's lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let's swallow them up alive like Sheol and whole like those who go down into the pit. We'll find all valuable wealth. We'll fill our houses with spoil. You shall cast your lot among us. We'll all have one purse. 
My son, don't walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. They hurry to shed blood, for in vain is the net spread in the sight of any bird. But these lay wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. Wisdom Calls Aloud Wisdom calls aloud in the street. She utters her voice in the public squares. She calls at the head of noisy places. At the entrance of the city gates, she utters her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will mockers delight themselves in mockery, and fools hate knowledge? Turn at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make known my words to you. Because I have called, and you have refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no one has paid attention. But you have ignored all my counsel, and wanted none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when your disaster comes on like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come on you. Then will they call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me, because they hated knowledge and didn't choose the fear of Yahweh. They wanted none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, they will eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own schemes. For the backsliding of the simple will kill them. The careless ease of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell securely and will be at ease without fear of harm. Chapter 2 the Benefits of Wisdom My son, if you will receive my words and store up my commandments within you, so as to turn your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you call out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of God. For Yahweh gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, that he may guard the paths of justice and preserve the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. For wisdom will enter into your heart. Knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the men who speak perverse things, who forsake the paths of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, who are crooked in their ways and wayward in their paths, to deliver you from the strange woman, even from the foreigner who flatters with her words, who forsakes the friend of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God, for her house leads down to death, her paths to the dead. None who go to her return again, neither do they attain to the paths of life, that you may walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright will dwell in the land, 
the perfect will remain in it, but the wicked will be cut off from the land. The treacherous will be rooted out of it. Chapter 3 Trust in the Lord My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For at length of days and years of life and peace will they add to you. Don't let kindness and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in Yahweh with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. It will be health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor Yahweh with your substance, with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, don't despise Yahweh's discipline neither be weary of his reproof. For whom Yahweh loves, he reproves, even as a father reproves the son in whom he delights. Blessed is he who finds wisdom. Happy is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gets understanding. For her good profit is better than getting silver and her return is better than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. None of the things you can desire are to be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. All her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Happy is everyone who retains her. By wisdom, Yahweh founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up, and the skies dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace for your neck. Then you shall walk in your way securely. Your foot won't stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Don't be afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. For Yahweh will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being taken. Don't withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do it. Don't say to your neighbor, go and come again. Tomorrow I will give it to you when you have it by you. Don't devise evil against your neighbor since he dwells securely by you. Don't strive with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Don't envy the man of violence. Choose none of his ways. For the perverse is an abomination to Yahweh, but his friendship is with the upright. Yahweh's curse is in the house of the wicked but he blesses the habitation of the righteous. Surely he mocks the mockers, but he gives grace to the humble. The wise will inherit glory, but shame will be the promotion of fools. Chapter 4 Listen to a Father's Instruction Listen, sons, to a father's instruction. 
pay attention and no understanding. For I give you sound learning. Don't forsake my law. For I was a son to my father, tender and an only child in the sight of my mother. He taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Don't forget, neither swerve from the words of my mouth. Don't forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is supreme. Get wisdom. Yes, though it costs all your possessions, get understanding. Esteem her, and she will exalt you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. She will give to your head a garland of grace. She will deliver a crown of splendor to you. Listen, my son, and receive my sayings. The years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in straight paths. When you go, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Don't let her go. Keep her, for she is your life. Don't enter the path of the wicked. Don't walk in the way of evil men. Avoid it and don't pass by it. Turn from it and pass on, for they don't sleep unless they do evil. Their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the dawning light that shines more and more until the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They don't know what they stumble over. My son, attend to my words. Turn your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to their whole body. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it is the wellspring of life. Put away from yourself a perverse mouth. Put corrupt lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make the path of your feet level. Let all of your ways be established. Don't turn to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Chapter 5 Avoid Immorality My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my understanding, that you may maintain discretion, that your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulteress drip honey. Her mouth is smoother than oil, but in the end she is as bitter as wormwood and as sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to Sheol. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her ways are crooked, and she doesn't know it. Now, therefore, my sons, listen to me. Don't depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her. Don't come near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the cruel one, lest strangers feast on your wealth and your labors enrich another man's house. You will groan at your latter end, when your flesh and your body are consumed, and say, How I have hated instruction, 
and my heart despised reproof. Neither have I obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor turned my ear to those who instructed me. I have come to the brink of utter ruin in the midst of the gathered assembly. Drink water out of your own cistern, running water out of your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, streams of water in the public squares? Let them be for yourself alone, not for strangers with you. Let your spring be blessed. Rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe and a graceful deer. Let her breast satisfy you at all times. Be captivated always with her love. For why should you, my son, be captivated with an adulteress? Why embrace the bosom of another? For the ways of man are before the eyes of Yahweh. He examines all his paths. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare him. The cords of his sin hold him firmly. He will die for lack of instruction. In the greatness of his folly, he will go astray. Chapter 6 Warnings Against Foolishness My son, if you have become collateral for your neighbor, if you have struck your hands in pledge for a stranger, you are trapped by the words of your mouth. You are ensnared with the words of your mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver yourself since you have come into the hand of your neighbor. Go, humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself, like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways, and be wise, which, having no chief, overseer, or ruler, provides her bread in the summer, and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you sleep, sluggard? When will you arise out of your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So your poverty will come as a robber, and your scarcity as an armed man. A worthless person, a man of iniquity, is he who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who motions with his fingers, in whose heart is perverseness who devises evil continually, who always sows discord. Therefore, his calamity will come suddenly. He will be broken suddenly, and that without remedy. There are six things which Yahweh hates, yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness who utters lies, and he who sows discord among brothers. Warnings Against Adultery My son, keep your father's commandment and don't forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, it will lead you. When you sleep, it will watch over you. When you awake, it will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep you from the immoral woman,
from the flattery of the wayward wife's tongue. Don't lust after her beauty in your heart, neither let her captivate you with her eyelids. For a prostitute reduces you to a piece of bread. The adulteress hunts for your precious life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap and his clothes not be burned? Or can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? So is he who goes in to his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her will not be unpunished. Men don't despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. But if he is found, he shall restore seven times. He shall give all the wealth of his house. He who commits adultery with a woman is void of understanding. He who does it destroys his own soul. He will get wounds and dishonor. His reproach will not be wiped away. For jealousy arouses the fury of the husband. He won't spare in the day of vengeance. He won't regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content, though you give many gifts. Chapter 7 Warnings About the Adulteress My son, keep my words. Lay up my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live. Guard my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Tell wisdom, you are my sister. Call understanding your relative, that they may keep you from this strange woman, from the foreigner who flatters with her words. For at the window of my house I looked out through my lattice, I saw among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. He went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening of the day, in the middle of the night, and in the darkness. Behold, there a woman met him with the attire of a prostitute and with crafty intent. She is loud and defiant. Her feet don't stay in her house. Now she is in the streets, now in the squares, and lurking at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him. With an impudent face she said to him, Sacrifices of peace offerings are with me. This day I have paid my vows. Therefore I came out to meet you, to diligently seek your face, and I have found you. I have spread my couch with carpets of tapestry, with striped cloths of the yarn of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's take our feel of loving until the morning. Let's solace ourselves with loving. For my husband isn't at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him. He will come home at the full moon. With persuasive words, she led him astray. With the flattering of her lips, she seduced him. He followed her immediately, as an ox goes to the slaughter, as a fool stepping into a noose until an arrow strikes through his liver as a bird hurries to the snare and doesn't know that it will cost his life. Now, therefore, sons, listen to me. Pay attention to the words of my mouth. Don't let your heart turn to her ways. Don't go astray in her paths, for she has thrown down many wounded. Yes, all her slain are a mighty army. Her house is the way to Sheol, going down to the rooms of death. Chapter 8 The Excellence of Wisdom 
Doesn't wisdom cry out? Doesn't understanding raise her voice? On the top of high places by the way, where the paths meet, she stands. Beside the gates, at the entry of the city, at the entry doors, she cries aloud. To you men, I call. I send my voice to the sons of mankind. You simple, understand prudence. You fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak excellent things. The opening of my lips is for right things. For my mouth speaks truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing crooked or perverse in them. They are all plain to him who understands, right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction rather than silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. All the things that may be desired can't be compared to it. I, wisdom, have made prudence my dwelling. Find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. I hate pride, arrogance, the evil way, and the perverse mouth. Counsel and sound knowledge are mine. I have understanding and power. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, nobles and all the righteous rulers of the earth. I love those who love me. Those who seek me diligently will find me. With me are riches, honor, enduring wealth, and prosperity. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may give wealth to those who love me. I feel their treasuries. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his work before his deeds of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, before the earth existed. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the beginning of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he set a circle on the surface of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when the springs of the deep became strong, when he gave to the sea its boundary that the waters should not violate his commandment, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was the craftsman by his side. I was a delight day by day, always rejoicing before him, rejoicing in his whole world. My delight was with the sons of men. Now, therefore, my sons, listen to me, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. Don't refuse it. Blessed is the man who hears me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at my doorposts. For whoever finds me finds life and will obtain favor from Yahweh. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Chapter 9 The Way of Wisdom 
Wisdom has built her house. She has carved out her seven pillars. She has prepared her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who is void of understanding, she says to him, Come, eat some of my bread, drink some of the wine which I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live. Walk in the way of understanding. He who corrects a mocker invites insult. He who reproves a wicked man invites abuse. Don't reprove a scoffer lest he hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Instruct a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, the years of your life will be increased. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you mock, you alone will bear it. The Way of Folly The foolish woman is loud, undisciplined, and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house, on a seat in the high places of the city to call to those who pass by, who go straight on their ways. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who is void of understanding, she says to him, Stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is pleasant. But he doesn't know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of Sheol. Chapter 10 Solomon's Proverbs The Proverbs of Solomon A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son brings grief to his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. Yahweh will not allow the soul of the righteous to go hungry, but he thrusts away the desire of the wicked. He becomes poor who works with a lazy hand, but the hand of the diligent brings wealth. He who gathers in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during the harvest is a son who causes shame. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart accept commandments, but a chattering fool will fall. He who walks blamelessly walks surely but he who perverts his ways will be found out. One winking with the eye causes sorrow, but a chattering fool will fall. The mouth of the righteous is a spring of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all wrongs. Wisdom is found on the lips of him who has discernment, but a rod is for the back of him who is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near ruin. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous leads to life. The increase of the wicked leads to sin. 
He is in the way of life who heeds correction. But he who forsakes reproof leads others astray. He who hides hatred has lying lips. He who utters a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words, there is no lack of disobedience. But he who restrains his lips does wisely. The tongue of the righteous is like choice silver. The heart of the wicked is of little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many but the foolish die for lack of understanding. Yahweh's blessing brings wealth, and he adds no trouble to it. It is a fool's pleasure to do wickedness, but wisdom is a man of understanding's pleasure. What the wicked fear will overtake them, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the whirlwind passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous stand firm forever. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those who send him. The fear of Yahweh prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The prospect of the righteous is joy but the hope of the wicked will perish. The way of Yahweh is a stronghold to the upright, but it is a destruction to the workers of iniquity. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked is perverse. Chapter 11 A false balance is an abomination to Yahweh, but accurate weights are his delight. When pride comes, then comes shame, but with humility comes wisdom. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of the treacherous shall destroy them. Riches don't profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but the unfaithful will be trapped by evil desires. When a wicked man dies, hope perishes, and expectation of power comes to nothing. A righteous person is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked takes his place. With his mouth, the godless man destroys his neighbor, but the righteous will be delivered through knowledge. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there is shouting. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. One who despises his neighbor is void of wisdom, but a man of understanding holds his peace. One who brings gossip betrays a confidence, but one who is of a trustworthy spirit is one who keeps a secret. Where there is no wise guidance, the nation falls, but in the multitude of counselors there is victory. He who is collateral for a stranger will suffer for it, but he who refuses pledges of collateral is secure. A gracious woman obtains honor, but violent men obtain riches. The merciful man does good to his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. 
Wicked people earn deceitful wages, but one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. He who is truly righteous gets life. He who pursues evil gets death. Those who are perverse in heart are an abomination to Yahweh, but those whose ways are blameless are his delight. Most certainly, the evil man will not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous will be delivered like a gold ring in a pig's snout, is a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. The desire of the righteous is only good. The expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is one who scatters and increases yet more. There is one who withholds more than is appropriate, but gains poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat. He who waters shall be watered also himself. People curse someone who withholds grain, but blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. He who diligently seeks good seeks favor, but he who searches after evil, it shall come to him. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous shall flourish as the green leaf. He who troubles his own house shall inherit the wind. The foolish shall be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He who is wise wins souls. Behold, the righteous shall be repaid in the earth. How much more the wicked and the sinner. Chapter 12 Loving Discipline and Knowledge Whoever loves correction loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. A good man shall obtain favor from Yahweh, but he will condemn a man of wicked devices. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A worthy woman is the crown of her husband, but a disgraceful wife is as rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked are about lying in wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom but he who has a warped mind shall be despised. Better is he who is lightly esteemed and has a servant than he who honors himself and lacks bread. A righteous man respects the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He who tills his land shall have plenty of bread, but he who chases fantasies is void of understanding. The wicked desires the plunder of evil men, but the root of the righteous flourishes. An evil man is trapped by sinfulness of lips, but the righteous shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, the work of a man's hands shall be rewarded to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who is wise listens to counsel. A fool shows his annoyance this same day, but one who overlooks an insult is prudent. He who is truthful testifies honestly 
but a false witness lies. There is one who speaks rashly, like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise heals. Truth's lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only momentary. Deceit is in the heart of those who plot evil, but joy comes to the promoters of peace. No mischief shall happen to the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to Yahweh, but those who do the truth are his delight. A prudent man keeps his knowledge, but the hearts of fools proclaim foolishness. The hands of the diligent ones shall rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a kind word makes it glad. A righteous person is cautious in friendship, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The slothful man doesn't roast his game, but the possessions of diligent men are prized. In the way of righteousness is life. In its path there is no death. Chapter 13 A wise son listens to his father's instruction, but a scoffer doesn't listen to rebuke. By the fruit of his lips a man enjoys good things, but the unfaithful crave violence. He who guards his mouth guards his soul. One who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. The soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing, but the desire of the diligent shall be fully satisfied. A righteous man hates lies, but a wicked man brings shame and disgrace. Righteousness guards the way of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. There are some who pretend to be rich, yet have nothing. There are some who pretend to be poor, yet have great wealth. The ransom of a man's life is his riches, but the poor hear no threats. The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Pride only breeds quarrels, but with ones who take advice is wisdom. Wealth gained dishonestly dwindles away, but he who gathers by hand makes it grow. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when longing is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. Whoever despises instruction will pay for it, but he who respects a command will be rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a spring of life to turn from the snares of death. Good understanding wins favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. Every prudent man acts from knowledge, but a fool exposes folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble but a trustworthy envoy gains healing. Poverty and shame come to him who refuses discipline, but he who heeds correction shall be honored. Longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but fools detest turning from evil. One who walks with wise men grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Misfortune pursues sinners, 
but prosperity rewards the righteous. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored for the righteous. An abundance of food is in poor people's fields, but injustice sweeps it away. One who spares the rod hates his son, but one who loves him is careful to discipline him. The righteous one eats to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked goes hungry. Chapter 14 Every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish one tears it down with her own hands. He who walks in his uprightness fears Yahweh, but he who is perverse in his ways despises him. The fool's talk brings a rod to his back, but the lips of the wise protect them. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. A truthful witness will not lie, but a false witness pours out lies. A scoffer seeks wisdom and doesn't find it, but knowledge comes easily to a discerning person. Stay away from a foolish man, for you won't find knowledge on his lips. The wisdom of the prudent is to think about his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools mock at making atonement for sins, but among the upright there is good will. The heart knows its own bitterness and joy. He will not share these with a stranger. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way which seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Even in laughter the heart may be sorrowful, and mirth may end in heaviness. The unfaithful will be repaid for his own ways. Likewise, a good man will be rewarded for his ways. A simple man believes everything, but the prudent man carefully considers his ways. A wise man fears and shuns evil, but the fool is hot-headed and reckless. He who is quick to become angry will commit folly, and a crafty man is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow down before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor person is shunned even by his own neighbor, but the rich person has many friends. He who despises his neighbor sins, but blessed is he who has pity on the poor. Don't they go astray who plot evil? But love and faithfulness belong to those who plan good. In all hard work there is profit, but the talk of the lips leads only to poverty. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the folly of fools crowns them with folly. A truthful witness saves souls, but a false witness is deceitful. In the fear of Yahweh is a secure fortress, and he will be a refuge for his children. The fear of Yahweh is a fountain of life, turning people from the snares of death. In the multitude of people is the king's glory but in the lack of people is the destruction of the prince. 
He who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a quick temper displays folly. The life of the body is a heart at peace, but envy rots the bones. He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for his maker, but he who is kind to the needy honors him. The wicked is brought down in his calamity, but in death the righteous has a refuge. Wisdom rests in the heart of one who has understanding, and is even made known in the inward part of fools. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. The king's favor is toward a servant who deals wisely, but his wrath is toward one who causes shame. End of section 50 Chapter 15 A gentle answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of fools gush out folly. Yahweh's eyes are everywhere, keeping watch on the evil and the good. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but deceit in it crushes the spirit. A fool despises his father's correction, but he who heeds reproof shows prudence. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but the income of the wicked brings trouble. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, not so with the heart of fools. The sacrifice made by the wicked is an abomination to Yahweh, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination to Yahweh, but he loves him who follows after righteousness. There is stern discipline for one who forsakes the way. Whoever hates reproof shall die. Sheol and Abaddon are before Yahweh. How much more, then, the hearts of the children of men? A scoffer doesn't love to be reproved. He will not go to the wise. A glad heart makes a cheerful face, but an aching heart breaks the spirit. The heart of one who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouths of fools feed on folly. All the days of the afflicted are wretched, but one who has a cheerful heart enjoys a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of Yahweh than great treasure with trouble. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fattened calf with hatred. A wrathful man stirs up contention, but one who is slow to anger appeases strife. The way of the sluggard is like a thorn patch, but the path of the upright is a highway. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly is joy to one who is void of wisdom, but a man of understanding keeps his way straight. Where there is no counsel, plans fail, but in a multitude of counselors they are established. Joy comes to a man with the reply of his mouth. How good is a word at the right time! The path of life leads upward for the wise, 
to keep him from going downward to Sheol. Yahweh will uproot the house of the proud, but he will keep the widow's borders intact. Yahweh detests the thoughts of the wicked, but the thoughts of the pure are pleasing. He who is greedy for gain troubles his own house, but he who hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous weighs answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes out evil. Yahweh is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart. Good news gives health to the bones. The ear that listens to reproof lives and will be at home among the wise. He who refuses correction despises his own soul, but he who listens to reproof gets understanding. The fear of Yahweh teaches wisdom. Before honor is humility. Chapter 16 The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from Yahweh. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Yahweh weighs the motives. Commit your deeds to Yahweh, and your plans shall succeed. Yahweh has made everything for its own end, yes, even the wicked, for the day of evil. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. They shall certainly not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is atoned for. By the fear of Yahweh, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice. A man's heart plans his course, but Yahweh directs his steps. Inspired judgments are on the lips of the king. He shall not betray his mouth. Honest balances and scales are Yahweh's. All the weights in the bag are his work. It is an abomination for kings to do wrong, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings. They value one who speaks the truth. The king's wrath is a messenger of death, but a wise man will pacify it. In the light of the king's face is life. His favor is like a cloud of the spring rain. How much better it is to get wisdom than gold. Yes, to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the plunder with the proud. He who heeds the word finds prosperity. Whoever trusts in Yahweh is blessed. The wise in heart shall be called prudent. Pleasantness of the lips promotes instruction. Understanding is a fountain of life to one who has it but the punishment of fools is their folly. The heart of the wise instructs his mouth and adds learning to his lips. 
pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way which seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of the laboring man labors for him, for his mouth urges him on. A worthless man devises mischief. His speech is like a scorching fire. A perverse man stirs up strife. A whisperer separates close friends. A man of violence entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. One who winks his eyes to plot perversities, one who compresses his lips, is bent on evil. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is attained by a life of righteousness. One who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, one who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from Yahweh. Chapter 17 Better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. A servant who deals wisely will rule over a son who causes shame and shall have a part in the inheritance among the brothers. The refining pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but Yahweh tests the hearts. An evildoer heeds wicked lips, a liar gives ear to a mischievous tongue. Whoever mocks the poor reproaches his maker, he who is glad at calamity shall not be unpunished. Children's children are the crown of old men. The glory of children are their parents. Arrogant speech isn't fitting for a fool, much less do lying lips fit a prince. A bribe is a precious stone in the eyes of him who gives it. Wherever he turns, he prospers. He who covers an offense promotes love, but he who repeats a matter separates best friends. A rebuke enters deeper into one who has understanding than a hundred lashes into a fool. An evil man seeks only rebellion. Therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her cubs meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. Whoever rewards evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is like breaching a dam. Therefore, Stop contention before quarreling breaks out. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous, both of them alike are an abomination to Yahweh. Why is there money in the hand of a fool to buy wisdom, since he has no understanding? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding strikes hands and becomes collateral in the presence of his neighbor. He who loves disobedience loves strife. One who builds a high gate seeks destruction. One who has a perverse heart doesn't find prosperity and one who has a deceitful tongue falls into trouble. He who becomes the father of a fool grieves. The father of a fool has no joy. A cheerful heart makes good medicine, 
but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. A wicked man receives a bribe in secret to pervert the ways of justice. Wisdom is before the face of one who has understanding, but the eyes of a fool wander to the ends of the earth. A foolish son brings grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. Also to punish the righteous is not good nor to flog officials for their integrity. He who spares his words has knowledge. He who is even-tempered is a man of understanding. Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is counted wise. When he shuts his lips, he is thought to be discerning. Chapter 18 an unfriendly man pursues selfishness and defies all sound judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but only in revealing his own opinion. When wickedness comes, contempt also comes, and with shame comes disgrace. The words of a man's mouth are like deep waters, the fountain of wisdom is like a flowing brook. To be partial to the faces of the wicked is not good, nor to deprive the innocent of justice. A fool's lips come into strife, and his mouth invites beatings. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are a snare to his soul. The words of a gossip are like dainty morsels. They go down into a person's innermost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to him who is a master of destruction. The name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and are safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city like an unscalable wall in his own imagination. Before destruction, the heart of a man is proud, but before honor is humility. He who gives answer before he hears, that is folly and shame to him. A man's spirit will sustain him in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear? The heart of the discerning gets knowledge. The ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. He who pleads his cause first seems right until another comes and questions him. The lot settles disputes and keeps strong ones apart. A brother offended is more difficult than a fortified city, and disputes are like the bars of a castle. A man's stomach is filled with the fruit of his mouth. With the harvest of his lips he is satisfied. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Whoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of Yahweh. The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. A man of many companions may be ruined, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Chapter 19 Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than he who is perverse in his lips and is a fool. It isn't good to have zeal without knowledge, nor being hasty with one's feet and missing the way. 
the foolishness of man subverts his way. His heart rages against Yahweh. Wealth adds many friends, but the poor is separated from his friend. A false witness shall not be unpunished. He who pours out lies shall not go free. Many will entreat the favor of a ruler, and everyone is a friend to a man who gives gifts. All the relatives of the poor shun him. How much more do his friends avoid him? He pursues them with pleas, but they are gone. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished. He who utters lies shall perish. Delicate living is not appropriate for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger. It is his glory to overlook an offense. The king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish son is the calamity of his father. A wife's quarrels are a continual dripping. House and riches are an inheritance from fathers, but a prudent wife is from Yahweh. Slothfulness casts into a deep sleep. The idle soul shall suffer hunger. He who keeps the commandment keeps his soul, but he who is contemptuous in his ways shall die. He who has pity on the poor lends to Yahweh. He will reward him. Discipline your son, for there is hope. Don't be a willing party to his death. A hot-tempered man must pay the penalty, for if you rescue him, you must do it again. Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter end. There are many plans in a man's heart, but Yahweh's counsel will prevail. That which makes a man to be desired is his kindness. A poor man is better than a liar. The fear of Yahweh leads to life, then contentment. He rests and will not be touched by trouble. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Flog a scoffer and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke one who has understanding and he will gain knowledge. He who robs his father and drives away his mother is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. If you stop listening to instruction, my son, you will stray from the words of knowledge. A corrupt witness mocks justice, and the mouth of the wicked gulps down iniquity. Penalties are prepared for scoffers, and beatings for the backs of fools. Chapter 20 Wine is a mocker, and beer is a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. The terror of a king is like the roaring of a lion. He who provokes him to anger forfeits his own life. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife but every fool will be quarreling. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the winter. Therefore he shall beg in harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, 
but a man of understanding will draw it out. Many men claim to be men of unfailing love, but who can find a faithful man? A righteous man walks in integrity. Blessed are his children after him. A king who sits on the throne of judgment scatters away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart pure, I am clean and without sin? Differing weights and differing measures, both of them alike are an abomination to Yahweh. Even a child makes himself known by his doings, whether his work is pure and whether it is right. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, Yahweh has made even both of them. Don't love sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes, and you shall be satisfied with bread. It's no good, it's no good, says the buyer, but when he has gone his way, then he boasts. There is gold and abundance of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a rare jewel. Take the garment of one who puts up collateral for a stranger and hold him in pledge for a wayward woman. Fraudulent food is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth is filled with gravel. Plans are established by advice. By wise guidance you wage war. He who goes about as a tale-bearer reveals secrets. Therefore, don't keep company with him who opens wide his lips. Whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in blackness of darkness. An inheritance quickly gained at the beginning won't be blessed in the end. Don't say, I will pay back evil. Wait for Yahweh, and he will save you. Yahweh detests differing weights, and dishonest scales are not pleasing. A man's steps are from Yahweh. How then can man understand his way? It is a snare to a man to make a rash dedication, then later to consider his vows. A wise king winnows out the wicked and drives the threshing wheel over them. The spirit of man is Yahweh's lamp, searching all his innermost parts. Love and faithfulness keep the king safe. His throne is sustained by love. The glory of young men is their strength. The splendor of old men is their gray hair. Wounding blows cleanse away evil, and beatings purge the innermost parts. Chapter 21 The king's heart is in Yahweh's hand like the water courses. He turns it wherever he desires. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but Yahweh weighs the hearts. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to Yahweh than sacrifice. A high look and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked, is sin. The plans of the diligent surely lead to profit, and everyone who is hasty surely rushes to poverty. Getting treasures by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor for those who seek death. The violence of the wicked will drive them away because they refuse to do what is right. The way of the guilty is devious, but the conduct of the innocent is upright. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than to share a house with a contentious woman.
the soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no mercy in his eyes. When the mocker is punished, the simple gains wisdom. When the wise is instructed, he receives knowledge. The righteous one considers the house of the wicked and brings the wicked to ruin. Whoever stops his ears at the cry of the poor, he will also cry out, but shall not be heard. A gift in secret pacifies anger, and a bribe in the cloak strong wrath. It is joy to the righteous to do justice, but it is a destruction to the workers of iniquity. The man who wanders out of the way of understanding shall rest in the assembly of the dead. He who loves pleasure shall be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil shall not be rich. The wicked is a ransom for the righteous, the treacherous for the upright. It is better to dwell in a desert land than with a contentious and fretful woman. There is precious treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man swallows it up. He who follows after righteousness and kindness finds life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the strength of its confidence. Whoever guards his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul from troubles. The proud and haughty man, Scoffer is his name, he works in the arrogance of pride. The desire of the sluggard kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. There are those who covet greedily all day long, but the righteous give and don't withhold. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he brings it with a wicked mind? A false witness will perish, and a man who listens speaks to eternity. A wicked man hardens his face, but as for the upright, he establishes his ways. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against Yahweh. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory is with Yahweh. Chapter 22 A good name is more desirable than great riches, and loving favor is better than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. Yahweh is the maker of them all. A prudent man sees danger and hides himself, but the simple pass on and suffer for it. The result of humility and the fear of Yahweh is wealth, honor, and life. Thorns and snares are in the path of the wicked. Whoever guards his soul stays from them. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich rule over the poor. The borrower is servant to the lender. He who sows wickedness reaps trouble, and the rod of his fury will be destroyed. He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. Drive out the mocker, and strife will go out. Yes, quarrels and insults will stop. He who loves purity of heart and speaks gracefully is the king's friend. 
The eyes of Yahweh watch over knowledge, but he frustrates the words of the unfaithful. The sluggard says, There is a lion outside. I will be killed in the streets. The mouth of an adulteress is a deep pit. He who is under Yahweh's wrath will fall into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline drives it far from him. Whoever oppresses the poor for his own increase, and whoever gives to the rich, both come to poverty. Turn your ear and listen to the words of the wise. Apply your heart to my teaching, for it is a pleasant thing if you keep them within you, if all of them are ready on your lips, that your trust may be in Yahweh. I teach you today, even you. Haven't I written to you thirty excellent things of counsel and knowledge to teach you truth, reliable words, to give sound answers to the ones who sent you? Don't exploit the poor because he is poor, and don't crush the needy in court. For Yahweh will plead their case and plunder the life of those who plunder them. Don't befriend a hot-tempered man, and don't associate with one who harbors anger, lest you learn his ways and ensnare your soul. Don't you be one of those who strike hands, of those who are collateral for debts. If you don't have means to pay, why should he take away your bed from under you? Don't move the ancient boundary stone which your fathers have set up. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve kings. He won't serve obscure men. Chapter 23 when you sit to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before you. Put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Don't be desirous of his dainties, since they are deceitful food. Don't weary yourself to be rich. In your wisdom, show restraint. Why do you set your eyes on that which is not? For it certainly sprouts wings like an eagle and flies in the sky. Don't eat the food of him who has a stingy eye, and don't crave his delicacies. For as he thinks about the cost, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel which you have eaten you shall vomit up and lose your good words. Don't speak in the ears of a fool for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Don't move the ancient boundary stone. Don't encroach on the fields of the fatherless, for their defender is strong. He will plead their case against you. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to the words of knowledge. Don't withhold correction from a child. If you punish him with the rod, he will not die. Punish him with the rod and save his soul from Sheol. My son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad, even mine. Yes, my heart will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. Don't let your heart envy sinners, but rather Fear Yahweh all the day long. Indeed, surely there is a future hope, and your hope will not be cut off. Listen, my son, and be wise, and keep your heart on the right path. Don't be among ones drinking too much wine, or those who gorge themselves on meat, for the drunkard and the glutton shall become poor, and drowsiness Clothes them in rags. Listen to your father who gave you life, and don't despise your mother when she is old. 
Buy the truth and don't sell it. Get wisdom, discipline, and understanding. The father of the righteous has great joy. Whoever fathers a wise child delights in him. Let your father and your mother be glad. Let her who bore you rejoice. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes keep in my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit and a wayward wife is a narrow well. Yes, she lies in wait like a robber and increases the unfaithful among men. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who stay long at the wine, those who go to seek out mixed wine, don't look at the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things and your mind will imagine confusing things. Yes, you will be as he who lies down in the midst of the sea or as he who lies on top of the rigging. They hit me and I was not hurt. They beat me, and I don't feel it. When will I wake up? I can do it again. I can find another. Chapter 24 Don't be envious of evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their hearts plot violence, and their lips talk about mischief. Through wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all rare and beautiful treasure. A wise man has great power, and a knowledgeable man increases strength. For by wise guidance, you wage your war, and victory is in many advisers. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He doesn't open his mouth in the gate. One who plots to do evil will be called a schemer. The schemes of folly are sin. The mocker is detested by men. If you falter in the time of trouble, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being led away to death. Indeed, hold back those who are staggering to the slaughter. If you say, Behold, we didn't know this. Doesn't he who weighs the hearts consider it? He who keeps your soul, doesn't he know it? Shall he not render to every man according to his work? My son, eat honey for it is good, the droppings of the honeycomb, which are sweet to your taste. So you shall know wisdom to be to your soul. If you have found it, then there will be a reward. Your hope will not be cut off. Don't lay in wait, wicked man, against the habitation of the righteous. Don't destroy his resting place. For a righteous man falls seven times and rises up again, but the wicked are overthrown by calamity. Don't rejoice when your enemy falls. Don't let your heart be glad when he is overthrown, lest Yahweh see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. Don't fret yourself because of evildoers Neither be envious of the wicked, for there will be no reward for the evil man, and the lamp of the wicked shall be snuffed out. My son, fear Yahweh and the king. Don't join those who are rebellious, for their calamity will rise suddenly. The destruction from them both, who knows? 
These also are sayings of the wise. To show partiality in judgment is not good. He who says to the wicked, You are righteous. Peoples shall curse him, and nations shall abhor him. But it will go well with those who convict the guilty, and a rich blessing will come on them. An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. Prepare your work outside and get your fields ready. Afterwards, build your house. Don't be a witness against your neighbor without cause. Don't deceive with your lips. Don't say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. I went by the field of the sluggard, by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. Behold, it was all grown over with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles, and its stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered well. I saw and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber a little folding of the hands to sleep, so your poverty will come as a robber and your want as an armed man. Chapter 25 These also are proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the hearts of kings are unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and material comes out for the refiner. Take away the wicked from the king's presence, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Don't exalt yourself in the presence of the king, or claim a place among great men. For it is better that it be said to you, Come up here, than that you should be put lower in the presence of the prince, whom your eyes have seen. Don't be hasty in bringing charges to court. What will you do in the end when your neighbor shames you? Debate your case with your neighbor, and don't betray the confidence of another lest one who hears it put you to shame, and your bad reputation never depart. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover to an obedient ear. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest so is a faithful messenger to those who send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. As clouds and wind without rain, so is he who boasts of gifts deceptively. By patience a ruler is persuaded, a soft tongue breaks the bone. Have you found honey? Eat as much as is sufficient for you, lest you eat too much, and vomit it. Let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house, lest he be weary of you and hate you. A man who gives false testimony against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, or a sharp arrow. Confidence in someone unfaithful in time of trouble is like a bad tooth or a lame foot. As one who takes away a garment in cold weather or vinegar on soda, so is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap coals of fire on his head, and Yahweh will reward you. The north wind brings forth rain, so a backbiting tongue brings an angry face. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop 
than to share a house with a contentious woman. Like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Like a muddied spring and a polluted well, so is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. It is not good to eat much honey, nor is it honorable to seek one's own honor. Like a city that is broken down and without walls is a man whose spirit is without restraint. Chapter 26 Similitudes and Instructions Like snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a fluttering sparrow, like a darting swallow, so the undeserved curse doesn't come to rest. A whip is for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the back of fools. Don't answer a fool according to his folly lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. One who sends a message by the hand of a fool is cutting off feet and drinking violence. Like the legs of the lame that hang loose, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As one who binds a stone in his sling, so is he who gives honor to a fool. Like a thorn bush that goes into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As an archer who wounds all, so is he who hires a fool, or he who hires those who pass by. As a dog that returns to his vomit, so is a fool who repeats his folly. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. The sluggard says, There is a lion in the road. A fierce lion roams the streets. As the door turns on its hinges, so does the sluggard on his bed. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who answer with discretion. Like one who grabs a dog's ears is one who passes by and meddles in a quarrel not his own. Like a madman who shoots torches, arrows, and death, is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, Am I not joking? For lack of wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, a quarrel dies down. As coals are to hot embers and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindling strife. The words of a whisperer are as dainty morsels. They go down into the innermost parts. Like silver dross on an earthen vessel are the lips of a fervent one with an evil heart. A malicious man disguises himself with his lips, but he harbors evil in his heart. When his speech is charming, don't believe him for there are seven abominations in his heart. His malice may be concealed by deception, but his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit shall fall into it. Whoever rolls a stone, it will come back on him. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Chapter 27 Don't boast about tomorrow, for you don't know what a day may bring forth. 
Let another man praise you, and not your own mouth, a stranger, and not your own lips. A stone is heavy, and sand is a burden, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Wrath is cruel, and anger is overwhelming, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, although the kisses of an enemy are profuse. A full soul loathes a honeycomb, but to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. As a bird that wanders from her nest, so is a man who wanders from his home. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, so does earnest counsel from a man's friend. Don't forsake your friend and your father's friend. Don't go to your brother's house in the day of your disaster. Better is a neighbor who is near than a distant brother. Be wise, my son, and bring joy to my heart. Then I can answer my tormentor. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the simple pass on and suffer for it. Take his garment when he puts up collateral for a stranger. Hold it for a wayward woman. He who blesses his neighbor with a loud voice early in the morning, it will be taken as a curse by him. A continual dropping on a rainy day and a contentious wife are alike. Restraining her is like restraining the wind or like grasping oil in his right hand. Iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens his friend's countenance. Whoever tends the fig tree shall eat its fruit. He who looks after his master shall be honored. As water reflects a face, so a man's heart reflects the man. Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied, and a man's eyes are never satisfied. The crucible is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but man is refined by his praise. Though you grind a fool in a mortar with a pestle along with grain, yet his foolishness will not be removed from him. Know well the state of your flocks, and pay attention to your herds. For riches are not forever, nor does even the crown endure to all generations. The hay is removed, and the new growth appears. The grasses of the hills are gathered in. The lambs are for your clothing, and the goats are the price of a field. There will be plenty of goat's milk for your food, for your family's food and for the nourishment of your servant girls. Chapter 28 The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. In rebellion, a land has many rulers, but order is maintained by a man of understanding and knowledge. A needy man who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain which leaves no crops. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but those who keep the law contend with them. Evil men don't understand justice, but those who seek Yahweh understand it fully. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than he who is perverse in his ways, and he is rich. Whoever keeps the law is a wise son, but he who is a companion of gluttons shames his father. 
he who increases his wealth by excessive interest gathers it for one who has pity on the poor he who turns away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer is an abomination whoever causes the upright to go astray in an evil way he will fall into his own trap but the blameless will inherit good the rich man is wise in his own eyes but the poor who has understanding sees through him when the righteous triumph there is great glory but when the wicked rise men hide themselves he who conceals his sins doesn't prosper but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy blessed is the man who always fears but one who hardens his heart falls into trouble as a roaring lion or a charging bear so is a wicked ruler over a helpless people a tyrannical ruler lacks judgment one who hates ill-gotten gain will have long days a man who is tormented by life blood will be a fugitive until death no one will support him whoever walks blamelessly is kept safe but one with perverse ways will fall suddenly one who works his land will have an abundance of food but one who chases fantasies will have his feel of poverty a faithful man is rich with blessings but one who is eager to be rich will not go unpunished to show partiality is not good yet a man will do wrong for a piece of bread a stingy man hurries after riches and doesn't know that poverty waits for him one who rebukes a man will afterward find more favor than one who flatters with the tongue whoever robs his father or his mother and says it's not wrong he is a partner with a destroyer one who is greedy stirs up strife but one who trusts in yahweh will prosper one who trusts in himself is a fool but one who walks in wisdom is kept safe one who gives to the poor has no lack but one who closes his eyes will have many curses when the wicked rise men hide themselves but when they perish the righteous thrive chapter 29 he who is often rebuked and stiffens his neck will be destroyed suddenly with no remedy when the righteous thrive the people rejoice but when the wicked rule the people groan whoever loves wisdom brings joy to his father but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth the king by justice makes the land stable but he who takes bribes tears it down a man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet an evil man is snared by his sin but the righteous can sing and be glad the righteous care about justice for the poor the wicked aren't concerned about knowledge mockers stir up a city but wise men turn away anger if a wise man goes to court with a foolish man the fool rages or scoffs and there is no peace the bloodthirsty hate a man of integrity and they seek the life of the upright 
A fool vents all of his anger, but a wise man brings himself under control. If a ruler listens to lies, all of his officials are wicked. The poor man and the oppressor have this in common. Yahweh gives sight to the eyes of both. The king who fairly judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod of correction gives wisdom, but a child left to himself causes shame to his mother. When the wicked increase, sin increases, but the righteous will see their downfall. Correct your son, and he will give you peace. Yes, he will bring delight to your soul. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but one who keeps the law is blessed. A servant can't be corrected by words. Though he understands, yet he will not respond. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. He who pampers his servant from youth will have him become a son in the end. An angry man stirs up strife, and a wrathful man abounds in sin. A man's pride brings him low, but one of lowly spirit gains honor. Whoever is an accomplice of a thief is an enemy of his own soul. He takes an oath, but dares not testify. The fear of man proves to be a snare, but whoever puts his trust in Yahweh is kept safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but a man's justice comes from Yahweh. A dishonest man detests the righteous, and the upright in their ways detest the wicked. End of Section 51